Welcome to Big Z Sports and Claxon Communication Play-by-Play Action. Be sure to subscribe to Big Z Sports on YouTube, follow Big Z Sports on Facebook, on Twitter, at Big underscore Z Sports. For the best coverage of high school sports, there's only one Big Z Sports. Welcome in to Eurexville and Claymont High School as it's a very special presentation of Big Z Sports and high school basketball in Z Country. Nick McWilliams and Shannon Thomas bringing you the first action of the afternoon as we get set for the Claymont midseason shootout as we are featuring five total games throughout this afternoon into this evening. Going to be a great night of high school basketball. You're locked into the Wood Electric pregame show for your first matchup of the afternoon, which will be the Springfield Spartans coming all the way down from Akron to take on a team a little bit farther south than them in the East Canton Hornets here from Eurexville. And Shannon, what's the best part about these kind of settings is you get matchups you probably wouldn't normally see. Yeah, it, it, this is one of the things that's really starting to pick up is these mid-season classics around the holidays and stuff. And, and a lot of teams take opportunities to go to them. And like you said, it gives you different action that you don't, don't normally see, and that only gets you prepared for tournament time that's going to start towards the middle of February. It's going to be a real interesting matchup as Springfield enters at 4-7 and seven so far this year, and they play in a rather tough league. And that was exactly what uh, head coach Kyle Dack had to say, which you'll be hearing more from him here momentarily. But they're taking on an East Canton team that's at 7-4, and four, and they know, and a lot of teams in our area know, they were a problem in the IVC. Shannon, they feature 6'6", six, 6'8", six, six, and 6'9", on their roster. Yeah, and they're, they're very tall, and they look very athletic, and, and the same for Springfield down there. They look like they're going to match up fairly well in the height department. we got a couple kids down there that look pretty tall, and... Uh, it, this is going to be a, a, a very entertaining game to start off a very long day for Big Z Sports at Claymont <laughs> High School. That is right. This is going to be a continuous live stream on our YouTube channel. So don't worry if you go away. You can come back later. We're still going to be here all the way up through our final matchup of the night. So obviously you're going to want to stay tuned with all of the action. And speaking of all the action, Springfield takes on East Canton in our first game. Around 2.30 is when we expect Loudonville taking on TCC. Around 4 will be Cambridge pitted against Riverview. 5.30 is West Holmes taking on Carrollton. Then at 7, it's the penultimate game or the final game. New Philadelphia matches up against Claymont. I'm excited, and thankfully we're going to get breaks in between. Well, you're not going to get a break from the first game to the second game, though. Yeah, and it's, it's a nice way that this is set up for us, for the fans. And listen, we, we want you to be at home listening to us, but if you are close enough to Claymont High School and you want to come watch some basketball, you can get an adult ticket for $7, and you can stay all day if you want. There's no extra charge for each game. Come out and support this great thing. But if you're unable to make it or you got family out of state, tell them to tune in to Big Z Sports over on the YouTube channel. Well, you know already that nobody's going to want to be doing anything outside today as it is frigid out there. So just stay locked in with us. And thankfully, I'm going to be able to get this uh, shootout underway. One of the perks of uh, having indoor sports during the winter time. We're going to go ahead and take our first time out. When we come back, we are first joined by Springfield head coach Kyle Dack. Stick around for more of the Wood Electric pregame show as we kick off this Claymont midseason classic. Welcome back into the Wood Electric pregame show. Big Z Sports featuring some tournament basketball today from Claymont as it is the Mustang showcase for today. In our first game, we've got a matchup between Springfield and East Canton, and now we're joined by Springfield head coach Kyle Dack. And coach, you know, tell me a little bit about this season thus far as we were just talking there. Four and seven uh, for you guys. How's the year been going for you? Uh, it's been pretty good. We have a lot of seniors, so uh, kind of just pretty well oiled machine in practice. Just show up. Everybody knows what to do, and we just got to stay on them for uh, working hard. Uh, we had a little bit of injury and in health at the beginning of the season, but uh, we're all healthy now, and uh, we're trying to turn that corner and get some wins. And so far, uh, we're doing just that the last couple weeks. Yeah, the, the injury bug and the health bug it seems to be a problem that a lot of teams have been going through. Uh, this time of the year, you know, we're kind of past that midway point now. Whenever you travel down now, down 77, to come into this kind of setting, like a shootout, uh, what are you hoping that you guys are going to learn? I mean, this is a team that in East Canton that I'm not sure if you would take on normally. Oh, yeah, so 
you know, been doing this for a little while now, and I played. And kind of when you travel to a different uh, area, like either Cleveland or going south, it seems like the game's actually played and called a little differently. So we like to come down here and experience that. It's just something totally different for us, and uh, and it helps us because some areas might play a little more physical versus where we play. So it helps us come tournament times. So we like to come down here and play teams like this. Now, I was going up and down your roster. It's a pretty senior-heavy roster that you guys have. Uh, how much experience did you guys bring back from last year, and how has that leadership maybe helped? So we bring back our uh, we bring back four of our top five scores. Uh, one being a uh, MAC Player of the Year candidate, uh, Anthony Ahern. And uh, we bring back six total varsity letter letterman winners. So uh, we have a lot of experience. Um, we're just vastly undersized. We have to play a lot of guards, but they're all seniors. They've all been doing this for a little while now, about two or three years for most of them. Now, uh, speaking of size and stuff, you're going up against an East Canton team tonight that has a plethora of size on the inside. So how are you guys planning on attacking that? Well, uh, our league prepares us for that. We are by far the smallest team in our league. Uh, Friday night, we played Cloverleaf, and they also have a 6'9 forward who is going to Malone. It's a pretty tough player. So just it's almost same game plan, just different team, different colors. So uh, plan on just you know doing what we prepared and sticking to it, and hopefully we come out with a win. Well, thank you for your time, Coach, and good luck to Springfield. Thank you. That was head coach Kyle Dack for Springfield. Stick around because this segment brought to you by Kime. We're going to have another one coming up as we'll talk with head coach Ryan McGonigal here on your Wood Electric pregame show. In the rolling hills of Holmes County, we tend to do things a bit differently. At Kime, we're in the business of uncommon experiences, and we're here to care for your project like we care for our own. We believe that quality matters and want to help you get it right the first time because your project deserves it. So visit Kime Home Center, your source and destination for all things home, building, and woodworking. Kime, built on trust since 1911. Altman is here for you, in your community, because you matter. We're proud to be the area's first and only independent health system. We are one team, joined together, and committed to one mission, to lead our community to improved health. And we've always been here, dedicated to providing you with the very best in care, wellness, education, insurance, and more. For your community and for your family, Altman is always here for you. Hi, I'm Zach Motzeis with the Tuscross Insurance Agency. For all your auto, home, farm, and business insurance, contact our team at the Tuscross Insurance Agency. Or stop in and see us at one of our three locations in downtown New Philadelphia, Sugar Creek, or in Strasburg, providing excellent service to the Tuscross Valley since 1885. Everyone here at the Tuscross Insurance Agency would like to wish all area athletes and teams good luck this winter. Are you neglecting your building's fifth wall? Did you know something as simple as a clogged drain can lead to a destructive roof leak? Protect your business assets with WM Commercial Roofing's Umbrella Care Program. This program will provide you with regular maintenance surveys and repairs to extend the life of your roof. Invest in your business with our top quality materials, advanced techniques, and skilled craftsmanship. Are you ready for a reliable partnership? Visit our website, wmcommercialroofing.com, and follow us on Facebook and Instagram to learn more. Back into your Wood Electric pregame show. Now we're going to go courtside with the coach. Brought to you by Kime. It's head coach Ryan McGonigal for the East Canton Hornets. Coach entering a matchup against the Springfield team, you know, that I'm not sure you guys would normally take on. Uh, what's kind of the beauty of these showcases or these shootouts wherever you get to match up with somebody who would maybe be a little bit farther outside of your league and get you some of that experience past the midway point here? Yeah, I think just playing against different people and going against a different style of, of opponent, I think just... You know our guys get to experience other games. So now entering at seven and four, um, you guys have had a pretty good season to this point. Uh, a lot of positives, some downs as well. So tell me maybe how this uh, year has gone so far for the Hornets. Yeah, I think we've progressively gotten better, which is what you want your team to do. And um, we really feel confident where our team is currently. Um, I think we're playing our best basketball this season so far. So we really like where our team's at. Now, when it comes to size, uh, East Canton has something that a lot of teams don't necessarily have the luxury. You guys have a uh, ton of size, and the six eight, six nine, I think a six six as well. Uh, how much does that help you guys on that inside out game? Yeah, you definitely can't teach it, and um, yeah, we're just blessed to have those guys, and they play really hard, and they're competitive, and they're performing well for us. So yeah, we're just blessed to have them. 
Now moving forward to the uh, tail half of the season, uh, I want to talk to you specifically about the, the IVC type schedule. Uh, we know that it's a tough conference, we know that it's a physical conference, so what are you guys hoping uh, in terms of the next few weeks to accomplish? Um, just compete every game. You know, the IVC, you, you got to be prepared. There's really good coaching, there's really good players, so we're just looking to compete every game. Well, thank you for your time, Coach, and good luck to the Hornets. Thank you. Appreciate it. Head Coach Ryan McGonigal for the East Canton Hornets, brought to you by Kime. Stick around. We're going to wrap up your Wood Electric pregame show and get to the first tip-off in tonight's action. Thanks to both head coaches in Kyle Dack and Ryan McGonigal for joining us in our Wood Electric pregame show. Big Z Sports is live from the PAC Drilling Mobile Studio, and we're bringing you the first matchup in this Claymont midseason shootout, as it is Shannon Thomas and Nick McWilliams here for today's broadcast. Might have confused some people there, Shannon. I introduced you first. They're going to think you're the one talking right now. Well, that's all right. <laughs> and it's interesting. I went to a basketball game yesterday, and I had a, 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 a fan of Big Z Sports come up to me and ask me about the, the thing out of uh, Tusky Valley the other night about Coach Tucci pulling all five of the starters out. And I'm like, I'm just impressed that you listened well enough to know what we were talking about. So, And we thank all of our fans that tune in every week. Oh, we definitely do. And also a big thank you is going to be going out for tonight or for this afternoon. I'm really going to have to get that straight. For this afternoon, for with WM Commercial Roofing, Novellus, the Tuscarawas Insurance Agency, Altman Hospital, and, of course, the First National Bank of Denison, too, as well, because, Shannon, all of them are bringing uh, this presentation of high school basketball, but also... Uh, the First National Bank of Denison, the, the entire school of Claymont offered them a thanks for really helping make this kind of a reality. Yeah, and th th they've done a lot here. You know, you see a lot of nice T-shirts that all these kids are wearing in Big Z Sports, the First National Bank of Denison, and some other sponsors all went together to get, uh, I mean, well over 250 T-shirts that were going to be thrown out to the fans. The players for each team are wearing them and then some nice hardware mm -hmm. that a player from each game is going to get to take home with them. Which you'll have to uh, take a look at our Facebook page following the conclusion of each game to hear, or to see, rather, what Shannon's talking about there. All right, again, the uh, first matchup that we're going to have this afternoon is Springfield. The Spartans, they enter at 4-7 and seven, all the way down from Akron, led by head coach Kyle Dack. Then we've got the East Canton Hornets. Their head coach is Ryan McGonigal. We'll be getting to your starting lineups here briefly after uh, we're going to have to step aside for our national anthem and such. But as for the Needenthal and Company keys to the game, I wanted to give them a thanks for that sponsorship. We don't truthfully know solely for the fact of these are two teams that uh, have not really matched up or we you know, don't know too much about East Canton a little bit outside of our uh, so far, our coverage range, I say so far. So we're going to have to uh, kind of go with those as the game moves along, maybe. And, and I, I can go just straight off the top and say, if you want to win a basketball game, you better make your layups, you better not turn the ball over, and you better rebound. And you better make it from the free throw line. How many times have we seen that being a problem for some teams? All right, as the clock is finally winding down here to zero, and I do believe we are going to get to our national anthem before our starting lineups for this afternoon. Stick around. Big Z Sports returns for the first action right after this. Novellus Eurexville is the world leader in aluminum recycling, and they need you. They have immediate openings for general laborers, equipment operators, and various skilled trade positions. They'll start you at $22 per hour or higher. There are advancement opportunities, and Novellus offers industry-leading benefits. To apply or find out more, go to novellus.com slash careers and search Eurexville. That's novellus.com slash careers and search Eurexville. Novellus is an equal opportunity employer. This is RJ Jacobs from DAC Vitamins and Minerals. Did you know that DAC Vitamins and Minerals has more than 40 proven equine supplements that include daily multivitamins, joint, digestion, reproduction and fertility, calming, and many other specialty products? DAC also carries a complete line of livestock products called DAC Show Contender. Feed DAC Vitamins and Minerals to get the competitive edge in the show pen. We've been feeding champions since 1983. Wood Electric has been trusted with all of your electrical needs for over 30 years. They are the place to call for residential, commercial, and industrial work. Wood Electric is available 24 hours a day and ready to help with any electrical problem, outage, or installation. Wood Electric, serving Tuscarawas County and beyond since 1988. Like Wood Electric on Facebook or find them online at woodelectric.net. 
The First National Bank of Denison appreciates the hard work and dedication area athletes exhibit to be the best they can be for their team. We follow that same philosophy with our customers, working hard to build personal relationships and making our services convenient. The First National Bank of Denison's community involvement is important to us and we love supporting our local schools. The First National Bank of Denison with offices in Denison, Dover, Janate and Hutton, South Broadway and Shunbrun in New Philadelphia. We have our roots where others have their branches. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. All day high school basketball is upon us from Z Country. Big Z Sports, Claxon Communications, and all of our wonderful sponsors are bringing you five games back to back to back to back to back. Did I do that a minute enough time, Shannon? You got it close enough for me. <laughs> Springfield versus East Canton will start everything off, and we're going to start off now with your starting lineups for both teams. Why don't you start with the Spartans there, Shannon? Yeah, start for the Spartans. Number three, Anthony Ahern. He's a senior wearing number three, I guess I already said that, averaging 13 points a game. Number five, Brady Hahn, he's a senior. Number 11, Braden Farmer, he's also a senior. Number 12, Colin Sigfirth, he's a senior, averaging seven points a game. And number 22, Logan Gaspar, and he's also a senior. Thank you for that, Shannon. As for the Hornets of East Canton, starting things off for them as a senior standing at 5'10". Ten, ten. He wears number two, and it's Ali Schrader. Then a junior, number three, standing at 6'1", it's Kellen Deutschman. Number four, a junior, 5'8", it's Channy Stubblefield. And number 24, the 6'9", senior, it is Caleb Schilling. Number 33, rounding it out, a 6'8", senior, Jaden McLeod, that is, or McLeod, I should say, that is your starting lineup here for the East Canton Hornets. And that is pretty much all for our pregame segment here brought to you by Wood Electric. It's about basketball time, Shannon. Basketball time all day. This gets me so excited to, to be able to do this on a Sunday. It was after church. People could come out to church and uh, sit here and watch a great game. And some of the crowd is starting to come here a little bit. Some of these schools had a, a little bit of a drive, so the fans might not be going to make it today because some of the weather-related uh, traffic conditions. But <laughs> Issues it, is what it's, it, it's going to be uh, an interesting day for Big Z Sports. Yeah, well, thanks to uh, Claymont High School for turning up the heat in the gymnasium. No, literally not with the basketball competition. All right, it is our first night or first game of the afternoon, and we are underway from Claymont as the tip is won by East Canton in Schilling. And here comes their offense setting it up. will be Stubblefield. He'll go to his left, drops it off left side, and it goes into Deutschman's hands. Works it back to the right now, and McLeod, he shoots a three-pointer, and it's too long off back iron. Rebound going to get hauled in there by Springfield and number three in Ahern. So the Spartans now setting it up, going to have to deal with that height. And there's a nice entry, fine cutting in the baseline on the back door was Hahn to get the first points of the night. Well, there's, right there is how you can deal away with that height or deal with the height, hit him in a motion where he can just lay it off the glass. Springfield on defense responds as they deal with the height there on the inside of Schilling, who grabs his own board, puts it up again and misses, and they're going to say it was blocked. Schilling had about three different Springfield defenders on him at various points. And I'll tell you what those defenders did great right there. They just stood straight up and, and boxed him in. And then he uh, got it blocked going out of bounds and wasn't able to get fouled because of the way they did their defensive position. Well, standing at 6'9", it's going to be a challenge, but East Canton certainly seemed like they were up for the task. Stubblefield, he's got it. He's guarded by Ahern, and he will drop it off to Schrader. Schrader goes on the inside, and there's going to be a shot from the mid-range by Schilling. Nice touch for the big man. Yeah, and I don't think it was supposed to be a shot. I think it was supposed to be a pass because he turned and looked at his teammates and let out a big breath right there because he kind of miscalculated, but it went in and it still counts. Foul going to get called here. It's going to be the first foul of the ball game on, I believe it's Schrader. So Springfield to inbound and bringing it up again will be Ahern, their leading scorer by far. He'll stop, give it on the inside, and nearly throwing it away. And now the scramble for it as Farmer has to save it, and he will give it off. I think it was to Sigfirth on the inside. No, it was to Hahn. Looks like we're going to get a foul called on East Canton again. Yeah, Schilling, Schilling got him right there as they got it back into him. He turned, and they just kind of ran into each other. So the second foul there on the Hornets says there's going to be a finish at the rack and a good job of taking it to the hole in Brady Hahn. He scores. 
Yeah, that's Hans' second bucket right there, and both of them were kind of in transition as he was cutting to the hoop. So it will be Schrader to bring it up. He'll spin around, take that back. It's actually Stubblefield, gives it off, and there's a long pass over the head of Schilling as Deutschman was trying to go to his big man underneath who just couldn't reach it. Yeah, nice pressure on the defense for Springfield right there. Tried to go over top, and he drew it, uh, East Canton threw it just a little too far. So now here comes the inbound as a little trap defense from East Canton now on Springfield. They're going to break through it, and Sigfirth is going to go across the timeline. He's doubled up. He'll hand it off. It's Hahn. Hahn's going to drive with the left. Pump fake and dumps it off to a wide-open teammate in Gaspar who finishes. Yeah, Beautiful nice, work. Nice job on the pump fake right there. And kids, right there is why you pump fake. Got the big man up in the air, and they was able to get the bucket. Delivers top of the key. Three-point shot is too long off back iron. Rebound's going to get hauled in by Schrader. Schrader looking for space. It's another double team. They deliver it right corner. Extra pass. It's on the way from Deutschman, and it's nailed. Stubblefield with the assist, and Springfield, or pardon me, East Canton gets a big shot. More trap defense, and East Canton nearly has it pay off, but a collision there between Deutschman and it looked like Sigfirth, and it's going to be a foul, though, called on the Hornets' wing. Yeah, Sigfirth got in there and just got into him. Some substitutions on the court here. Sitting down will be Farmer, and checking in will be Jacob Thomas, the senior for the first time for Springfield. Ball's delivered in front of the scorer's table, and it'll be brought up now by Sigfirth. He will stop. He's picked up by Schrader. He'll drive baseline, goes cross court, finds Thomas, extra pass, pump fake, and a shuffle step there for Ahern. He'll come back and go right in front of the free throw line. No good. Rebound is going to be held in by Schilling, who the big man's going to try to bring it up himself. He'll slow things down. Now goes off right side, and it's off the foot of Stubblefield. He dropped it off of his own ankle. Another East Canton turnover. Yeah, right now, East Canton's doing a nice job getting on the boards, getting rebounds, but bringing it down, turning it over. you got to clean those up. Thomas delivers, and coming across the timeline is Sigfirth. For, and there's another drop-off attempt. East Canton was ready for it this time. We're going to get a jump ball called. Possession arrow will be favoring Springfield as tying up underneath was, was Gaspar and I believe Stubblefield. Yeah, that's one of those ones where both guys were fighting for it as they went out of bounds. They both kind of just had half a hold of it, so the referee called a jump ball because he probably didn't know who it was off of. Cam, Th or pardon me, Jacob Thomas is going to grab the rebound there offensively for Springfield and gives him an extra possession. Now delivered on the inside, Gaspar out. Thomas, three-point shot was just short. Rebound going to get hauled in by East Canton, and good heads-up play there for Schrader, who had it, but he was falling off to the sideline, and he just delivered it off the Springfield player. Yeah, no reason to try to turn around and throw it. Just all you got to do is get it to him. He's going to grab it or he's going to hit him. He's out of bounds. 4.30 to go in the first, and nice ball game we've had so far here. Uh, as it is Springfield leading 6-5, to five, and there is a tie up there along the sideline, and hitting the deck hard was Deutschman. He was locked up with Sigfirth. They're going to say it was a foul, though, for Sigfirth. Yeah, Sigfirth got his arm in there, tried to go for a steal, but when he got his arm in there, it kind of got locked in, and he his momentum carried him past him, and he, he drug him down, so that's where they got him with the foul. Another Springfield substitution, Connor Eckenrode, the senior. He checks in, and it looks like Gaspar will sit. Here comes Stubblefield, who stopped right in front of us. Tight defense on him. Now he'll get past it, and we're going to get another foul called here. They're going to say way too much contact coming from Ahern. That'll be his first foul as Spartan or the Hornets to inbound. Ball's delivered into Schilling. He'll pass it back out and they'll set things up with Deutschman. Deutschman goes to the right, stops, gives off Stubblefield. Entry pass and it is plucked out of the air by McLeod. He'll deliver cross court, extra pass. Now driving the baseline. Hop step is Schrader, left it off the front of the rim. No good. Rebound is going to go off the hands of McLeod and it's going to go over to Springfield. I'll tell you what, you got to give it to number one, Jacob Thomas for Springfield right there. Big disadvantage at the size, and he gets in there, and he just plays some serious defense on the big guys. Some substitutions now for East Canton. Coming to the game is Owen McCroskey, the sophomore, and also Isaac Candell, the junior. It will be Ahern to bring it up. For the Spartans, he'll stop at the volleyball line. Now a double team from East Canton. They will break it on the drive and rejected away by Schilling. Hahn was blocked, and Schilling barely even had to jump for that one. 
Yeah, Haunt, Haunt, or, yeah, Haunt made a nice cut to get to the hoop right there, but he went in between the Twin Towers. Three-point shot on the inbound is no good. Hauling in the board will be McLeod for East Canton. That's his first. They'll bring it up. Left corner, entry pass, Schilling. He's double teamed, and now we're going to get a foul called on the floor. They're going to say somebody grabbed his wrist. Well, I've seen Hahn was in the area. That's who they're going to get. That would be Hahn's first. Another substitution sitting down will be Hahn and checking in for the first time. Or I should say back in is Farmer for Springfield. Ball's delivered to McLeod. He'll stand at the top of the key. Now move right into left. And he'll reset. He'll hand it off to Deutschman, who gets the call from his head coach and Ryan McGonigal. They go left side to McCroskey. Now an entry pass. Schilling pump fake drive in the lane and a tie up from Thomas. And that jump ball there is going to mean that the possession stays no. with East Canton. Thomas they, hit the deck hard though. They called a foul on him. Oh, I thought they. I thought I saw both thumbs go up. He. I thought he had the ball. They went up and he grabbed the hold of the ball. Well, good catch on that, Shannon. I did not notice that. So stepping to the first Federal Community Bank free throw line will be Caleb Schilling, the first time we've seen that in this game. What effort by Thomas. Yeah, and like I said, he grabbed a hold of the ball, but I don't know what the ref seen that I couldn't. You know, sitting down low, sometimes we don't, we don't catch everything. So sitting will be Deutschman, and Schrader comes back in for East Canton. Some more substitutions. Back in the game is Gaspar for the Spartans, as Thomas will sit. He went down hard on that left elbow. Schilling's ready, and he'll put up his second one, and that one rims out, and an offensive board going to get hauled in by Schrader. Good hustle. He'll set up the offense. Goes to his left, picks up his dribble. Now he'll deliver it off, and it's Kandel. He'll do an extra pass. McCroskey, entry pass, Schilling. He'll go around, a lot of contact, can't get it to fall. He'll grab his own offensive rebound, put it on the deck, put it up again, and it goes in and out. But it is going to be a foul. He's back to the free throw line again. I'm going to get number zero on that one, Connor Eckenrode. For Springfield's sake, they are attacking the moment the big man has it in underneath. But in terms of the rebounding, you can't make up for the height. No, and they've done a great job on him, but he's, he's starting to pick up some fouls on him now. Four points now for Schilling. He'll step back to the charity stripe and look for one more. Couple dribbles, and he'll put it up, and that one is in and out again. That rebound hauled in by Farmer of Springfield, his first. Now that trap again from East Canton and dribbling through it and nearly losing it there were the Spartans, but they will pick it up. Now it's Eckenrode. He'll deliver back to the right side to Sigfirth. 2.40 showing. It's a 7-6 ball game in favor of East Canton as that three-point shot was left short. Schilling grabs the rebound, nearly has it knocked away, but he'll hold on to it. Now he'll dribble, go from left to right. Now he'll spin around and kept his foot and, and finally drug it when he was trying to spin in the lane, a travel, and it's going to be the right call. Yeah, just too much uh, Schilling right there trying to do too much. He got the rebound, brought it down the court, tried to do a little spin move, and at the very last second drug his pivot foot. McLeod will sit, and Xavier Campbell checks, it, checks in for the first time for these Hornets as bringing it up now for Springfield is Anthony Fortner, who's checked into the game. Now a drive by Eckenrode. He'll stop and hand it off. Delivered across court. Left corner, three-point shot was left flat, and it went well over the backboard. It's another rebound for Schilling. That shot was missed by Fortner. Yeah, the one of those ones he just tried to hurry up and try to get the shot off, and he just pushed it. Schilling, work going to work. Right block, he'll go up, and he traveled again. Picked up his dribble just about a step too soon, Shannon. Yeah, the, the, the big man has, has got to calm down a little bit right now. You're, you're getting the rebounds on defense. You're forcing some mistakes by Springfield, but you can't keep going down court and doing the same thing. Anthony Berger, the junior for Springfield, has checked in, and there's a tough angle shot that goes in and out. Almost by Sigfirth. It was a highlight reel finish with the left. Instead, he can't get it to fall. Schilling steps into it. Three-point shot off front iron, no good. Rebound hauled in by Berger. So here come the Spartans. Across the timeline, it's Eckenrode. He'll go to his right, and he's double teamed. Nearly loses the dribble, and now we're going to get a double dribble. And I'm not... 
sure because they said he – I don't know what happened there, Shannon. I, I think it was more of a carry than it was a double dribble. It Maybe. came up and he kind of palmed the ball, the ball and put it back down, and the official called a double dribble, but I think it was more of a carry. So it will be East Canton ball nonetheless, and bringing it up will be Candell. He'll stop, give it off. It's McCroskey. He looks for an entry pass on a backdoor cut. There's nothing there. McLeod's back in the ball game. He has it. He'll jab step left. Now he'll pull it back, dribble behind his back, hand it off McCroskey. McCroskey, he'll try left. Now they do a screen out on the left side and get it into the hands of Schrader, who he's trying to go to work. A lot of denial defense right now by Springfield, and a nice move on the inside by Schrader. He can't grab it. Knocked away by Springfield and tried to be saved there by Gaspar, but he cannot. Yeah, Gaspar tried to save it. It looked like number... But it got knocked away by an East Canton player. Yeah, I couldn't uh, see who. 13, Xavier Campbell looked like he came over and poked it out of his hand. So the inbound, again, under a minute to go here. 7-6 lead in favor of East Canton. And now there's another trap, and it will be hauled in by Sigfirth. He'll go to work, step up into the mid-range, can't get it to fall. Gaspar with the offensive board. Springfield still with possession. They'll work it to the top again. Both. It's Fortner, loose ball, pulled in by Gaspar. He'll dribble, go off, right side. Three-point shot is in and out again. McLeod grabs the rebound, and now he's going to get fouled. Yeah, it looks like he's going to get fouled by Connor Eckenrode. Both teams playing some outstanding half-court defense right now. Hahn could, was beside himself for not getting that one to fall. So stepping to the first Federal Community Bank free throw line will be McLeod. Couple dribbles as he looks to increase his team's seven to six lead as it is up and all over the place, but it will fall in. Sitting down for Springfield is Eckenrode, and back in is Farmer. Looks like Schilling's back in for East Canton. He'll come in for Campbell. And McCroskey will sit with Deutschman back in. Some deep benches for both these sides. Yeah, nice turnout for both of these programs. Cloud's next one is perfect as well, and he'll push his team's lead to three. 28 seconds to go in this first quarter on the inbound. It will be Hahn. He'll try to dribble it up. Pardon me, it's Sigfirth. He'll hand it off. It's Fortner. Fortner dishes it off. Gaspar underneath, and he traveled on the baseline. He had both Schilling and McLeod over him, and he tried to get away from the trees. Yeah, he, he seen him and seen a gap in between them, so he tried to step. He stepped in between them, but when he did, he drug that back foot. 15 seconds to go here in the first. Springfield will trap. Stubblefield hands it off. Entry pass, Schilling. One dribble, spins up, in the lane. Tough angle shot, no good. Rebound going to Fortner. Now here comes Springfield. Fortner stops, pull up. Mid, uh, three point shot off front iron, no good. Schilling grabs it, and that will do it for our first quarter of action here from Uricksville. Nine to six is the East Canton lead. We'll move, we'll be, we'll be, we will be back for the second quarter of action after this. Is your vehicle banged up? Do you want fast, professional service to get you back on the road? This is Garrett Jacobs with Auto Works Collision Center. We service cars, trucks, SUVs, and even semi-trucks and RVs. Whether you need auto glass replacement, paintless dent repair, assistance with warranty and insurance, or just a free estimate, Auto Works has you covered. We even offer alignments for your heavy-duty vehicles like buses, motorhomes, and semis with our state-of-the-art Hunter Alignment System. Call 330-878-4223, open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Let Auto Works of Strasburg work for you. Cush Financial Group has been proudly serving the financial needs of local community members for over 35 years. The team at Cush Financial follows an industry-leading service model with the unique approach and fiduciary responsibilities associated with their board-certified financial planner. With over 75 years of combined experience, the advisors at Cush Financial Group are here to help you achieve your financial goals. Contact the office at 330-308-8700 or visit cushfinancial.com to schedule your free consultation today. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Independent Capital Company Incorporated, member FINRA, SIPC. It is the Claymont Midseason Shootout. Big Z Sports is live here from the PAC Drilling Mobile Studio as we start off the action quickly for East Canton. They can't get it to fall and increase that 9-6 to six lean. Nick and Shannon bringing you the first game as Ahern goes left side, and now he'll get it right back again. Quite the defensive first, half, first quarter there, Shannon. Yeah, and both teams doing a great job, but 
Got to give a shout-out to Springfield. The, the big disadvantage of the Heights, and they're doing an outstanding job with their defense. Hahn drives, little drop-off, and he finds a man wide open on the baseline who goes up and finishes through contact. It's Farmer, and it's his first bucket. Nice job by Farmer again with the pump fake. Got the big man up, and then went up and finished. And East Canton has another miscue coming down the court as it dribbles off the baseline. And another turnover. So it's a 9-8 ball game. And here comes Springfield. Quickly, they'll break the pressure. It's Ahern, but he will dribble back out now. Ball worked over to the right corner. Thomas pump fakes, gives to Gaspar. A little dribble drive and give and go action. Schilling's going to steal it away, though. That'll be Schilling's first steal as here comes East Canton. Stubblefield thought about a three, but he was too deep. He'll go to the foul line, hand it off, Schilling, pump fake. He'll drive off right block, no good. Rebound going to get hauled in by Farmer. Schilling just trying to do too much again right there. He had a man standing on the wing. He pulled the defense. He should have kicked it out. Thomas has it, and instead of he could have had a rhythm three, but he had to kind of jump to grab that one. And now a deep three-point shot's on the way off back iron, and it will go out of bounds as it hits the stanchion above the backboard. Ahern. He was on line, Shannon, just a little too much muscle. A little too much muscle, and he was standing a good three feet behind the three-point <laughs> line. He was good. He could go went back one more step. Comes the inbound, and it's Stubblefield. And he'll grab it and take it up. East Canton leads 9-8. to eight. 6.20 to go here before halftime. It's Schrader. Works on the right corner. Now he'll go to the right side to Schilling. Left his three-point shot short, and Hahn will grab his first rebound. He'll bring it up for the Spartans and drop it back for Thomas. Good to see Thomas still out there. Remember, he had that hard collision with the floor in that first quarter. What a cross-court pass there from Hahn. Goes into the hands of Ahern and delivers it right back. And now we're going to get a drive and no shot. They're going to say it was a shove underneath. Didn't see who it went on. And it looks like it's going to go on. Stubblefield for East Canton. Thomas to inbound. He'll give it off. Hahn, one dribble, goes back out. Ahern, three-point shot. He steps into it, and he absolutely buries it. Yeah, nice rhythm three-pointer right there for Hearn just to catch it and go up with it. And now the foul's going to get called on Ahern. As he... Got a little too much of the body there on defense. He'll actually take a seat, and checking back in is Berger for Springfield. It's an 11-9 lead now in favor of Springfield off that big three-point shot from one of their senior leaders. Schilling, top of the key. He'll fake the entry pass and go to Stubblefield on the right. He'll get a screen to the left. Now he'll pick up his dribble, tries to go in, and it is ripped away by Hahn. Good heads-up play. He knew exactly what was coming. Sigfield to reset. Sigfirth, I should say. Pardon me. He'll deliver it inside. Gaspar, he'll dribble back out. Thomas, now a fast entry pass. Hahn, he'll try to go up between the trees, and there was nothing doing. Schilling and McLeod team up and nearly have it taken away. I don't know who got the block, but it was one of them. Schrader drives, drops back. McLeod. He'll dribble right side, now go right corner. Stubblefield with the pump fake. He'll drive in, spin around, shot in the mid-range, left it short. Rebound is going to get hauled in there by Springfield by Berger, and it was tipped away from behind by Schilling, so it will be Spartans' ball. Yeah, Berger got his hands on it, and then Schilling just took a swat at it and knocked it out of bounds. East Kent going to come with the press now. So far, Springfield has done a great job breaking through this pressure and not panicking. Sigfirth brings it up across the timeline. He'll go to Hahn. Hahn will drive, drop it off. Gaspar pump fake goes up, and it's blocked again by Schilling. They're, they're not, the big guys aren't falling for the pump fake right now, so now you've got to catch them off guard and just go straight up strong with it. Schilling's second block, and you could hear as Coach Dak was not happy because that's happened a couple different possessions down on offense. He's basically saying, you know you're not making that shot. they got too much length. you got to get rid of it and go back out. Hahn drop off. It is Berger. Works it around and goes back to Sigfirth. Goes left side. Thomas, he'll pump fake, go baseline. Gaspar instead, it's taken away by McLeod. Another steal for him. Now here comes East Canton. It's Candell. He'll go back out and will stop and reset. Now it's McLeod. Goes right. Schrader on the drive. Spin, and he got fouled. They're going to say that Gaspar got him too much with the body. I thought they might get Schrader 
with a travel, Shannon, because he kind of picked it up before he spun. And, and I, I thought that's what the whistle was coming for, too. They both was just going inside, and he tried to do a little 360 spin, but he said Gaspar had already put too much body on him. Gaspar will sit with his first foul, checking back into him. Back into the game is Eckenrod for him. Right corner, it's going to be an open three-point shot on the way for the Hornets, and it's buried by the sophomore in McCroskey. Now a loose ball, and they're going to say it's poked away by Schrader, so it stays with Springfield. Lead goes back into the hands of the Hornets on that made shot. What a back-and-forth battle we've got in our first game. Under four to go here before halftime. Foul called. Looks like it's going to be on McCroskey for East Canton. Yeah, he just kind of come over from behind and tried to take a swipe at the ball and actually hit him on the back of the forearm. Sigfirth to bring it up. And he'll slow things down. Picks up his dribble. Now he's kind of trapped and nobody moving. He got upset there. And that one's going to be plucked away. It's McCroskey. He'll try to finish and too strong. Rebound grabbed by Schrader, though. He'll drop it off. And now a double team underneath and trying to finish through it as East can. They cannot scramble for the rebound. And it is finally going to be ruled a jump ball. And it will stay in the hands of Springfield after that rebound. Yeah, what a spark plug that uh, McCroskey's been coming in, doing all kinds of things right now. That was the fourth rebound for Schrader for East Canton. Tension's a little high there on that jump ball, Shannon. Yeah, they uh, kind of got throwing some elbows when they were laying on the ground. 12 to 11, and there's going to be almost another steal by Schrader as he knocked away and jumped in through the passing lane. Nearly ended up on uh, Judd's lap over here for Claxon Communications. And a big thank you to all the Claxon crew who are going to be coming out tonight and doing this live stream for us. And, of course, a thank you to all of our presenting sponsors bringing you basketball all season long. We've never done it like this before, though. Five games, one day. Springfield works it in. Hahn, who go to work on Schilling, drops it off and rejected again. Berger had it sent right back, and it's Schilling who has his third block. East Canton works it up. It's a drive. It's Candell. He'll go up. Left block. Tough angle shot. Can't grab it. Berger and Schilling will tie up. That one will favor this time Springfield. Or pardon me, I should say East Canton. Yeah, nice job on Berger getting there. Tried to rip the rebound away from the big man, but they, he didn't let go of it. So to inbound will be Stubblefield. Did not see who the substitution was there. We'll get that to you in a moment. It's delivered in to Candell. He'll drive right side. He's got Thomas all over him. He'll try to spin around in the mid-range, and he's going to tie up, and we're going to get a foul by Thomas. As a couple of these drives, Shannon, for East Canton, they're going to a certain spot on the floor, driving towards the paint, but it almost seems like they have no destination by the time they get there. Yeah, they don't have no destination by the time they get there, and, and they get lucky, and, and Springfield makes a foul right there, and he goes to the foul line. Which I think is what Coach Dak has been – little upset about as the first free throw is up and good for Candle. Uh, I'm shocked that that was called a shooting foul. I thought he grabbed a hold of him before he attempted to make a shot, but either way, he goes to the line and makes both of them. Perfect from the first Federal Community Bank free throw line, pushes the lead to three for the Hornets. It is Spartan's ball, and they'll work it on the inside, and there was a miscommunication as Ahern thought he was going to get a cutting farmer but he was locked up with Schilling, I think, trying to set a screen for a backdoor cut. 2.44 showing on the clock before halftime. Of course, we're going to have our DAC Vitamins and Minerals halftime report here. Talk about this first half on what has been all a defensive battle to start things off. As there's a three-point shot for McLeod's, no good. Rebound going to get hauled in there by McCroskey. Good hustle for the sophomore. Yeah, Springfield did what they had to do right there, block out, but it was a long there's, one. There's a drive by McLeod, and he'll finish at the rim. No problem. He has four. Pushes the lead now to five for East Canton. In and out game here for Springfield, and Sigfirth will reset. He'll deliver it cross court. Thomas. Defense reacts quickly. He'll pick up his dribble and go left. Hahn. Hahn's going to drive. Stop in the mid-range. He's going to have to get rid of it, and he has nowhere to go. Now he'll find Sigfurth. Sigfurth stops, gives it off. 
And the ball makes its way back to Thomas, who will stop at the free th- at the three-point line. Now go back out for a deep three-point shot that is knocked in by Ahern again. Ahern's got some nice range for him. First assist for Thomas, and it cuts the lead to two. Candle will stop, spin around, and give it off to McLeod. He'll be in the right corner, and he's going to try to back down his man. Not happening, though, and he'll have to go back out. Good effort there by Farmer. Hahn picks up Candle, who'll have to pick up his dribble, and he'll deliver it to McLeod. And I think that got tipped, but it still made its way over there. McCroskey has it. He'll try to spin around, and there was nothing doing. East Canton taking their time. Stubble field goes right. McLeod, three-point shot is too long. Rebound, Hahn and Schilling collide, and I think they're going to say Hahn went up over the back. Oh, they're calling. Oh, yep, yeah, there it is. This, this official over here got eyes looking at the guy underneath. <laughs> Hahn collided with the back of Schilling. They're going to say that that was a push. McCroskey sits and back in is Schrader. Under a minute showing, 16-14. What a ball game. Schrader has it. Drives. Left side. Spin around on the left block. Tough angle. Shot's not going to fall. Rebound by Ahern for Springfield. That's his first board. He'll stop and go for an entry pass there. Works it back out. Thomas. Looks for an open player cutting baseline. There's nothing there. Sigfirth will now have it in front of the East Canton bench. They'll deliver it off to Ahern at the top. There's another entry. It goes to Farmer. Farmer tries to go to Gaspar, and there's nothing there. And it's going to be a steal away for Candle. Yeah, Candle, Candle, he read that one like a defensive back. He's seen it coming. Schilling goes to work and goes right up over top of his man for his second field goal of the game. It's now 18-14. That's his sixth point. 15 seconds showing. Sigfirth loses it as he was looking to pass the ball too quickly for Springfield there, trying to set up that last play before halftime, and it's another Spartans turnover. Now the Hornets have a chance to push this lead to at least six, potentially. Coach Dak for Springfield didn't even have anything to say for that. He just sat down on the bench. He he was stunned like everybody else was. Stubblefield gets it across the timeline, gives it off McLeod. Now they work it back out. Five seconds showing, now four. Works it around. Schilling, he's going to have to pull up, and he'll do the ridiculous angle mid-range. I thought he had a chance to go, but it rims out. 18-14, to 14, East Canton leads Springfield in our first contest here from the Claymont midseason shootout. Stick around because when we return, we've got your DAC Vitamins and Minerals halftime report. Tally up some stats, talk about that first half. Then we'll bring you back to basketball action from Claymont High School. It's Nick and Shannon, Big Z Sports here with Claxon Communications. We return after this. Do you hunt, fish, sew, or have a hobby that you would like to share with someone? Hi, this is Noah Sugg with Brig Brothers Big Sisters, and we are faced with our biggest commitment in matching 56 littles with bigs. We will match a little with you that shares the same interests and enjoys the same things, so you can do what you enjoy and change the life of a little at the same time. To learn more, we ask you call 339-6916 or visit bigs4kids.com slash volunteer. Thank you. The certified public accountants at Needenthal & Company believe in the value of relationships. Needenthal & Company has been in business for over 50 years in your community, helping individuals and businesses grow. Needenthal & Company can help manage and prepare your payroll, plan your estate, and prepare your business and personal income taxes. Stop in to the Needenthal facility on North Wooster Avenue in Dover and become a valued client today. Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has just what you're looking for, so your athlete has the best gear for the sports they play. Dumont's has a large apparel selection and can handle your customized screen printing as well as embroidery for your team or business. For sporting goods and for all your apparel needs, Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has everything you want to play and look your best. PAC Drilling, a family-owned and operated company since 2005 in Bolivar, takes pride in being an economic oil and gas drilling company. PAC's objective is to contribute to American energy independence through profitable development, operation, and marketing of oil and natural gas wells. PAC also employs operating technicians to oversee each and every well drilled to maximize its productivity and longevity. Contact PAC Drilling at PAC. Drilling.com. 
Well, the, uh, stere the stereo system might be saying Sweet Home Alabama, but we're saying Sweet Home Uricksville today as we've got high school basketball, five different games upcoming in this Claymont midseason shootout. In our first contest, it is the East Canton Hornets leading the Springfield Spartans 18-14 to in what has been a very gritty defensive battle so far to this point. With the 18 points for East Canton, Shannon, six of those have come from their big man and senior Caleb Schilling, the six-foot-nine senior. With those six points, he also has seven rebounds and three blocks. But despite those best efforts from him, his team only leads by four. The Hornets have been kind of disjointed at times against the Spartans' defense that's been unrelenting. Yeah, that Springfield Spartans' defense, they're, they're giving up a lot of size. When you looked at them warming up on different sides of the court, you thought, oh, they're going to match up pretty good. But then when you see them underneath the board together, the Spartans got a big disadvantage in, inside the paint with that height, and their uh, half-court defense has been phenomenal to keep the big man at bay. It certainly has, and the next leading scorer for East Canton has been their other big man, and Jaden McLeod, as he's got a pair of banks from the charity stripe as well as two points with a field goal. Then you got three points going to McCroskey. He buried a three-pointer. Back in the first quarter, Kellen Dutchman, or Deutschman also had a three-pointer. Then you've got two being chipped in off the bench by Isaac Candle. That's been it so far for the scoring for East Canton. They have spread it around just a little bit better than Springfield overall. On the other side of the thing for uh, the other side of the coin for the Spartans, six points by way of Anthony Ahern as he knocked down two three-pointers there in that second quarter. They also have four points from Brady Hahn. Those both came back in the first. Then you got a pair of field goals by way of uh, Braden Farmer, as well as Logan Gaspar. And again, outside of that, no real scoring outside of those guys. The rebounding advantage by far and away has gone in favor of East Canton. But clearly, to this point, that hasn't been a huge issue for the Hornets. No, they haven't been able to or, finish. Or pardon me, I should say Spartans. <laughs> yeah, they uh, ha hasn't been uh, taking advantage of that, that situation. But one of the things that don't show up in a stat column is the defense again. And Jacob Thomas for the Spartans. Hahn and uh, Braden Farmer, man, they're the ones that have been doing the big work on the two big guys, and they, they've done an outstanding job with them. And they're going to have to keep it up and make sure they don't get in foul trouble here in the second half. Yeah, the turnover differential almost right down the middle between these. Believe it or not, East Canton has more steals than Springfield to this point, but it's been a lot of those turnovers that have been created. The Spartans aren't necessarily getting the steal, but they are forcing that turnover. You know, whether it's an errant pass, whether it's a drop ball along the baseline, they're going to have to keep that pressure going without a doubt for the second half. Yeah, and I think that's what the second half is going to come to. Both teams are going to have to really turn up that pressure because they're both having trouble getting shots to fall. Uh, the Spartans are getting into the paint now, but their shots are getting rejected, so they're going to have to work on their perimeter game on the outside to try to try to create some shots out there. The Hornets just got to find a way to finish. They're getting into the paint a lot, but that Spartan defense with that pressure defense is just making them, like you said, they're either dribbling it out of bounds or they're just off the bottom of the rim. So. I think both teams are really going to turn up the defense here in the second half to see if it can help their offense. Well, it'd be hard to turn it up more than you got in that first half, but let's hope that they do. It is East Canton leading Springfield 18-14. to That will do it for our DAC Vitamins and Minerals halftime report. When we return, second half of basketball in game number one of the Claymont midseason shootout. Stick around. The Tuscarawas County Dairy Farmers want you to know that low-fat chocolate milk is a great choice for student-athletes and hard workers. It provides the nutrition needed after practices, games, or a hard day at work, and it tastes great. Low-fat chocolate milk is packed with carbohydrates for energy, proteins to repair muscles, fluids to rehydrate, plus vitamins and minerals to help build strong bones and bodies. It's the official beverage of the Ohio High School Athletic Association. Tuscarawas County Dairy Farmers. Farms. Family. Food. This is Carly Mills. At First Federal Community Bank, our mission is to empower the financial well-being of our community one person at a time. Through integrity and quality, we earn the trust of our customers and exceed their expectations. First Federal Community Bank, investing in our community since 1898. Serving your banking needs in Dover, New Philadelphia, Eurexville, Sugar Creek, Berlin, and Mount Hope. First Federal Community Bank, member FDIC. 
Jeff Wallach LLC is a family owned and operated company proudly serving greater Northeast Ohio and surrounding communities for over 25 years. We specialize in vinyl siding, replacement windows and doors, gutters, downspouts, and much more. We provide quality service regardless of the size or scope of the project. Our crews are reliable, respectful, and mindful of a safe work environment. Jeff Wallach LLC is certified by the Better Business Bureau. Call today and discover how we can assist you in making your vision a reality. In the rolling hills of Holmes County, we tend to do things a bit differently. At Kime, we're in the business of uncommon experiences, and we're here to care for your project like we care for our own. We believe that quality matters and want to help you get it right the first time because your project deserves it. So visit Kime Home Center, your source and destination for all things home, building, and woodworking. Kime, built on trust since 1911. Hi, this is Jan McInturf. For the past 30 years, the residents in and around Tuscarawas County have made the call to the realtors and staff at McInturf Realty for buying and selling of residential and commercial properties. We truly live in a great community, and in all those communities, there's nothing better than high school basketball. For myself and all the agents and staff at McInturf Realty, we would like to wish all the area athletes good luck this season and make the call to McInturf Realty at 330-364-SOLD or find us online at McInturfRealty.net. TMK Valley Propane is embracing remote tank monitors. Are you tired of going outside to check your propane tank or forget to order your propane on time? TMK Valley Propane now provides reliable remote tank monitoring technology. Let TMK Valley Propane take the worry away, provide timely delivery, and never run out of propane again. Thank you for your trust in TMK Valley Propane. All the way with TMK, service with a personal touch. Altman is here for you, in your community, because you matter. We're proud to be the area's first and only independent health system. We are one team, joined together, and committed to one mission, to lead our community to improved health. And we've always been here, dedicated to providing you with the very best in care, wellness, education, insurance, and more. For your community and for your family, Altman is always here for you. Back for the second half of game one of the Claymont midseason shootout from the PAC Drilling Mobile Studio. Big Z Sports returning as we got more high school basketball on the way here from Eurexville. You got to love this situation here, Shannon, because everybody's just excited about the games, even getting the officials to lighten up there a little bit at halftime. Yeah, the officials come over here talking to us, this and that. And Luckily, we don't say nothing bad about the officials on our broadcast. If they go back later to watch how good of a job they did, they'll be impressed with us. Exactly. Big thank you to all of our presenting sponsors in WM Commercial Roofing, Novellus, the Tuscarawas Insurance Agency, and Altman Hospital. And a big shout-out as well to the First National Bank of Denison, who had a huge part in making this classic possible as Gaspar's going to pull up for the mid-range, and he'll knock it down. Springfield starts off on the right foot. Hahn with the assist. Yeah, just like we said, they got to get out there on that perimeter and get those shots off. And he had a nice open shot, and he made it go in. 18 to 16 now. Just a two-point lead for the Hornets. McLeod from the corner. Entry. Schilling. He'll go. Left block off the backboard. No good. Rebound going to get hauled in there by Ahern. Yeah, Ahern gets the rebound, but nice job by Gaspar to come over on the backside with that defense to make him alter his shot. Springfield playing a lot bigger than they're listed at, and the rebound's going to get tipped into the hands of Gaspar. He'll go out. Three-point shot is buried, and it is good for Sigfirth, who's given Springfield the lead. Sigfirth's first bucket of the game. It's also Gaspar's first assist. McLeod pulls up, and he was way right on that three-point shot. No good. Ahern with another rebound. He'll bring it up. Fake to his left. Now goes to Hahn at the top. Spartans with all of the momentum to start the second half. Yeah, Spartans doing a nice job. Deep three again. Ahern off back iron. Rebound tipped away by Hahn into the hands of a teammate. Ahern's got it. He'll drop it back and nearly with Sigfirth going down as he got hit hard from behind by Stubblefield. And hopefully we'll be all right to get back up as he will and we'll walk it off. That was a potentially dangerous play there. Yeah, Sigfirth right there. He wasn't expecting that pass. It was kind of a no-look pass to come back to him. He had to hustle back there to get it. As he got to it, he got fouled. Here comes Springfield again. 
Coach Dak will bark out instructions. Ahern gets a double screen. He'll go and split the defense. Now a baseline find to Hahn. It was too low, though. He'll give it off to Ahern, who will pull up in the mid-range. Now go back out. Sigfirth fakes to his left and will dribble back out. It's hard to get through those trees that East Canton has underneath the rim. Springfield doing a good job so far of spacing it out. He's trying to find some driving lanes. Sigfirth will go off the backboard. No good. Schilling gets his eighth rebound. Yeah, just too hard off the backboard right there. He'll drop it off to Stubblefield. He's on the left side, right in front of us, and he will reset. Now it's in the hands of Deutschman. He'll go into Schilling, who tries an entry pass to McLeod, and that one worked out perfectly, just using the height advantage. Yeah, nice job by Schilling right there. He got the ball, just kind of laid it back over the top for McLeod. Nice little easy bucket. Sigfirth and Ahern back and forth, back and forth, trying to find a crack in the defense. They'll go to Hahn. He's got an open drive, but he'll go and stop and drop it back. Sigfirth, he'll drive in, goes baseline and tried to go up and under, and he double dribbled. Yeah, East Kent right now, kind of what I call boxing one defense right there. Schilling just hanging out in the middle, kind of caused a little bit of problem right there for the Spartans. 20 to 19 as East Canton has recaptured the lead. Back and forth seesaw battle. And this first matchup today from Eurexville. Again, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, you're going to want to do so, and you're going to want to stay tuned in all afternoon because we got nothing but high school basketball. Continuous live stream. Thanks to Claxon Communications and all of our sponsors. Schilling's going to go in, and it's an and one. As in the paint, I think they're going to say Gaspar shoved him. I and believe no. Han. It's his, sorry. Third, his third foul. Not good for Han there. A key contributor for Springfield. Schilling, again, use that height. And sitting now will be Hahn with those three fouls. Back in is Eckenrod. The six foot nine senior will tow the rubber, tow the free throw line and put it up in good from the first Federal Community Bank free throw line. Almost said tow the rubber, Shannon. We're not quite to baseball and softball season yet. Yeah, wishful thinking, Nick. <laughs> wishful thinking. Springfield brings it up. Entry pass, Farmer goes right side. Now they work it around. Sigfirth slings it to his left. And the ball's worked back to him, but there's no driving lanes. Ahern will drive. Now give it off, Sigfirth. He's going to have an open man in the corner. Instead, he tries to go on Schilling, and that was not going to work as Schilling blocked it again. Yeah, he tried a little Euro step right there. Schilling got it on the backside. Schrader tries to finish in the paint, cannot. Scramble for the rebound. It falls into the hands of McLeod, who finishes. That was one of those, hey, mom, look what I found moments as it somehow careened into his hands. Farmer stops and looks for somebody. Now goes back to Ahern. East Canton now leads by six. Farmer, right block, looking around. Schilling rips it away from him. And finishing on the other side is Schrader. What a way to start this. Second half after Springfield had all of the momentum. East Canton has opened up an eight-point lead. Ahern's way long on his three-point shot. Hauled in by Deutschman, and he'll bring it up for East Canton. Now, corner three-point shot is no good for Schrader. Schilling grabs the rebound. One dribble, tries to put it up. Can't finish, but he's fouled again. Yeah, the big man's starting to come into his game here in the third quarter. <laughs> it's, it's a slugfest underneath for all these rebounds as it will be two shots coming from the charity stripe. 27-19 is the lead now in favor of East Canton. That foul went on number three, Ahern, and that's also his third. He'll have to sit. Thomas and Berger come back in. Ahern and Farmer sit. First player in double digits in terms of scoring in this game is the 6'9 senior for the Hornets. His next one's up and good as well. Makes it a double digit lead too. East Canton opening things up. Ahern drives, goes right side. Thomas has an open step up three point shot and he buried it. That's a big shot to stop some of the momentum. Yeah, they needed that right there. And Thomas, nice little shot, found the bottom of the net. Drive, Schrader lost his footing, can't finish, grabs his own offensive board, tie up, and going down with it was Berger. Jump ball is going to favor East Canton. Yeah, nice job by Thomas and Berger and all those guys get on the board, or get on the ball to keep them from getting another shot. 
Some more substitutions. Schrader will sit, and McCroskey is back in. To inbound will be Stubblefield for the Hornets, and he'll go to Schilling. Yeah, they don't have a problem in that inbounding the ball. <laughs> Just kind of lay it up there. Very rarely. Ball makes its way back to Stubblefield, who will set up the offense at the volleyball line. That one nearly mishandled by Deutschman. He'll go in, Schilling, and he got hacked. Not sure who the foul's going to be on. It's either going to be on Berger or Thomas. And it looks like they're going to say it was Berger. That's his first. Yeah, and they're, they're going to say they got him while he was on the ground after he caught the ball, so that's not a shooting foul. Given what we've seen so far from Schilling, it's done. Can't really call it hack a shack because he's doing pretty good from the free throw line. McLeod has it. He'll go to work on Thomas on the right block. Can't finish on the spin. And it's Sigfield who has uh, Sigfirth who has the rebound. At some point, I'll get that last name right, Shannon. And a timeout is going to be called here. We'll go ahead and take it with them. A Cush Financial Group timeout. We're back in 30 seconds. Hi, I'm Zach Motzeis with the Tuscross Insurance Agency. For all your auto, home, farm, and business insurance, contact our team at the Tuscross Insurance Agency. Or stop in and see us at one of our three locations in downtown New Philadelphia, Sugar Creek, or in Strasburg, providing excellent service to the Tuscross Valley since 1885. Everyone here at the Tuscross Insurance Agency would like to wish all area athletes and teams good luck this winter. Welcome back into Eurexville. 29-22 is the lead. East Canton has opened up over Springfield. Nick and Shannon, as well as the Claxon Communications crew. Currently, Judd Bone running the computer and running the uh, producing for us. And behind the camera is Carson Zoller. Thank you to both of them for all their efforts. And thank you to everybody at Claxon who are bringing you this live stream throughout the day. It is Springfield who has it. And Berger drives, kicks right. Gaspar was nearly not ready for it. He'll pump fake, goes baseline. There's going to be nothing there, and he traveled. He was in the paint, and he did pivot. Only problem was I think he drugged the foot as he pivoted. Yeah, he, he, he traveled on that one. I, I like how he tried to explain it to the referee, but you're not going to win that one. He might have changed his pivot foot, actually. Might have been the issue. Stubblefield at the top, and will go off to Candle, left side. Now they find McLeod in the corner. He's, the big man's not afraid to put it up from deep. We've seen him hit from there already. Stubblefield is guarded by Eckenrode. They'll have to work it back out, and Schilling has it. He wants to hand it right back to Stubblefield. Eckenrode all over him now. Schilling puts it on the deck. He'll spin in the lane, lost the handle, and he'll go up, and they're going to say a charge. They're going to say Schilling kind of got that elbow out there when he spun around. Yeah, Schilling was backing him down, and when he went to spin to the right, he kind of threw that arm up a little bit, and the referee called it. So some pressure defense again from East Canton. Well, half pressure. They're going to let Thomas come straight across the timeline. He'll drive right and drop it off. That's Fortner. He'll go behind his back to his left. He's going to have an open three-point shot, and he just missed. Rebound to McLeod, and he got hit from behind and goes down hard. As two shots will be upcoming. They're going to get Berger on that foul. That's his second. McLeod back up. Another one of those situations, Shannon, where, you know, they're trying to account for the big man's height and you're going to have to be a little bit more aggressive on the rebound, but normally what happens is a little more bodies flying around when that has to happen. Yeah, they, they went in there. Two guys went in there kind of hard at the same time to body him up, and I think one of them tripped over the other one's foot and just kind of wiped the whole, whole pile out. Candle has it right in front of the East Canton bench. Now he'll go right to McCroskey. Three-point shot's not going to be there, and good hustle by Schrader for the offensive board. Now a drive inside Candle. He can't get it to fall. Rebound tipped away, and it's going to go into the hands of Thomas. Now he'll deliver it up. Gaspar, he'll stop, go up, and good. Nice play there as he knew Schrader was right behind him. He anticipated it and just stopped his momentum and knocked down a big shot there for Springfield. Brings it back to a five-point game. Now we're going to get a foul away from the ball called. See who it's on. It's going to be on Springfield. And Berger, I think they said he tried to grab and pull away from a screen. Yeah, and that'll be Berger's third foul. 
So with the new rule in place, high school basketball, we keep talking about it, but the five fouls, it's an automatic two shots, and it sends McLeod to the line. He'll dribble three times, put it up, and in. McLeod so far, Shannon, a quiet nine points he's had. Kind of been outshadowed or overshadowed by Schilling, but McLeod's played a big factor in this team as well. Yeah, McLeod, he's got a nice shot for big man, too. Just lays it up in there again. Give him 10. Springfield inbound. They trail by 7. Minute 20 showing on the clock. Thomas gets it up. It's Eckenrode. He'll dribble around. He gets double teamed, and he threw it away. It's another East Canton steal, but now it's going to be stolen away by Fortner. Nice job on Fortner right there not to give up on the play after the Spartans turned it over. His defense got him back. Here come the Spartans. Eckenrode has to pick it up. Gasper, he'll drive. Baseline, give it out. Thomas, corner, three-point shot was open. He left it short. Rebound goes into the hands of Fortner for Springfield. A second-chance opportunity. Extra pass, but now it's going to be a drive. Eckenrode goes Gaspar on the baseline, and they work it back out to Thomas. They'll hand it back. Eckenrode, three-point shot in and out, and it's re rebounded by McLeod, who's going to push it up to Schrader. And now we're going to get a foul called on Eckenrode. They're going to say they got him with the body. For Springfield, a new name out there on the floor, it's Maddox Warford, a 6'3 senior. So Schrader steps back to the first Federal Community Bank free throw line. Schrader so far in this game, two points, five boards. The 5'10 senior has really been hustling hard for this team. He leaves his first free throw short, though. McLeod will sit, so will Candle. Back in the game is Deutschman. And I didn't see who else came back in, Shannon. Uh, Schilling come in. Thank you. That one's up and good from Schrader. You want to tell me how I somehow missed the biggest guy on the court coming back into the game? Inbound there for Springfield's going to get taken away. It's Schrader. He'll work to the right. He loses his handle. Now he's tied up with his own player. He'll go off, and we'll find McCroskey, who will go back and forth. McCroskey, entry, Schilling. He's guarded by Warford. Now he'll go to work. He'll spin around, go between two players. He'll put it up, but he got fouled. So he doesn't get the and one, but he will go to the line for two. They're going to nail. It was Warford, it looks like. Trying to put a little bit more size on the big man for East Canton. And the first one is up and good, this trip down for Schilling. He now has four points this quarter alone from the charity stripe. And that was one of your keys of the game, make your foul shots, and the big man's answered the call. I think that was your key, actually. Oh, no, mine was, these was the rebound. And that one's in and out. We jinxed him. Gaspar grabs the rebound as Springfield works it down. It's Fortner to set it up. He'll stop at the volleyball line. He's double teamed, goes to the right corner, kind of traps himself, but he'll deliver to Eckenrode, who has the nice hands to pick it away. Spartans trail by nine, and there's going to be another turnover as Deutschman jumps in front of it, and they make sure there was no final shot there before the buzzer. On to the final frame of game number one. It's, it is East Canton over Springfield, 33-24. to 24. We're back after this. Are you neglecting your building's fifth wall? Did you know something as simple as a clogged drain can lead to a destructive roof leak? Protect your business assets with WM Commercial Roofing's Umbrella Care program. This program will provide you with regular maintenance surveys and repairs to extend the life of your roof. Invest in your business with our top quality materials, advanced techniques, and skilled craftsmanship. Are you ready for a reliable partnership? Visit our website, wmcommercialroofing.com, and follow us on Facebook and Instagram to learn more. Novellus Eurexville is the world leader in aluminum recycling, and they need you. They have immediate openings for general laborers, equipment operators, and various skilled trade positions. They'll start you at $22 per hour or higher. There are advancement opportunities, and Novellus offers industry-leading benefits. To apply or find out more, go to novellus.com slash careers and search Eurexville. That's novellus.com slash careers and search Eurexville. Novellus is an equal opportunity employer. into the final frame of game number one from the Claymont mid-season shootout. 
It's been a good one. East Canton leads Springfield 33-24. Thanks for tuning in with Big Z Sports from the PAC Drilling Mobile Studio. Coming out of this Cush Financial Group timeout. We'll see who's going to win game number one, and it's going to be another steal for Deutschman. He'll deliver to Schrader, who will spin. Stop at the free throw line. Kick back. Deutschman now inside. Schilling on the left block. He goes to work. Spin around shot in the mid-range. No good. He'll pull it back in again and put it back up and in. Another, he starts out the scoring for the fourth. Another rebound, another bucket. That gives him a double-double, his tenth rebound. Now a drive. Ahern drops off. Gaspar back out. Three-point shot by Thomas. Can't find the bottom of the cup. Gaspar rebounds it, but Deutschman steals it again. Deutschman's turned into a thief. In the past two minutes, that's two steals for him. Schilling has it. Goes to work again. He'll try to spin around in the paint. Goes up, and it's not going to fall, but Hahn's going to get called for the foul. And for Springfield, for one of their senior starters, that's the fourth foul for Hahn. Schilling will step back to the first Federal Community Bank free throw line. First one is up and good. He's been very proficient from the charity stripe today, Shannon, and a big reason why the Hornets find themselves up by 12. Next one, up and good as well. So make that 13. East Canton stretching their legs now. Springfield going to have to find a way to respond. That was Schilling's ninth point from the foul line. Hahn pulls up in the paint. No good. Schilling with another board. Here comes East Canton. Schrader gets it across the timeline. They go into Schilling. He'll spin. Left block shot and hits good. It's just bully ball down there now for the big man. Thomas will drive. He'll stop, drop it off. It's Ahern. And they're going to have a tie-up, and pulling it away is another steal for East Canton, and it's Campbell. Now it's stolen away by... Fortner, he'll drive, right block, off the glass, over top of Schilling. What a play there. Yeah, nice play by Fortner right there. Kind of did a little fadeaway layup off the glass. East Canton breaks the pressure. They still trail by 13, and it's plucked away. Gaspar gets it. He'll go off to Fortner, who will drop it by the timeline. He's trapped, has to give it off to Ahern, and he will. He'll pull up, give it out, Fortner. He'll drive, left side. Goes in on Schilling. He falls. Goes off to Gaspar, and it's no good. Rebound hauled in by Schrader. Here comes East Canton. Floater is not good. Is no good in the lane. Deutschman with the rebound. Schilling grabs it, and he's collided with with Thomas. Yeah, nice job by Schilling right there to get the ball secure and kind of spin away. Away, and he got fouled as he spun away. I think we have a timeout before the free throws, or we're actually going to have a conversation here. And I'm not sure what the conversation is. Are they going to say it was a flagrant foul? And I think they might, actually. Or something along those lines. Or somebody got teed up and we missed it. Because Schilling's standing there ready for a free throw. Actually, no, I think Springfield wanted a timeout, but they're going to have to do the free throws first, right? You'll have to do one, one free throw Well, it's first. not even a free throw because it was on the floor. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm confused. So that must have been what it is, is Springfield wants the timeout, but they're not going to give it to him because of the foul yet. Foul was on Thomas. Or we're, in, or we're completely wrong on this, Shannon. We well, have no idea what's going on. The, 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 the official just looked over and asked Coach Dak something, and I think that's what he's asking if he still wanted the timeout, and he told him no. Schilling drives right block up and in, but he traveled. And Coach McGonigal... I think was telling his big man just one too many steps there, buddy. 39-26, East Canton leads five and a half to go in this bowl game. Fortner goes back out. He's guarded by Schrader. Now it's a double team with Candle, and we're going to get a quick foul here, and I think they're going to say it was Candle. Yeah, I think he pointed at Candle while he was still sitting on and the floor. That is who it's going to go on. That would be his first foul. Some of the... The fans are getting a little into the game now. 
just a little animated, as we like to call it. Eckenrode will go on to Hahn, and he gives it right back on the inbound. Now Hahn has it. He'll stop at the free throw line, give it off, and a drive and lost. It was Gasper, but it luckily goes into the hands of Eckenrode for Springfield. Now they'll give it to Hahn on the drive off the glass. No good, but a foul is going to get called on McLeod, so he'll go to the free throw line. For yep. Go ahead, Shannon. I was Sorry. Say, nice job right there to get to the paint and alter your shot to where he couldn't get to it with the block. Instead, he blocked your body. For East Canton, not a lot of fouls for them. They've played mostly clean on defense. Hahn, short-armed, that free throw attempt. He'll try again. A couple of dribbles from him. He'll put it back up. And that one got the right roll this time. And now we're going to get a foul called on Schilling. They're going to say he was going, and they're going to say he shoved Eckenrod. So I just got done saying East Canton's done well on the fouls, Shannon, but Schilling now has three. Yeah, and it just kind of he used his arm to try to push him out when he stepped into the paint, and the official caught it. Ahern off of the inbounds pass, and he had two guys in front of him and still knocked it down. I'm impressed with that young man's range. He's a long ways back. Now I was going to say, I thought we had a whistle across the timeline. And we do. We did have a timeout there called by East Canton. Some miscommunication there somewhere. It's going to be a full timeout, and we'll be back in 60 seconds. This is RJ Jacobs from DAC Vitamins and Minerals. Did you know that DAC Vitamins and Minerals has more than 40 proven equine supplements that include daily multivitamins, joint digestion, reproduction and fertility, calming, and many other specialty products. DAC also carries a complete line of livestock products called DAC Show Contender. Feed DAC Vitamins and Minerals to get the competitive edge in the show pen. We've been feeding champions since 1983. Wood Electric has been trusted with all of your electrical needs for over 30 years. They are the place to call for residential, commercial, and industrial work. Wood Electric is available 24 hours a day and ready to help with any electrical problem, outage, or installation. Wood Electric, serving Tuscarawas County and beyond since 1988. Like Wood Electric on Facebook or find them online at woodelectric.net. It's the fourth quarter of game one of the Claymont mid-season shootout. 39-30 is the East Canton lead over Springfield. Five minutes showing, and Shannon, we've gotten a little bit more intense in the past few minutes while Springfield tries to mount this comeback. Yeah, Springfield's really amped up their half-court defense right here, try to force them into some mistakes. McCroskey cat half all the way across court. As the ball makes its way to McLeod, who nails it. Gives Schrader the assist. One thing about both big men for the Hornets, they're not afraid to shoot it deep or take it to the hole. Eckenrode will go off to Hahn. Now he'll go right. Ahern steps into the three. It's off back iron. Schilling had it, but it finally went into the hands of McCroskey. I don't know who got that rebound. They were really tied up underneath again. Left side, McLeod steps into a three, and he buries it again. Stubblefield with the assist. And all of a sudden, McLeod... Coming alive from deep. McLeod got 16 points now. There's a drive. Goes right side. Ahern pump fakes. Now he'll go dribble left. Left it short. McLeod with the rebound. That's his fifth. And he'll drop it off to Schrader. Now with a 15-point lead under four to go. I'd imagine the Hornets probably slow things down just a little bit. Yeah, you got to take good shots now. Move the ball around. McLeod cuts. Left block. Off the glass and good. My goodness, has McLeod come alive? Here's Springfield and the drive for Ahern. He'll go right side, Eckenrode. He'll pump fake, drives baseline, now drops it off. Gaspar, they'll go to Hahn, spin around, and a nice soft touch there as Hahn will finish in the paint. Remains a 15-point game now. Three and a quarter to go in the fourth. McLeod left side. McCroskey pump fakes. He's picked up by Hahn. They go back. Ahern's going to guard McLeod. And now he'll have it pulled away. That was good defense by both Ahern as well as Hahn. There's another shot that was off by Ahern. He'll grab his own rebound. He'll go up. Another tough angle shot. That's off the backboard. And it is McLeod with another rebound. 
And there goes Schrader down the left side, and he finishes and cashes in again for East Han Canton as they increase their lead to 17. Hahn stops, spins, over top McLeod, no good. Schilling grabs the rebound again. That's his 12th. He'll deliver it down the court to Schrader, who will dribble back out. There's McCroskey, who will deliver it off to Stubblefield and stop right in front of the East Canton bench as Coach McGonigal calls out another play. Delivery in the inside. Schilling back out, and now it's just some in and out work, just killing more clock as Stubblefield will stop, sling it left side. Three point shot is there again, and it is buried again. Where is this coming from, Shannon, as we got a timeout on the floor? The big man's shooting a long ball right now, and he's nailed him. He's now the top scorer with 21 points. I thought we had a timeout, but it looks like we will not. Just some substitutions. All of a sudden, Jaden McLeod has buried three shots from deep this fourth quarter. Here comes Springfield across, and Fortner. They'll go left side to Eckenrode. Under two to go, and it's all of a sudden a 20-point game. East Canton, their offense has just come alive. Entry pass there for Springfield and back out. It's going to be a three-point shot for Fortner in and out, and Schilling grabs his 13th rebound of the game. He's going to try to go coast to coast, and he'll deliver off the glass. No good. Rebound, knocked out of bounds, and they're going to say it's East Canton ball. It went off the hands of Thomas. I was trying to say for Springfield in for the first time today is a sophomore in Robert Severin. Of course, immediately following the contest, we will wrap things up with our Dumont Sporting Goods post-game show and get ready for the second game for the McInturf Realty player of the game. You'll have to reference our Facebook page. Where that's where we'll be posting. We'll probably make the announcement on air at least. Left side is Fortner. He'll work around. He'll drive. He lost it, but we're going to get a foul called. Foul's going to be called on McCroskey for East Canton. Yeah, this fourth quarter, that Hornets offense, it come to life mainly because of Jaden McLeod. He's got, what, three three-pointers in the fourth quarter. The, the big man just found his spot over here on the left wing. Looks like East Canton is emptying the bench here. There's a three-point shot for Fortner's no good. Rebound's going to go to Eckenrode, who'll give it off, and Warford gets fouled, and he'll step to the line. With East Canton emptying the bench, I see Dominic Retta as well as Tyson Adams. I do not have a number 10 unless that is Eli Starnes, the freshman off the JV roster, Shannon. Yeah. As Warford's first one's no good. Yeah, they probably, they probably dress some extra kids today since the JV teams didn't have a game. Next one for Warford. That's off back iron. Tipped around. Eckenrode grabs the offensive board. Spins around. Can't put it in. Rebound's going to get hauled in by Adams in a tie-up. It will be East Canton ball. For Adams, kind of cool too, Shannon. He is a senior. You know, not in the starting lineup, but getting some good minutes here. Going to be able to enjoy a massive win here in our first game of the Claymont midseason shootout. 52-32 East Canton. They're up, and it's under a minute to go. Of course, the next game on the docket that we'll have here on our live stream, Loudonville will take on TCC. Both teams already in the building enjoying some of this basketball. Hornets will get the inbound. There's a shot from three-point range. It's way off the mark, dribbles out of bounds, and it stays with East Canton. Not a bad way to spend a Sunday, wouldn't you say, Shannon? Yeah, this is a great way, day to, the, yeah, great way to spend a Sunday. <laughs> Too many A's at the end of the words, right? Unless your team is still alive in the playoffs, and my team didn't even make the playoffs, so. Uh, don't, let's not bring that up. 48 seconds to go here in the fourth, 52-32, Springfield. They have the ball, and rattling in the three-point shot there and knocking it down is Severin. It will cut the lead to 17. I take that back. They said it was a long two. Shots missed on the other end by East Canton. They work it down. Fortner will kiss it off the glass. He's got four. Just 20 seconds remaining, 16-point game. East Canton's going to walk out of here with a victory as Retta has it. And it looks like he's just trying to dribble it out. We'll give it back to Stellanos, another junior on this team. As eight seconds show, and that should be a, it for our bowl game here from Eurexville. 52 to 36. 
East Canton will top Springfield in the opening game. And this was a tightly contested contest, Shannon, until that big run in the third quarter for the Spartans. Yeah, Jaden McLeod, he just come off the bench out of nowhere and just started drilling shots. Schilling kept up with the rebounds. The, the Hornets picked the defense up and uh, kind of stalled the Spartans out a little bit. And uh, the Spartans just really couldn't get going in the second half. Yeah, just kind of one of those situations for them, unfortunately, where they had they were within striking distance there for a while, but just were unable to ultimately uh, find the edge at the end. As you know, we could sit here and try to discuss our McInturf Realty Player of the Game, but Shannon, I don't think there's any doubt of who it should be. No, I mean, it, it, I mean, it, just the, the rebounds alone is a reason why you could give this kid the Player of the Game. I mean, just an outstanding performance. And with that being said, our McInturf Realty player of the game is Caleb Schilling from the East Canton Hornets. Yeah, his night, he, or his afternoon, I should say, he finishes with 18 points, 13 rebounds, and four blocks as he had a massive, massive performance for those Hornets. Right behind him, though, cannot let this one go. Jaden McLeod, that fourth quarter performance on those threes, too. But you can see where East Canton's bread and butter is. It's those big man big men underneath. Yeah, I mean, Jaden McLeod, he, he made us have a little conversation right there towards player of the game right there at the end. But things were kind of in hand thanks to the rebounding by Schilling. And th those two young men, when they get on a roll, they're very impressive. 52-36 is your final score again for our game number one. Stick around because we've got Loudonville taking on TCC. That is upcoming in just a few minutes as I'll step aside and hand things over to Chris Kale as he'll have your pregame leading up to that tip-off. Final score, 52-36. The McClaymont Midseason Classic returns after this. The First National Bank of Denison appreciates the hard work and dedication area athletes exhibit to be the best they can be for their team. We follow that same philosophy with our customers, working hard to build personal relationships and making our services convenient. The First National Bank of Denison's community involvement is important to us and we love supporting our local schools. The First National Bank of Denison with offices in Denison, Dover, Janate and Hutton, South Broadway and Shunbrunn in New Philadelphia. We have our roots where others have their branches. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Is your vehicle banged up? Do you want fast, professional service to get you back on the road? This is Garrett Jacobs with AutoWorks Collision Center. We service cars, trucks, SUVs, and even semi-trucks and RVs. Whether you need auto glass replacement, paintless dent repair, assistance with warranty and insurance, or just a free estimate, AutoWorks has you covered. We even offer alignments for your heavy-duty vehicles like buses, motorhomes, and semis with our state-of-the-art Hunter Alignment System. Call 330-878-4223. Open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Let AutoWorks of Strasburg work for you.
Welcome back to Claymont High School for game number two of the Claymont Midseason Classic, where the 2 and 8 TCC Saints take on the 5 and 8 Loudonville Redbirds. Coverage brought to you by Novellus, the Tuscarawas Insurance Agency, WM Commercial Roofing, Altman Hospital, and of course the First National Bank of Denison. Welcome into the Wood Electric pregame show. I'm your play by play announcer, Chris Kale, for game number two. Joining me in the PAC Drilling Mobile Studio is all night long Shannon Thomas. Abby Wright, Gage Wright for Claxon Communications. And uh, Shannon, both teams sorting through injuries and players that aren't here who started the season. The winner of this game can take a big step in the right direction. Yeah, this is the time of season right now. You can take this game and try to find out who you are. You're playing against a team that you don't normally see or you've probably never seen. And today's a big opportunity for both of these programs here on a Sunday afternoon at Claymont. Head coach Larry Taylor of the TCC Saints. Again, they come in at 2-8. and eight. Friday, they lost to Ridgewood 35-16. Jim Bates, the head coach of the Loudonville Redbirds, they come in at 5-8. and eight. They defeated St. Peter's on Friday 77-44. This is their first meeting, and it is time to go ahead and step away and do our coaches' interviews, all brought to you by Kime when we return. The Neenthal Company keys to the game and starting lineups between the Saints and Redbirds after this on Big Z Sports and Claxton Communications. Is your vehicle banged up? Do you want fast, professional service to get you back on the road? This is Garrett Jacobs with AutoWorks Collision Center. We service cars, trucks, SUVs, and even semi-trucks and RVs. Whether you need auto glass replacement, paintless dent repair, assistance with warranty and insurance, or just a free estimate, AutoWorks has you covered. We even offer alignments for your heavy-duty vehicles like buses, motorhomes, and semis with our state-of-the-art Hunter Alignment System. Call 330-878-4223. Open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Let AutoWorks of Strasburg work for you. Welcome back to the Claymont Midseason Classic. I'm Chris Kale, being joined courtside by Loudonville head coach Jim Bates, brought to you by Kime. Coach, a rough stretch for your club. The last two weekends, you played Friday, Saturday, and Monday. Now this weekend, you played St. Peter's Friday, TCC today, and then Mansfield Christian on Friday. Talk about how that either helps you or hurts you. You get a lot of gameplay, but not a lot of practice time. Mm -hmm. Well, being an experienced coach on other staffs at other schools, you know that happens during the season. It's there, there will be a week where you don't play, and then you get you get bunched up there. Uh, we love it. I know the kids would rather play than practice, even though we love our time in the gym. So yeah, we look at it as fun. We really do. I think that's we do have a young group and uh, still growing, and I see leaps and bounds of improvement. And uh, it's just it's it's baby steps. Yeah. So, Coach, uh, coming off the win Friday night against St. Peter's, talk about how you use that momentum today. Well, you hope to. Uh, you hope to use it and keep the ball rolling. Uh, I know Tusky uh, Central Catholic is, is scrappy. We have seen film on them and, and did our report. Uh, I know their coach is, is working hard also. And we're very comparable. Uh, we just lost probably 20 points a game off of our roster through – personal reasons so that just really hurts us but we didn't have them against St. Pete so we know we can get the job done if we all dot our I's and cross our T's. Coach what do you expect out of a feisty TCC team today? Yeah with the scout uh, they, they're they're longer than us uh, their point guard is, is solid we got him on our radar and uh, you always want to win and even a game like today, it's Sunday. Uh, we'd like to thank Claymont for this, what they're putting on. And we want to both put on a good showing. So uh, you, you have to go out and play. You just to play your hardest. Yep. Coach, your three keys to victory this afternoon to get a big win. We're big on uh, lining up when we line up our scouting report, individual uh, matchups. It's not so much you got to outscore the, uh, the opponent that you're matched up with, but defensively getting in the gap did you have your five assists did you shut him down from 15 to 10 uh my fours and fives did you get your 10 rebounds did you get your eight yep. we we have individual goals and team goals so once again it's a little bit tougher on us we're still young and but but i see it i see it progressing here so coach thank you so much for your time good luck this afternoon well thank you this should be fun all right, that is head coach of the Redbirds, Jim Bates, brought to you by Kime. When we return to Claymont High School, I'll be joined by TCC head coach Larry Taylor right after this on Cox Communications. 
In the rolling hills of Holmes County, we tend to do things a bit differently. At Kime, we're in the business of uncommon experiences, and we're here to care for your project like we care for our own. We believe that quality matters and want to help you get it right the first time because your project deserves it. So visit Kime Home Center, your source and destination for all things home, building, and woodworking. Kime, built on trust since 1911. Davis, how are you, sir? Welcome back to the Wood Electric pregame show. I'm Chris Gale being joined courtside by TCC head coach Larry Taylor, brought to you by Kime. Coach, you sit two and eight on the year. Talk about some of the things you've been working on in practice to kind of get ready for second half of the season and tournament play. Well, believe it or not, Chris, not necessarily uh, the things you would think of, the confidence factor and all that and work hard ethic. It was uh, the little things. When we're not real good at every position versus who you're playing against, over the years, it'll teach you that you got to take care of your own locker room first, your own gym floor, and it's the little things that's kept us from, you know, right off the bat, first game of the year, 41-47, we're up on uh, Monroe Central, I think they're still undefeated, and we can't finish it. On the little things, foul shooting, taking care of the ball, passing to a teammate that's open, all those things we work on every day. Coach, you got two seniors and three juniors in your starting lineup. How have they been ment mentoring the underclassmen and progressing throughout the season? Well, Coda and uh, Brody are just great leaders. They're great young men, you know, growing into who they are. Uh, but in experience, when it came to basketball, you know, actual minutes on that floor and all those things that go with it. So, you know, the, they are a role model for just not a, an athlete, for a student athlete in the classroom that everybody loves those kids. Um, our guys guys just look up to them and they, they have to understand that there's a line then it comes where you kind of flip the switch when you walk onto that basketball court and we could use just a little more of that right now. Coach Loudonville team awaits you this afternoon. What do you expect from them both ends of the floor? Well they're going to be fundamentally sound. They've got a, a good post player inside. He does a lot of good things. He'll create some trouble for you. You know getting to the basket once you're in the paint. Uh, so our kids will have to make that secondary move. Make it secondary pass. That's you know, we're not making, and I've told them that and most of the time that's the one that's going to kind of lead to a turnover because you're reckless with that pass. You're not off your feet. You're not looking, seeing the whole court. So they'll present that. They're going to play good fundamentals up and down. We're going to shoot the ball well. We're going to have to close out high hands on the three-point line and then still protect the paint with that big factor in there. So we'll have our work cut out for us tonight, but our kids are, are ready. They're coachable and they're great kids. Finally, Coach, what needs to happen to get the Saints out of here with a big win in this midseason classic? Well, our keys to winning are always the same. Number one, you got to play hard. Number two, you got to want to get to the basketball. You got to get to the basketball. Number three, once you get to the basketball, do something. Do something aggressive on defense, but smart, and make that good move to the basket, make a good kick for a three, but we cannot become a three-point team. We can't live on that three-point line. We got to rebound and let the chips fall and see how we do. Coach, thank you so much for your time. Good luck this afternoon. Chris, thank you. Appreciate all you do for so many. All right, that is Saints Head Coach Larry Taylor brought to you by Kime. When we come back to Claymont High School, we'll have an Edenthal Company keys to the game starting lineups and tip-off of game number two of the Claymont Midseason Classic between the Saints and the Redbirds on Big Z Sports. Welcome back to Claymont High School. Chris Kale, Shannon Thomas here with you for game number two of the Mustangs Midseason Classic. And I've got the Needenthal and Company keys to the game for the visiting Loudonville Redbirds. They need to rebound the basketball. They need to close out on shooters. They need to make good second and third passes inside the paint. The starters for the Loudonville Redbirds, head coached by Jim Bates. They come in at 5-8. J.J. Gillians, 5-10 sophomore. Number three, Dylan Wade, a 5-10 junior. Number four, Brady Gessner, a 5-9 junior. Number 12, Hunter Poland, a 6'1 senior. And number 13, Judah Layton, a 6'2 junior. Shannon, you have the TCC Saints needing throwing company keys to the game. Yeah, the Saints need to stay out of foul trouble today. They need to make sure they pass the ball around on offense, get everybody involved in the game, and don't live on the three-pointer. Make sure you get to the paint early. Starters for the TCC Saints. Number two, Cody Schumacher, 5'11 senior. Number five, 5'9 junior, Nathan Wright. Number 11, Brody Farrell, six foot senior. Number 12, Jason McQuall is a six foot three junior. And number 34, Bryson Grimes, six foot four junior. 
All right, thank you, Shannon. We are underway. The Saints in the home whites moving from left to right with the basketball to start things off here against Loudonville. Again, both these teams have got some injuries. They've got some players that uh, started the season that are no longer on the roster and uh, trying to find their way a little bit. This is Nathan Wright. Wright will give off to Jace McCollins. Now Bryson Grimes. Grimes with a baseline drive and the reverse layup is good. Nice drive to the basket by Bryson Grimes. Yeah, nice little vision right there. Seen an opening, went in there, laid it off the back side of the glass. So with the basketball is Williams. Over on the far side, Dylan Wade. Wade tried to get it back into Williams. He has it on the low block. Shot is up, off the rim, no good. Rebounded by Coda Schumacher. Schumacher will push at the pace up the basketball floor. Brody Farrell lost the basketball, but it's going to stay with the Saints. 7.07 to play, just underway. TCC, the home on the scoreboard. Loudonville in the road red. Three-point shot by Grimes. It's buried in the corner. Bryson Grimes, the 6'4 junior, has all five for the TCC Saints. Grimes must have seen Schilling down there from East Kent getting his hardware, and he's like, <laughs> I like that. I'm going after it. He wants the hardware today, the nice uh, plaques from the First National Bank of Denison. And, uh, man, those are nice plaques for our player of the game for this Claymont midseason classic. Yeah, Adam did a nice job right there working with First National Bank of Denison and getting those. Oh, they call the charge there on Jason McCollins. Or no, they did. They got no. the block in the end one. I thought they called the charge. No, I think the official wasn't sure which way he's going to go, so he kind of changed up his motion halfway <laughs> through and then called the block. So nice job by Jason McCollins right there to get into the paint. <laughs> he threw me a, a fake. That was a ball fake. So the 6'3 junior at the first Federal Community Bank foul line is good. So that's the first trip for... Either team, and the Saints up 8-0 quickly. Yeah, Hunter Poland picked up that foul for Loudonville. So with the basketball, Brady Gessner hands off to Williams. Dylan Wade with it. Back over to Gessner. Gessner. Judah Layton left wing. A little jab step, dribbles towards the baseline. Really good defense there by Brody Farrell. Ball's going to go out of bounds, stay with Loudonville. TCC. Good defense right now on, on their part, pitching a shutout through almost two minutes. Yeah, and that's what it's going to take. It's going to take some good half-court defense. You know, they, both teams look like they size up well. Oh, and he stepped on the baseline, or the uh, end line. Yeah, he, he, he got the pass, took his foot backwards, stepped on the baseline, didn't realize he was that close to it, so that another turnover. Yep, second Loudonville turnover early on through the first two minutes, and the Saints up 8 nothing right now. Dakota Schumacher has the basketball, top of the key. They'll find Nathan Wright, and they turn it over. Coming the other way, Loudonville looking for their first points and a nice steal. Dakota Schumacher with the strip away, the nice find in the score. Nathan Wright down Broadway. Dakota Schumacher got the steal and the assist there. Yeah, nice job right there by Schumacher. Good court vision. Loudonville gets a runner off the rim. No good by Wade. Second shot up, no good. And rebounded by Bryson Grimes. Saints, 10 nothing to start this one through about two and a half minutes. Back on the offensive end. Wright has it on the right wing. Not spelled the same. Come on, man. You're not even going to give me a <laughs> chuckle out of that? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get my stat sheet <laughs> cut up. You're over here playing comedian. <laughs> Oh, Loudonville with a quick timeout. Yeah, timeout. Jim Bates will take it with them. We'll be back in 30 seconds after this. TCC 10, Loudonville nothing from the Claymont Midseason Classic. Cush Financial Group has been proudly serving the financial needs of local community members for over 35 years. The team at Cush Financial follows an industry-leading service model with the unique approach and fiduciary responsibilities associated with their board-certified financial planner. With over 75 years of combined experience, the advisors at Cush Financial Group are here to help you achieve your financial goals. Contact the office at 330-308-8700 or visit cushfinancial.com to schedule your free consultation today. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Independent Capital Company Incorporated, member FINRA, SIPC. 
<laughs> Welcome back to the Claymont Midseason Classic. Shannon actually, Shannon actually said why he was uh, wasn't laughing at my jokes. He was distracted by marinara sauce. Yeah, Nick. Nick, he he called the first game. He's not back till the third game, so he goes and gets some food from the concession stand, sits down behind us, and you can't do that to a big guy when he hasn't really had anything to eat yet today. I, I know, I'm with you. And uh, thinking of Travis McClellan, he got uh, a little dinged up yesterday, I guess, and uh, unable to be here today, having some issues. So, Travis, we're thinking about you, brother. We would definitely miss you. He would have been here for games three and four, or I'm sorry, four and five today. Three-point shot from Loudonville in the corner. No good. Nice offensive rebound by Dylan Wade. And he gets on the scoreboard for the Loudonville Redbirds. Yeah, Wade with his second rebound. That one was a nice one. Kind of come back down. Went right back up with reverse layup. Schumacher traveled down the lane. Got his ball poked away a little bit there, but recovered it. Got the shot up and no good. So 4-12 to play. First quarter. 10 to 2, Saints in front. Grimes almost had an and he did get the steal. Fourth Loddenville turnover. Grimes with another takeaway for the Saints. He's going to try and drive down the lane, was double teamed, and he's going to pick up the contact. Yeah, number 13, but he got him, he got him on the floor. So that foul's going to go against Judah Layton. And a nice inbound play from Grimes to Schumacher. Go to Schumacher with his first two points of the basketball game. Three-point shot on the way. No good by Wade. The offensive rebound now scrum on the floor and a tie-up, and it's going to stay with Loudonville. Oh, look at the, the arrows going that way. There we go. So checking in. I don't have a 41 on my roster, Shannon. I'm going to say it's Noah Langel, but <laughs> I don't have a 41. I got a 40, don't have a 41. So we'll go with what we think. Yeah, I think it's Noah Langel. If it's not, maybe somebody will text us if they're watching on YouTube. So in the corner, Loudonville with the basketball. A nice drive by Wade. Shot up no good. Three sixteen to play, 12-2. Saints in front. Brody Farrell going to pick up the foul for the Saints right there. Send Wade to the foul line. He makes it. So making the first one from the... First Federal Community Bank foul line, Loudonville's first trip. Second shot up, no good, rebounded by Grimes. Nice defense there, interior by Judah Layton of Loudonville, knocking that ball away, but TCC Stays with it. Three-point shot is good. Grimes again. Bryson Grimes has eight. And TCC 15 to three. Ah, we were wrong. It's Ethan Rothrock. Uh, I'm looking at I'm looking at the complete wrong roster. You got Ethan Rothrock, and I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. Three point shot on the way, no good, by Brady Gessner. So Rothrock, a six four freshman, in the basketball game for the Saints, didn't have that on the uh, roster that head coach Larry Taylor sent me. Apologize for that. And at the other end, a score for the Loudonville Redbirds. Hunter Poland gets that one to go to cut the lead to 15 to 5. 146 to play. First quarter. Still sorting through some things. TCC was a little, little late getting here, but Loudonville was really late. We didn't get a roster until they got here this afternoon. 
So don't have a lot of information on the Redbirds. We apologize for that, but sometimes that's the way it goes, Shannon. Hey, when you're, when you're going to do five games straight live today and you try to get your information all wrapped up in a couple days in advance, sometimes you just don't make it. Sometimes you don't make it. We try, but a nice interior pass there and a drive to the basket. Shot was up and no good by Jace McCollins. Rebounded by the Redbirds, and we've got a foul in the backcourt with 110 to play. Yeah, they're going to get Rothrock on that. He just kind of was leaning on the Loudonville player, and the Loudon player was trying to keep his pivot foot, and then he just fell, so they got Rothrock on the shove. So inbounding Hunter Poland in the backcourt. He'll get it into Gessner, and Grimes will pick up just before they get to the timeline with the man-to-man -man pressure. 15 to five, Saints in front. Wade with it for three, shot off the back of the rim, no good, and rebounded by Brody Farrell. McCollins will bring it across the timeline in front of the Loudonville bench. Rothrock left wing. Looking, McCollins almost threw it over his head, and a drive baseline, kick it in the corner. Grimes has been hot, and a little heat check there as he catches nothing but air. Yeah, the defense pressure was coming, so he kind of just forced that shot and pushed it. Didn't really get a follow through on it, and he came up short. Yeah, short arm that one. Elliot Strauss in the corner for the Redbirds. Now on the low block was Leighton. Collins going to come up with the rebound there. Nine seconds. We'll see if Schumacher is going to hurry here. Five seconds. He's at the timeline. Four seconds, Schumacher, Grimes in the corner. Three-point shot off the rim, no good. Rothrock the rebound, but the stick back is going to be not in time. So we've reached the end of the first quarter. The TCC Saints with a 15-5 lead. Game number two of the Claymont Midseason Classic. Back after this on Big Z Sports and Claxic Communications. Do you hunt, fish, sew, or have a hobby that you would like to share with someone? Hi, this is Noah Sug with Brig Brothers Big Sisters, and we are faced with our biggest commitment in matching 56 littles with bigs. We will match a little with you that shares the same interests and enjoys the same things, so you can do what you enjoy and change the life of a little at the same time. To learn more, we ask you call 339-6916 or visit bigs4kids.com slash volunteer. Thank you. The certified public accountants at Needenthal & Company believe in the value of relationships. Needenthal & Company has been in business for over 50 years in your community, helping individuals and businesses grow. Needenthal & Company can help manage and prepare your payroll, plan your estate, and prepare your business and personal income taxes. Stop in to the Needenthal facility on North Wooster Avenue in Dover and become a valued client today. Welcome back to Claymont High School. TCC with the lead 15 to five as we get ready to start quarter number two. Loudonville with those four turnovers definitely hurt them in the first quarter. Saints will start with the basketball. Grimes has been hot, but he missed two wide open threes. Yeah, Grimes got eight points and he's missed a couple his last couple shots, so he's got to get back in rhythm. But like I said, one of the keys of the game was don't live on that three. Yeah. And, and now that might hurt him. Absolutely agree. The Needenthal and Company keys to the game don't live at the three-point line. And uh, TCC trying to live out there just a little bit. Grimes take the baseline drive. Shut off good defense there by Layton. And a block from behind. Layton blocked him. And they're going to get a foul. Not sure if it's going to be on... Yeah, they're going to get uh, number five, Elliot Strauss, on that one. So the 5'9 freshman picks up foul number one in quarter number two. And Grimes going to make the first one from the first Federal Community Bank trip to the foul line. Tell you what, they had Grimes pinned down there. I thought he made a nice move to get to the hoop, but they recovered and got the block, but then they fouled him. Yep, three for three are the TCC Saints from the foul line. Another one of those need and company keys to the game. Got to make your foul shots. So Loudonville with the basketball trailing by 12. 7.15 to play first half. Shot on the way by Wade was no good and rebounded by Rothrock. 
Grimes with it at the three-point line. Thought about it. Gave it up to Rothrock on the high post. Swinging it around the perimeter. Grimes with it back. Rothrock right wing. Schumacher trying to get some penetration there, but couldn't get it into the lane. Good defense right now by Loudonville. That switch man working pretty well on this trip. Collins drives to the baseline and gets it to go. Jason McCollins, the 6'3 junior, with a nice baseline drive. That's how you, uh, you know. And that's what you need, and that will open up your three-point shot. Then you won't have to force him. McCollins picks up his fifth point right there. Gessner with it in the lane, being guarded by about four feet taller. <laughs> Rothrock with the rebound. He threw it to Schumacher, and he couldn't handle it. Yeah, Rothrock making it a... Coming into the game, got three rebounds already. As he'll check out, checking back in, Brody Farrell. So Loudonville back with the basketball. Brady Gessner with it. TCC's second turnover in the first half. They've been pretty clean so far. Wade makes the entry pass down there, and Loudonville turned it over. That was Gessner who turned it over, fifth Loudonville. And rebound down there by Layton. McCollins made a nice pass in the Grimes, but I think yeah. Grimes took his eyes off and looked at the hoop first before he had a hold of the ball. And then they're going to get Grimes for the foul right there on the reach in. Yeah, definitely the third turnover there for the Saints. So Gester will bring the ball across the timeline for Loudonville. 548 to play. Grimes the man-to-man -man defense for the Saints. Gessner looking, in trouble, gets it to Struess, back to Gessner. We'll hand it off on the right wing, Dylan Wade. Wade with it, tried to drive, kick it to a player in the corner, and the player wasn't there, and a six turnover. There was some uh, white contact on the basketball before it went out of bounds, just yeah, saying. Uh, I, I agree, that's why I was shocked when he called it the other way, and he... Uh, if it had been down at the other end, we might have gotten a reaction out of a coach, but it was on the TCC bench, so he's like, right. oh, no, you got that right, ref. Jim Bates with his leg up over there for a minute. He wasn't real happy with it. Coda Schumacher, a nice athletic move into the lane. The drive and the score, TCC in control, 21-5 to five with five minutes to go. Schumacher almost got a steal right there. So with it on the right wing is Struess. Layton has it left wing. Man-to-man -man defense out of the Saints. Dylan Wade, Struess, and a foul. I want to get uh, Collins on that one. So nobody with more than one foul right now for TCC, and they don't go too deep into their bench, and that's one of those big things where you know, head coach Larry Taylor said, look, one of those Neen Thon Company keys to the game, we can't get into foul trouble. Yeah, when, when your bench isn't deep, you, you can't be sitting guys out. But now they just picked up another foul, and that one's going to go on number five, Nathan Wright. Kind of tried to reach over the top, got into the back of him, pushed him. So Wright with the foul. Three now in quarter number two for the Saints. Yeah, we're not halfway through the quarter yet, so that could come into play with that new foul roll. Leighton shot up off the front of the rim, no good. Rebounded by Schumacher. Schumacher with a second rebound. Dylan Dumermuth had a drive right there, and they'll swing it back around the perimeter. With it is right. Into the corner to Farrell. Farrell, baseline drive. Couldn't get the shot up to go. If he would have turned around, he would have had the basketball. But Leighton picked it up anyway for the Redbirds. That, that basketball went by about seven people before somebody <laughs> realized that it was at half court. And Dylan Wade finds one from the corner. So Dylan Wade gets one to go. The first three-point shot of the afternoon for the Redbirds, and they cut the lead to 21-8. to eight. Schumacher on the right wing. Dumermuth. I heard that over here. Time yeah, they out. Got, they got quiet here. The TCC <laughs> coach yelled, time out, time out. <laughs> time out. Head coach Larry Taylor will take a 30-second timeout back on Big Z Sports after this.
Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has just what you're looking for, so your athlete has the best gear for the sports they play. Dumont's has a large apparel selection and can handle your customized screen printing as well as embroidery for your team or business. For sporting goods and for all your apparel needs, Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has everything you want to play and look your best. Welcome back, Claymont High School. TCC with the 21 to eight lead, 3.43 to play in the first half. You haven't said anything about that uh, supposed defensive player of the year out of the Cleveland Browns pitching a goose egg yesterday for the, uh, for the Brownies. Oh, was he there? Yeah, I think he was there. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, Joe Flacco was there other than the two pick sixes in the second half either. I, I only seen one guy on the Browns <laughs> playing defense. That was that JOK guy. Yeah, JOK did play a good game for them. Browns uh, stayed in it in the first half, and they gave up that uh, touchdown late in the second quarter, and that was it. Nice rebound by Grimes as he gets the shot to go in, but it was a foul come from the floor. Yep, going to be a foul on the floor, but rebound by Grimes. In case you were wondering, neither of the two of us are Browns fans sitting here at the table. So <laughs> I don't know what Stumpy is, but I can tell you that uh, Sweski's not a Browns fan either. So Browns fans not going to get much love from us today on the broadcast. Well, we know Nick McWilliams down there is a Browns fan. But... Yeah, oh, I forgot about Nick. Yeah, good point. Coda Schumacher with it in the corner for the Saints. 21-8, to eight, they lead. Three minutes to play in the first half. Really good first half out of TCC. One of the better halves I think they've had in a little while. McCollins trying to post up down there. Finally came out and got it on the right wing. He'll give off to Schumacher. Thought about the three, still thinking about the three. Take a baseline drive, he hands it off. And it was a nice job by Wright to get it up off the glass. Rebound by Grimes. Grimes has been active here this afternoon in yeah, the first half. Grimes got the rebound, went back up, got fouled, so he'll go to the line for two shots. 21-8, to eight, Saints in front, 2.40 to play. First Federal Community Bank foul line, trip for Price and Grimes. And he missed the first one. That was the first miss from the foul line for the Saints this afternoon. Grimes will try it again. And it's good. So four for five for TCC from the foul line. They lead 22 to eight, playing really good defense. Grimes. At this end of the floor, go ahead, sorry. Grimes, well, Grimes leading all scorers right now with 11 points. Leighton thought about the three. Dylan Wade with it. Wade, the spin move into the lane. He almost threw it away. Grimes touched it, and he wished he hadn't. Yeah, and, and I think he thought he was going to grab it right there at the last second, too, he thought the yeah. Loudonville player was going to touch it, but he pulled his hand back. And nice, nice defensive play down there by TC to keep him out of the paint. Yep. So Williams has it. Three-point shot by Wade finds the bottom. Dylan Wade, the 5'10 junior. He's got nine of their 11, and that cuts the lead in half. 22 to 11, Saints doubling up the Redbirds right now. Three-point shot by Grimes was no good. Leighton with a rebound. I keep giving it the number three in red if you're the Redbirds. Yeah, Wade's got two three-pointers here in the second quarter. Wade with it. He's going to do a step back three, and he's going to drill it. Wow. What was that Steph Curry stuff right there, huh? Well, that, that was a nice step back, and that had a high arch on it. Yeah, it did. 22 to 14. Here come the Redbirds. That's nine in the quarter for Wade. Yeah. Nine in the quarter and 12 for the game. He's got 12 of their 14. Schumacher to the foul line. They go out to Dumermuth. Dumermuth has it. He'll swing it around. Dumermuth needs to tie his shoes before he trips and falls. The Saints, the Saints got to do what they're doing right here. Keep passing around. Don't get in that three-point shooting contest with Wade right now. Be patient with the ball. Yeah, you don't want to live by the three. They cannot do it. 
for TCC. Schumacher really wants to shoot that three. He gets to the foul line. He's going to hit the little runner. It's up no good. And Grimes knocks it out of bounds. Nice job by Loudonville right there. Yeah, nice job by Loudonville. And oh, I think Schumacher got the look he wanted. It just wouldn't go down. And it won't go down for some reason. Kids today do not use the backboard. It's embarrassing to use the backboard, so you throw it off back rim. Right. So bringing across the timeline for Loudonville is Brady Gessner. 5'9 junior. Shot by Williams is no good. And rebounded by TCC. Coda Schumacher has it. 30 seconds to play. Head coach Larry Taylor says, hey, slow down a little bit. We're good. We can play for the final shot here. And... <laughs> <laughs> Jason McCullough said, no, I got a free lane to the basket. Yeah. I'm taking it. McCullough said, hey, coach, I got, I got to take this one real quick. 24 to 14, back up to double digits for the Saints. Here is Layton with eight seconds. Six seconds. The swinging around, Wade has it. Dylan Wade, two, three-point shot on the way. It is no good by Gessner, and we've reached halftime. 24 to 14. TCC in front. This is the Dak Vitamins and Minerals Halftime Show. We'll be back with some stats from the first half right after this on Big Z Sports and Classic Communications. PAC Drilling, a family-owned and operated company since 2005 in Bolivar, takes pride in being an economic oil and gas drilling company. PAC's objective is to contribute to American energy independence through profitable development, operation, and marketing of oil and natural gas wells. PAC also employs operating technicians to oversee each and every well drilled to maximize its productivity and longevity. Contact PAC Drilling at PackDrilling.com. The Tuscarawas County Dairy Farmers want you to know that low-fat chocolate milk is a great choice for student-athletes and hard workers. It provides the nutrition needed after practices, games, or a hard day at work, and it tastes great. Low-fat chocolate milk is packed with carbohydrates for energy, proteins to repair muscles, fluids to rehydrate, plus vitamins and minerals to help build strong bones and bodies. It's the official beverage of the Ohio High School Athletic Association. Tuscarawas County Dairy Farmers. Farms. Family. Food. This is Carly Mills. At First Federal Community Bank, our mission is to empower the financial well-being of our community one person at a time. Through integrity and quality, we earn the trust of our customers and exceed their expectations. First Federal Community Bank, investing in our community since 1898. Serving your banking needs in Dover, New Philadelphia, Eurexville, Sugar Creek, Berlin, and Mount Hope. First Federal Community Bank, member FDIC. Jeff Wallach LLC is a family owned and operated company proudly serving greater Northeast Ohio and surrounding communities for over 25 years. We specialize in vinyl siding, replacement windows and doors, gutters, downspouts, and much more. We provide quality service regardless of the size or scope of the project. Our crews are reliable, respectful, and mindful of a safe work environment. Jeff Wallach LLC is certified by the Better Business Bureau. Call today and discover how we can assist you in making your vision a reality. In the rolling hills of Holmes County, we tend to do things a bit differently. At Kime, we're in the business of uncommon experiences, and we're here to care for your project like we care for our own. We believe that quality matters and want to help you get it right the first time because your project deserves it. So visit Kime Home Center, your source and destination for all things home, building, and woodworking. Kime, built on trust since 1911. Hi, this is Jan McInturf. For the past 30 years, the residents in and around Tuscarawas County have made the call to the realtors and staff at McInturf Realty for buying and selling of residential and commercial properties. We truly live in a great community, and in all those communities, there's nothing better than high school basketball. For myself and all the agents and staff at McInturf Realty, we would like to wish all the area athletes good luck this season. And make the call to McInturf Realty at 330-364-SOLD or find us online at McInturfRealty.net. TMK Valley Propane is embracing remote tank monitors. Are you tired of going outside to check your propane tank or forget to order your propane on time? TMK Valley Propane now provides reliable remote tank monitoring technology. 
Let TMK Valley Propane take the worry away, provide timely delivery, and never run out of propane again. Thank you for your trust in TMK Valley Propane. All the way with TMK, service with a personal touch. Altman is here for you, in your community, because you matter. We're proud to be the area's first and only independent health system. We are one team, joined together, and committed to one mission, to lead our community to improved health. And we've always been here, dedicated to providing you with the very best in care, wellness, education, insurance, and more. For your community and for your family, Altman is always here for you. Hi, I'm Zach Motzeis with the Tuscross Insurance Agency. For all your auto, home, farm, and business insurance, contact our team at the Tuscross Insurance Agency. Or stop in and see us at one of our three locations in downtown New Philadelphia, Sugar Creek, or in Strasburg. Providing excellent service to the Tuscross Valley since 1885. Everyone here at the Tuscross Insurance Agency would like to wish all area athletes and teams good luck this winter. Welcome back to Claymont High School. Chris Cal, Shannon Thomas here with you at the Dak Vitamins Minerals Halftime Show. TCC with the 24 to 14 lead, and uh, it was it was bigger than a 10 point lead. Probably should be bigger than a 10 point lead, but a nice spurt by the Loudonville Redbirds there in uh, quarter number two, Shannon. Yeah, and that all come behind Dylan Wade. Only won the score in the quarter for uh, Loudonville with three three pointers. He had uh, nine in the, in the second quarter. So they gave him, gave him 12 points for the half, and Hunter Pullen's the only other one to score, and he's got a two-point bucket. So, I mean, only two players scoring for them. And then you go up to TCC, who come out hot to start the game, and that was all due to Bryson Grimes. Had eight in the first quarter. He ends the half with 11 points. Chase McCollins has got six points. Cody Schumacher, four, and Nathan Wright's on the board with two points. And then, like you said, the Saints come out hot, but Loudonville made a little bit of run right there, so they got to continue that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, TCC led 15-5 to five after the first quarter. Both teams scored nine points in the second quarter. It leads us at 24-14. to 14. TCC with only three first-half turnovers. Loudonville had six. And from the first Federal Community Bank foul line, uh, TCC four of five at 80%, and Loudonville one for one at 100%. So not a lot of trips. Been a pretty good basketball game. Probably one of the better halves that we've seen out of TCC this year. Uh, you know, I'll tell you what, they, they just got to, you know, Coach talked about not being able to finish games. They played, uh, I think, the first week of the season, he said they played somebody, it was West Muskinga maybe, who's still undefeated, and he said they had a six-point lead late in the fourth quarter there and blew it. We need to learn how to close out games. He said, you know, it should be better than what it is. Yeah, Record-wise. And, and for the Saints right now, they're doing all the things right. They're winning the turnover battle, and they're definitely winning the rebound battle. But they got to get away from that three-pointer. There was, a, there was a time right there late in the first quarter into the second quarter. They just started throwing up threes, and they weren't connecting with the rim. And, right. and that's one thing they got to get away from. That's how you end up losing games late because you're taking a bad shot selection. Cambridge Riverview coming up after this basketball game. Then uh, West Holmes and Carrollton. And then we'll finish the night with New Philadelphia and the Claymont Mustangs here. The Claymont Midseason Classic. Pretty fun afternoon. A continuous live stream. Uh, you know, the first game, uh, East Canton got the big win uh, over Akron Springfield. And, uh, man, East Canton got some big boys, but those big boys can shoot the three. Yeah, they can shoot the three and Shilling and McLeod. Shilling ends up being our player of the game in that game. 18 points, 13 rebounds. He had, wow. he had a double double, and, and, and that's what you got to do if you're a big guy like that, that size advantage. You got to make sure you clean that glass. And, you know, got to thank the Claymont Mustangs and their hospitality here today. They asked us to be here. They talked to Adam. So we're here for all five games. We got plenty of people from Claxton Communication, Big Z Sports, going to step up and do this broadcast. We got to give a shout out to all the volunteers at Claymont. There are going to be a yes. lot of people working the concession stand, got to clean the bleachers and stuff, get people in and out of the thing. So, a lot of people to make this uh, midseason classic happen here at Claymont. Yep, absolutely. A huge thank you again to Justin Jackson for having us here and, and getting everything situated. All the officials, like you said, all the volunteers, everybody that uh, took the time to put in for this broadcast. It, uh, it is definitely a good thing whenever you can get uh, five 
10 basketball teams together for five games throughout one day here on Martin Luther King weekend. And, uh, yeah, we're having some fun, and you get to go home and hopefully watch a Detroit Lions win later. Is that who you're going with, the Lions? I'd, I'd like to see. Man, I'd love to see the Lions. They, they, they fell on some hard times. And uh, Matthew Stafford coming back into Detroit, absolutely I'd love to see the Lions I, win that, that, that football game. I picked that game as the upset today as I got the, I got the Rams winning that game. I would, I would love to see the Dallas Cowboys go down, but I, I just think they're playing good ball and they're in their own house right yeah. now. Yeah, if it was if it was in Green Bay, I think total different story. But uh, yeah, I, I I agree with you. I think Dallas wins today. I think Detroit gets the win tomorrow. Um, I, everybody says the Philadelphia Eagles are falling on hard times. I don't believe it. I think the Eagles are going to win that that football game, and. Uh, I do not think the Steelers beat Buffalo in Buffalo. I think Buffalo, I think the Steelers hang with them, but I think in the end Josh Allen will be too much. And, and Mason Rudolph will be Mason Rudolph. I, I, I think I think the Steelers needed some bad weather in order that, to turn that into a running game, and I think the storm and everything is going to move out, and that's going to give Josh Allen a little bit of time in the pocket, and I think that will be the difference in the game. If I, it, if, if, if all that snow wouldn't have came and they would have had to play in the wind and everything, that might have been a different story and Pittsburgh might have had yep. a shot. But I, th I think they're going to they're going to catch a break if that storm moves out. I agree with you 100%. Obviously, I'll be rooting for my Steelers. But I also, uh, you know, everybody that wants to jump on this Mason Rudolph bandwagon, look, he was a third-string quarterback and nobody wanted him for a reason. And uh, he almost turned the ball over a few times in Baltimore last week. I think uh, – I think he gets the turnover bug that he that he had a couple of years ago, and uh, yeah, I think the Steelers go down. But I, I just never like know. I just like how when C.J. Stroud was coming out in the draft, oh, man. everybody said he was going to be a bust. He's not made for the NFL. It's not now. They're all patting him on the back, saying we yeah. knew he was going to be a great yeah, guy. Whatever. Yeah, so full of it. I love how people just flip flop like that. C.J. Stroud, of course, a former Buckeye, shellacked the Browns yesterday, and much to our delight. Nice little turnaround jumper in the lane to start. Quarter number two for Layton, or half number two, I should say. Quarter number three for Layton, just couldn't get it to go. But it's going to stay with the Redbirds. 24-14, just underway, third quarter. Chris Kale, Shannon Thomas here with you on Big Z Sports. Wrapping up our Dak Vitamins and Minerals halftime show, talking a little bit about football. As the Saints back into the front court, Schumacher has it. He'll go over right wing to Grimes. Still man-to-man -man defense out of Loudonville. Schumacher makes the entry pass to Grimes. Grimes off the window and scores. Nice little pump fake by Grimes yeah. right there. Got his guy up in the air, waited for him to go by, laid it off the glass. And, and we talked about, you know, the Needham Thong Company keys to the game and not living at the three-point line. Well, Grimes had a couple shots out there, and now we see him in the paint. It's good to see the extra passes, the entry passes that we talked about as well from TCC. Farrell thought about the three. They gave him about six or eight feet to shoot it if he wanted it, and he turned it down. Schumacher has it back to Farrell. Farrell went hand off to Nathan Wright. Wright down low. Schumacher has it. He's double teamed, gets out of trouble. I don't know how he got it up, but the spin move, the little hook shot, whatever it was, and go to Schumacher with six. 6.36 to play, TCC with four quick points here in quarter number three. Oh, and on the uh, sideline was Williams and uh, yeah, another turnover. Yeah, Williams stepped out of bounds and he was coming back in as he caught it, never reestablished himself on the court, so he's out of bounds. So first, second half turnover for Loudonville, their seventh of the basketball game. 28-14, TCC leads. Coda Schumacher thought about the three, drives into the lane, he absolutely Took about eight steps, it seemed like, but the foul came before that. Yeah, I, was, I wasn't sure. I thought maybe this guy <laughs> out here was going to call travel, but that guy, look, look, they just shredded shoulders. He's like, ah, he got him first. Yeah. <laughs> They're even, the officials are even laughing about it, throwing some arm gestures at each other. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, it was, I'm exaggerating when I say eight steps, but maybe six. <laughs> so an offensive foul there, I think on Nathan Wright. First TCC turnover. Yeah, they got Nathan right on the foul. He threw his hand up to say number five inside, and Grimes thought he called a five seconds on him already. He's like, that was a five, fast five seconds. <laughs> so it shot up off the window. No good by Gessner. Leighton, a deep three. 
Off the rim, no good. Rebounded by Grimes. That's so Grimes, fifth rebound. Grimes will bring it the other way. He'll kick in the corner. McCollins for three. Off the front of the rim, no good. Leighton had it knocked away from him, and it's out of bounds. Over to Loudonville. Yeah, nice hustle by uh, TCC's Nathan Wright right there to try to get to that rebound. We end up pushing it out of bounds as he was falling. Rothrock back in for the Saints. Gessner will bring it across the timeline. Williams has it. They're swinging around Leighton over to Wade. Wade tried the entry pass, turned it over. Rothrock with the steal. Tried to, tried to get it down to Hunter Poland, the 6-1 senior. And uh, Rothrock, a nice job. Good defense right there out of the young man. Yeah, Rothrock got around, got the steal, and then when he spun around, they grabbed the hold of the ball. They got it for a jump ball, but it stays with the Saints. So checking in for the Saints, Gavin Rankin, the 6'5 sophomore. As he spells Rothrock there for a minute. 526 to play. 28-14. McWilliams. Off the rim, no good. Or McCollins, sorry. McCollins across the lane. Grimes, baseline, shot up, no good. Good defense down there by Layton. And we've got a timeout on the floor. 28-14, Saints in front, 5.09 to play. Quarter number three, back on Big Z Sports right after this. Novellus Eurexville is the world leader in aluminum recycling, and they need you. They have immediate openings for general laborers, equipment operators, and various skilled trade positions. They'll start you at $22 per hour or higher. There are advancement opportunities, and Novellus offers industry-leading benefits. To apply or find out more, go to novellus.com slash careers and search Eurexville. That's novellus.com slash careers and search Eurexville. Novellus is an equal opportunity employer. all the way at the end. Welcome back to Claymont High School. Sorry, Gage is pointing at me over there. We're talking and he's pointing. So Redbirds will start with the basketball. 5.09 to play third quarter. 28-14. Saints in front. Now a little 2-3 zone out of the Saints. Switching it up just a little bit. Saints switching up the zone so they could try to get out the weight or those guys on the outside shooting. And McCollin's going to get the steal. Uh, go and get it for a jump ball. Oh, they did get the jump ball. Going to stay here. Yeah, play, when the Saints was playing that man defense, they was able to get Wade open a lot. So going to this zone, they're going to try to eliminate Wade getting left alone out there on the wing. So, what, so Wayne goes, Wade goes to the paint. Dylan Wade, the 5'10 junior. Knocks that one in. He's got 14 of their 16. McCollins will bring it across the timeline. Turning up the man-to-man -man pressure is Loudonville. So things, a little, little intensity here midway through quarter number three. Schumacher, Grimes. Little two-man game over there. Now they'll get Rankin involved. Rankin finds Schumacher in the corner. Gives him a little bit of a screen. Schumacher into the lane. Off the window and scores. Coda Schumacher with eight points. Halfway through quarter number three. Saints back up by 14. Leighton in the corner. Three-point shot. Off the front of the rim. Barely grazed it. Rankin had the rebound. Leighton ended up getting his own rebound and putting it in. Nice job by Judah Leighton, the 6'2 junior, to follow a shot. That's why you follow your shot, kids. Yeah, you follow your shot. Rankin thought he had it. It was bobbling around, and uh, he came in and took it off of him, plus laid it in for the bucket. McCollins into the lane. A nice drive. Off the window and scores. McCollins has nine. 6'3 junior. I called him Nick Williams earlier. He looks nothing like Nick. Nick has red hair. Off the window and <laughs> Or actually, that was blocked by Farrell. Three-point shot on the way, no good. Rebounded by Farrell again. Schumacher up the left side. Into the lane. A little bit of contact. He gave him the little, it was like the, the butt fake right there. <laughs> Put the backside into him. No call. Got the turnaround jumper to go. Schumacher with another bucket there. He got 10. <laughs> 
and Gessner scores his first two points of the basketball game. Brady Gessner, a nice turnaround jumper in the lane. 34-20, Grimes, the drop off to Rankin. Rankin had it stripped away. Turnover TCC, their second, fifth of the game, fifth of the game second and a half. Williams has it, now over to Gessner. Gessner into the lane, amongst the trees, off the window and scores. Brady Gessner with his first two buckets of the basketball game in the last minute. Yeah, and he did a nice job, a little pump fake right there, and McCollins went flying by. Schumacher to McCollins. He got them Jordans on, you see that? McCollins got them Jordans on. Three-point shot, Schumacher off the front of the rim, no good. Rebounded by Wade. And almost a turnover for Loudonville. Leighton has it. 155 to play. Third quarter. Trying to get this lead back into single digits. And Wade's three-point shot was way short. Rebounded by McCollins. And Wade gave him a little forearm shiv right there for the foul. Yeah, it was kind of a frustration foul on yeah, Wade right there after he missed that three-pointer and just kind of took it out on McCollins. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't very happy. McCollins did a nice job of just brushing it off and moving on. So Wade picks up his second foul of the game. Grimes has it. He'll give it into McC Actually stolen away. Nice steal by Wade. Third TCC turnover of the third quarter. They only had three in the first half. Wade the drive off the window and scores. Cuts the lead to 10. 128 to play third quarter. Here comes Loudonville with another run, Shannon. Yeah, McCollins just kind of stood right there, and Wade went by him. He was still standing flat-footed. Grimes went into the lane, and another foul on Loudonville. Yeah, number five, Strauss is going to get that one. Well, I guess I got that wrong. It wasn't Strauss. They're going to give it to Gessner. So inbounding the basketball is Grimes to McCollins. McCollins in the corner. Schumacher has it. Back to McCollins. Still in that man is Loudonville. McCollins with it on the low block. Foul's going to be on the floor and out of bounds. Yeah, the official waited so long. I was trying to see if it was going to be yeah. an and one because where we're sitting, there was another official in front of us. But it's on the floor. That foul is going on number 25, Josiah Hershberger. Grimes in the lane, shot up no good, rebounded by Layton. Yeah, I mean, there's advantages and disadvantages of being this low on the floor, right? You, you feel like you're more into the game, but you can't see as much overall, and you get picked by people. So yeah. <laughs> there, there's, there's advantages and disadvantages. Layton thought about the three. You know Wade will shoot it. Wade into the lane, a little jump stop, the flip, and no good, and another Grimes rebound. That's, 30. A, that's his sixth rebound of the game. Yeah, he's, he's really having a nice game. 6'4", Junior. McCollins with it now, into the lane. Tried to drop it off the right. It was tipped away, and he got it back, and now Farrell has it out front. Right. On the left wing, McCollins being guarded out front by Struess, and it's taken away. Late in two seconds and one, and no good. So they got the turnover, but couldn't get the score. We've reached the end of the third quarter. Fours in the air, 34-24. Saints in front, back on Big Z Sports and Clax Communications right after this. The First National Bank of Denison appreciates the hard work and dedication area athletes exhibit to be the best they can be for their team. We follow that same philosophy with our customers, working hard to build personal relationships and making our services convenient. The First National Bank of Denison's community involvement is important to us and we love supporting our local schools. The First National Bank of Denison with offices in Denison, Dover, Janate and Hutton, South Broadway and Shunbrunn in New Philadelphia. We have our roots where others have their branches. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. This is RJ Jacobs from DAC Vitamins and Minerals. Did you know that DAC Vitamins and Minerals has more than 40 proven equine supplements that include daily multivitamins, joint digestion, reproduction and fertility, 
calming, and many other specialty products, DAC also carries a complete line of livestock products called DAC Show Contender. Feed DAC vitamins and minerals to get the competitive edge in the show pen. We've been feeding champions since 1983. Welcome back to Claymont High School, the Claymont Midseason Classic. Can't thank First Federal Community Bank enough for their trips to the foul line. Of course, coming up, it's not the McIntyre Frailty player of the game today. It's the first National Bank of Denison player of the game. And uh, they got the plaques. They're nice. Beautiful plaques. And right now we got a battle for the first National Bank player of the game. Two Saints and one Loudonville player. Yeah, good battle right now for see who's going to get the plaque. We can't say he's looking for a shirt. He's looking for the hardware today. Dakota Schumacher with it between the circles. Takes a drive down the right side of the lane. He'll give it off to Farrell in the corner. Grimes with it. Almost has it taken away by Layton. Grimes said, okay, you want to try and take it away from me? I'm going to drive to the lane. I'm going to put it in your face. Grimes with 15. Layton, see if he has an answer. He'll give it off to Struess. Struess in the corner to Hirschberger. Now down to Leighton. Leighton the turnaround jumper, and he said, I'll see that. And he matched it. He didn't raise it. Yep, he didn't raise it, but he matched it. That's okay. Both teams scored nine points in the second quarter. Both teams scored ten points in the third quarter. So the difference in the ball game was quarter number one. It's a nice drive by Brody Farrell, the six-foot senior. The difference in the ball game is Saints were at a 15 to five lead after quarter number one. Yeah, and all of that due to the, the rebounding the second chances and the turnovers by Loudonville. Deep three-point shot by Wade is no good. Hirschberger the rebound. Three-point shot on the way, no good. That was Struess and Leighton ended up getting the offensive rebound. Kids working hard. Number 13 in red, the 6'2 junior, Judah Leighton, having himself a nice game in the paint. Yeah, he's a nice sized boy right there. Gets in there and battles with everybody. Yeah, high energy. I don't number 13. Rothrock back in. Number 41 for the Saints. Here's Leighton into the lane. Spin move over Grimes. Couldn't get it to go. Got his own rebound. Couldn't get it to go. Grimes with the rebound. And the harm afterwards. So Leighton, a pair of offensive stick back opportunities. Just couldn't get him to go. Yeah, and then they're going to get him on the foul because after Grimes got it, he kind of reached around and kind of got him in a little bit of a headlock going for the ball. Yep. So now a little bit of full court pressure out of Loudonville. Grimes going to try and throw the baseball pass to Schumacher and completed it. First down Saints. Grimes into the lane. Shot up off the window. No good. And rebounded. Here's Hershberger. Hershberger tried to give it up. Schumacher picked it off. Coda Schumacher to the three-point line, gives it off to McCollins. McCollins left lane, and good. Good ball movement out of the Saints, not settling for the three-point shot. They got the better shot on the drive. Yeah, nice job by Schumacher to find open Collins. Woo, three-point shot by Wade, and you know uh, he'll shoot it from about anywhere as Wade drops another one in. We've got a timeout with 5.49 to play, 40 to 29. Saints in front, back on Big Z Sports after this in 30 seconds. Wood Electric has been trusted with all of your electrical needs for over 30 years. They are the place to call for residential, commercial, and industrial work. Wood Electric is available 24 hours a day and ready to help with any electrical problem, outage, or installation. Wood Electric, serving Tuscarawas County and beyond since 1988. Like Wood Electric on Facebook or find them online at woodelectric.net. Welcome back to the Classic. We're not doing a very good job for Gage over here, are we? We're just talking through timeouts, and Gage is over here going, dude, we're trying to come back on the air. We're over here talking about pictures that our wife sent us yes. and stuff. My wife sent me a picture of the dog sleeping on the couch, and Gage is trying to get our attention. <laughs> no, it's, it is what it is. 
So the TCC Saints. Did I say an extra C there? TCCCC Saints. <laughs> I don't know. It's going off the rails, and it's only game two. Game two is the problem. <laughs> 549 left to go in the ball game. The Saints in front by 11. They have the basketball. Loudonville will pick up the full court pressure still after the uh, three-point make by Wade. Schumacher and Grimes will break the press. Grimes up the right side. Hand it off to McCollins. Schumacher thought about the three. Head coach Larry Taylor was screaming at him. He knew he wanted to pull the trigger on that. <laughs> coach Taylor was like, if you pull that, you're going to sit on the bench. Oh, that was good. Grimes with it, right wing. Some of They're the Mustang players coming in. <laughs> Shot off the window and scores. Oh, no, they called the charge. So turnover TCC, their fifth. <laughs> yeah, they're going to get Jace McCollins with the charge right there. That's his second foul. Just saw the influence of head coach Larry Taylor right there as uh, Coda Schumacher wanted to pull that three-pointer, but there was no need for it right now with 514 to play an 11-point lead. Into the lane, off the window, no good was Wade. Another rebound by Grimes, and Leighton's going to pick up the cheap foul in the backcourt. Eighth rebound for Grimes. Just like in our last game, we had two players battling for player of the game, and the guy with the most uh, rebounds ended up getting it. And right now, Grimes is in a battle with his own teammate, Cody Schumacher, and it might come down to rebounds. It might. It very well may. Maybe that's why Coda wanted to heave up that three right there. Grimes, baseline, spin, double team, split the double team off the window, got his own rebound in the stick back. Grimes said, let me pad my stats a little bit because I want that plaque. I'm going I'm to get me a rebound and a bucket. Yeah, he wants the FNB plaque for the player of the game here in this one. Wade's three-point shot. Back of the rim, no good. Grimes, another rebound. Bryson Grimes, the 6'4 junior, doing a nice job. Grimes, Grimes sitting a double-double right now. Yeah. Yeah, kid has really played a good basketball game. Trying to get it in to Schumacher and does. Schumacher will come up the far side from us near the scorer's table. Grimes in front of head coach Larry Taylor and he turned it over. Six turnover for TCC. Wade, a nice move into the lane and missed it and Grimes with a rebound. Timeout, Saints. Grimes, another rebound. Saints lead by 13 with 4.13 to play. Back with Clax and Communications right after this. Is your vehicle banged up? Do you want fast, professional service to get you back on the road? This is Garrett Jacobs with Auto Works Collision Center. We service cars, trucks, SUVs, and even semi-trucks and RVs. Whether you need auto glass replacement, paintless dent repair, assistance with warranty and insurance, or just a free estimate, Auto Works has you covered. We even offer alignments for your heavy-duty vehicles like buses, motorhomes, and semis with our state-of-the-art Hunter Alignment System. Call 330-878-4223. Open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Let Auto Works of Strasburg work for you. Welcome back, Claymont High School. We, we're, we're killing Gage over here. I mean, we're sitting there talking to you. We're talking to each other about football scores and the pictures that your wife sent me and his wife sent him. And Gage is like, hey, I'd like to go back on the air. You know? <laughs> oh, Gage doing a good job over here Good, good thing, for us. Good thing we're a good Christian man and we're not talking about inappropriate things when he throws no, it back or, to us. Listen, his wife sent me a picture of their dog, so I sent him a picture of you, and I said I sent her a picture. I sent her a picture of a dog back. <laughs> Saints will inbound the basketball. Four eleven to play in the ball game. Saints looking to put this one away here. With the basketball is Dumermuth. Dumermuth back to Coda Schumacher. Schumacher will clear out traffic. Dribble over towards the scorer's table. Three fifty four to play. McCollins will get it right wing. Right in front of head coach Larry Taylor. Right has it, Schumacher. 
Coach Taylor giving Grimes a break over there on the bench. Yeah, I mean, look, the kid has been <laughs> he he's been active. We'll say that here in the first half, or I mean, in the uh, second ball game, first half, he was active in both halves. So Saints just playing a little keep away here. McCollins will drive in. He'll kick it back to right. Schumacher has it, taking about a minute off of the clock so far on this possession alone. Yeah, and that's what you're going to do if you're if you're TCC, you just kill clock. Schumacher decided it was time to go as he dribbles it in to the lane and scores, and it's a 15-point ball game. Yeah, Schumacher gets his 12th point. Three-point shot by Wade off the back of the rim, no good, and rebounded by Farrell. So despite the six turnovers in the second half by TCC, played a really good basketball game here this afternoon. Yeah, and, and they got away from shooting that three-pointer earlier. They started missing a lot, and they just started moving the ball around. And, that, and that's what we said in the, there are keys to the game. you got to move the ball around. Nice pass to McCollins as he lays it in. Yeah, the Needenthal and Company keys to the game. Don't live by the three-pointer. You've got to make your foul shots. You've got to rebound the basketball, and they've done that. Three-point shot on the way by Struess is no good. And looks like we've got a foul. On Williams, 5'10 sophomore. And when you look down through Loudonville, you know, they don't dress a lot of players. They've got a lot of kids that, uh, you know, underclassmen. <clears throat> they they start a sophomore, two jun or three juniors and a senior, and they've got two freshmen and a sophomore off the bench. So uh, things going to get better for head coach Jim Bates and the Loudonville Redbirds. Yeah, the, the Saints just brought a lot of pressure defense in that first quarter. They got them way behind. Grimes off the window and scores. That might have sealed up the first National Bank of Denison player of the game for Bryson Grimes with the N1 opportunity. Would you believe that this is the only the first foul shot for either team in the second half? Yeah, that they, we said this is a fast game. The referees let them play a lot, but they've done a nice job on their defense. First Federal Community Bank trip to the foul line. The first one of the second half for either team. Grimes is going to take a seat. And that should do it as he gets a nice ovation from the Saints faithful over there. Kid played a heck of a ball game. Yeah, right now he's sitting at 20 points. And 11 rebounds. Yeah, I mean, you can throw that steal in there if you want. Well, absolutely, you throw the steal in there. And checking in for the Saints, Noah Langle. Also, Flynn Renneker in. Flynn Renneker played some quarterback for the Saints this season. Dylan Dumermuth as well. Rothrock back in the basketball game. And... So Doomer Ruth with the basketball, 136 to play. Lingle has it. Rothrock with the basketball. Back to Doomer Ruth, and I think Saints just content to uh, dribble this one out and pick up win number three on the season. A, a good win, a convincing win for the Saints. As they do turn it over, seventh turnover in the second half. And... A third turnover by Loudonville. One thirteen to play. Good win for the Saints this afternoon, Shannon. Yeah, you know, they come off a tough loss Friday night that they really thought they had a shot at winning that game. It just got away from them too quick, and they wasn't able to rebound. They come into this 2-8, uh, and eight, I believe, was their record. And they just had to find a way to close out the games and, and be patient on offense, and they, they did that today. There was just one moment where they started throwing up the three, but they got them back under control, and, they move the ball around a lot and going to come away with a big win for him. Flynn Renneker has it tipped out of bounds by Wade. And taken away by Wade for Loudonville. Eighth TCC turnover in the second half. That's the only thing that 
is kind of the glaring, you know, negative for the Saints was just turned it over too much in the second half. Yeah, and er that was early. They started turning it over, but Coach Taylor got that out, got it under control for him, and uh, they finally started taking care of the ball. And a lot of those turnovers was they were just taking their eye off of the ball. You know, it would hit them in the hands, but they were looking to try to get off a quick shot, and it would just roll away from them, and Loudonville would be able to pick it up. And like I said, Loudonville's bench isn't real deep, but they fought hard all day. Nice job down on the low block by Jacob Poole, the 6'5 freshman. As they get him in, he gets a stick back for the Redbirds as they'll continue to double team and also checking in for the Saints, Malachi Barker, number three in white. Barker down to Rothrock. Rothrock, the one dribble on the floor and the score. 51-34 Saints. Rothrock's been a nice spark off the bench. Come in, does a little bit of everything every time he gets on the court. And that's it, 51 to 34 is the difference in this ball game. As we will total up a few things here on the air. So taking a look at the totals, five. <laughs> I'm gonna start counting with my fingers. Right. Well, well, for scoring for the Saints, Coda Schumacher had 12 points. He had four rebounds. Uh, Jace McCullough, he had 12 points, one rebound. Bryson Grimes, 20 points, 11 rebounds, one steal. I forgot Coda Schumacher had two steals. And down for uh, Loudonville, number three, Dylan Wade. Outstanding performance by that young man. He ended the night with 19 points, three rebounds, two steals. Uh, Brady Gessner had four points, one rebound. Uh, Judah Layton, four points, six rebounds, one steal. So outstanding performance. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we will name our first National Bank of Denison player of the game. It was 6'4", junior Bryson Grimes with 20 points, 11 rebounds, and a steal. Kid played his heart out this afternoon. Yeah, and he just did a little bit of everything. And that player of the game comes mainly off of the hustle to get those rebounds. I mean, there's plenty of other people that scored points. But at the end of the day, if you're going to crash the paint like that, get all those rebounds and stuff, you're going to win hardware. So TCC with 12 turnovers total, they had nine of those in the second half. Loudonville with nine total turnovers. TCC was five for six at 83% from the foul line. Loudonville only shot the one free throw in the first half. So thank you for joining, joining us from Claymont High School. Game number two of the midseason classic, the TCC Saints improved to three and eight for the 51-34 win over the Loudonville Redbirds who dropped to five and nine. Again, the first National Bank of Denison player of the game was 6'4 junior Bryson Grimes. 20 points, 11 rebounds, and one steal. Coming up, game three between the Cambridge Bobcats and the Riverview Black Bears. Nick McWilliams and Aaron Stump going to take over. They'll have coverage for you next. You get to finish things up with Claymont and New Philadelphia a little bit later. Thinking of Travis McClellan. Hope he's feeling better. Yeah, I'll, I'll be back for the nightcap. Aaron Stump's going to come in and replace me for the next two games. All right, man. Well, we'll see you a little bit later. I'll be back for West Holmes and Carrollton after this one. So, Riverview, Cambridge, up next, right after this on Big Z Sports.
Welcome back into Eurexville and Claymont High School. Pardon for a little delay there, just the behind-the-scenes <laughs> technical difficulties, which tends to happen when you're trying to do five games in a row without stopping. Big thank you to the Claxon Communications crew there for some troubleshooting. And now bringing you the Cambridge Bobcats versus the Riverview Black Bears. It will be myself, Nick McWilliams, and now joined by Aaron Stump. Going to be another great game of basketball. I tell you what, weather's cold outside, but it's been hot here the first couple games. Really, Looking I haven't noticed. I thought it was balmy outside. What are you talking about? <laughs> Absolutely frigid. Well, we're going to go ahead and jump right into our first time out of our Wood Electric pregame show. When we come back after this, we're going to be talking with both head coaches. Our coach segments brought to you by Kime. Stick around. Game number three is on the way. Cush Financial Group has been proudly serving the financial needs of local community members for over 35 years. The team at Cush Financial follows an industry-leading service model with the unique approach and fiduciary responsibilities associated with their board-certified financial planner. With over 75 years of combined experience, the advisors at Cush Financial Group are here to help you achieve your financial goals. Contact the office at 330-308-8700 or visit cushfinancial.com to schedule your free consultation today. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Independent Capital Company Incorporated, member FINRA, SIPC. Back in to another Wood Electric pregame show live from Eurexville. We're on to game number three as we feature Cambridge taking on the Riverview Black Bears. And we are now talking to head coach Kyle Pertusit for the Bobcats of Cambridge. Coach, you know, you guys enter this matchup 1-10. Uh, in 10. I know things haven't necessarily gone the way that you would have liked them to. But a lot of people have said this is a lot better the team than that record shows. Yeah, we are. And I don't think the 1-10 in 10 record is indicative of how we truly are as a team. Uh, you know, unfortunately, we were kind of ravaged with some injuries the preseason. I think arguably two of our top three players both had torn ACLs. And so, you know, we've been going through that after playing extremely well in the summer. Uh, but also, you know, hats off to our kids. They've hung in there. They've stayed the course. Things haven't gone our well, going our way early on. And, you know, we're still coming to work every day. And I think it shows in how we compete. And I think we just need to put ourselves in position to get over in the hump, get that one game, and get some momentum. And I think we'll be a pretty tough out in the tournament. Now, I was looking at your roster, uh, only three seniors that I saw in there. So overall, kind of a younger team. Has that been the case? Yeah, we had the one senior. He had ACL. It's Devin Ogle. So we really right now, we got two seniors on the active roster. And uh, the rest of the guys, you know, we're, we're a pretty young team. And some guys are going to have to step up at a young age and fill in some of those roles. And it was the same last year. So we got some youth, but it is some experienced youth. And... You know, some of the kids have had to step into roles that maybe they didn't anticipate this earlier in the career just based on our injuries. And so we're kind of learning on the fly and we had to make some systematic adjustments based on the personnel due to injuries as well. And it's I think it's starting to come together and hopefully today will be a good indication of that. That's uh, what I've been kind of asking all the coaches is when we come to this kind of format, a showcase where you got a lot of different teams, some of them who probably won't play each other or see each other yeah. again, uh, what is it you try to learn from one of these experiences moving forward for the rest of the year? Well, one thing, it kind of gives you a feel of like maybe like a tournament style atmosphere or at least an old school tournament when you didn't have host teams. So that's kind of what things first thing that popped in my mind. And it's always, it's always good to play at a time you're not used to playing and kind of see where you're going to be at. And, you know, I'm, my guys much rather you know play ball than practice, so that, that's good too. And anytime you have a period of time to prepare for an opponent that's not very common, it kind of gives you that tournament feel. Definitely, Coach. Well, thank you so much for your time, and good luck to the Bobcats. Right. Thank you. Head coach Kyle Pertusit for the Cambridge Bobcats. Stick around because you're going to be hearing from Riverview's head coach up next in Dale Jennings. Your coach segment's brought to you by Kime. Stick around. We're back after this. In the rolling hills of Holmes County, we tend to do things a bit differently. At Kime, we're in the business of uncommon experiences, and we're here to care for your project like we care for our own. We believe that quality matters and want to help you get it right the first time because your project deserves it. So visit Kime Home Center, your source and destination for all things home, building, and woodworking. Kime, built on trust since 1911. Welcome back into another Wood Electric pregame show. We're going to go courtside with the coach, brought to you by Kime and its head coach, Dale Jennings, for the Riverview Black Bears. And coach, we were talking here beforehand, 5-7 and seven is the mark your team has to this point of the season. Uh, tell me a little bit about how things have been for the Black Bears. I know you guys have had some really nice wins so far. Yeah, we're a young team. We don't have any seniors that play. Uh, we uh, go... Really, we was going 60, but we have one of our guys is uh, ineligible in the second half because he transferred back in. So we're about a five deep to six deep at the most. Um, 
we play, our kids play really hard. Um, uh, we get after it pretty good. Uh, when we shoot well, we're, we're, we're competitive or we get some wins. And we don't shoot, we tend to struggle a little bit. Um, and in the NBL, you know, you're playing, there's some good teams we match up with, and then there's, and then there's Tri-Valley, who I don't know, too many teams that really match up well with them. Now, Coach, uh, looking at what this is, you know, a showcase, you're coming down here, you get to see maybe some teams you wouldn't normally see. Uh, for you guys, I, same question I've asked the other coaches today, um, what's kind of the goal that you want out of this kind of matchup whenever you come to a place that you wouldn't normally come to potentially or take on a team that you wouldn't normally take on? Um, well, for one, we'd like to really compete. Uh, I watched probably three, three and a half of uh, Cambridge's games. And for a team that's one in ten, they may be the best one in ten team I've seen. It seems to me, um, just some shots that are missing inside. Uh, if they were making them, they'd probably have a lot better record. Um, guard uh, number three can play. Um, they got some. The the one kids are what a rebound under twenty three. Um, and they got a couple other kids who can shoot the ball. They're they're a very good team. So I really, as much as you want to get a win, which I would like to get, because you know we're trying to compete to get double digits if we can this year. We at least want to show up and play hard against a team. We didn't really get to scout a whole lot. We started scouting them uh, Friday night, Saturday morning. Um, so we just go out there and play a good game and see what happens. Um, execute as much as we can. It's a it's a Sunday. Who knows how our kids are going to do? I guess uh, they look pretty tired when we got to our gym. Was shooting around this afternoon before we hit the bus. So we'll see. Well, when, when the whistle first hits, that's when you hope that the energy comes out, right? <laughs> yeah, um, they they usually have pretty good energy. So I'm hoping they have it again today for us. And uh, finally for you, Coach, um, looking forward for the rest of this season now, this kind of being just past the midway point. Uh, what is it that you guys are hoping to accomplish here in terms of growth? Maybe something that you guys have been talking about that you want to see uh, what you've been practicing come to life out there on the floor today. I, I would like to start executing our offense a little better. I mean, we have times we do it pretty well, and then we kind of we kind of get out of it. Um, Competing wise, we got a pretty good schedule going right now. We have about four games where physically and depth wise, we should be able to, co to compete. Um, and then we got a nice little run where we come back with uh, four games in a row. It's pretty tough. So I I'd like to see how we match up with some of the teams. Like we played Tri Valley earlier, and they, they, they really put it to us. Um, I'd like to see, and I'm sure they probably will again, but I would like to see how we change and how we adapt to teams playing in the second time. Not only for my players, but like I said, I'm a first-year varsity coach, so I want to see what, how I handle things like that. Um, and I just want to see our kids getting better because we're really trying to build. I think we have a chance to be a, a really good team in two, three years. Um, three or four of my players are sophomores, so we're, we, um, I just want to see them keep developing, keep working hard, and getting better as the season goes on and not really hitting the wall. All right, well, thank you so much for your time, Coach, and good luck to the Black Bears. I, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Head coach Dale Jennings brought to you by Kime. Stick around because coming up, we've got tonight's, I should say this afternoon's starting lineups, and we'll keep going with the Claymont Midseason Showcase. Do you hunt, fish, sew, or have a hobby that you would like to share with someone? Hi, this is Noah Sugg with Brig Brothers Big Sisters, and we are faced with our biggest commitment in matching 56 littles with bigs. We will match a little with you that shares the same interests and enjoys the same things, so you can do what you enjoy and change the life of a little at the same time. To learn more, we ask you call 339-6916 or visit bigs4kids.com slash volunteer. Thank you. Welcome back in to Claymont High School in the PAC Drilling Mobile Studio as that will wrap up our abbreviated Wood Electric pregame show. And we're going to get set for another great matchup. It's game number three from the Claymont Midseason Showcase. We are featuring the Cambridge Bobcats pitted up against the pseudo home team, the Riverview Black Bears. With that in mind, Aaron, why don't you take over the Cambridge starting lineup? All right, for Corks Bertusa and the Cambridge Bobcats, you have 5 foot 10 inch junior number 3, Josiah Barnett. You have a 6 foot 3 inch senior number 14, Brain Gregg. 6 foot senior number 20, Reagan Rogers. 6 foot 1 inch sophomore number 21, Ryland Matthews. And wrapping it up is the 6 foot 1 inch junior number 23, Riley Amico Green. And I'll get the starting lineup for Riverview. I think it's Homco. <laughs> Is it? Homco oh. Green. <laughs> Sorry, I just noticed that. For the Riverview Black Bears, 
Yep. It is Sterling Jr., six foot tall, and he's number one, Laird Williamson. Then it's number three, a six foot one sophomore, Parker Andrews. Then you have a five foot ten junior, number five, Hayden Walters. And you have a sophomore who's six foot five, number 30, in Leighton Massey. And rounding it out is junior, five foot ten, number 35, Kale Summers. Something to make note with that Cambridge team. Two of their uh, letter winners from previous years in Garrett Carpenter and Devin Ogle, both not available, both suffering knee injuries, according to Coach uh, Pertusit. So that's an unfortunate thing for Cambridge. That's probably part of the reason, you know, they've only gotten to the 1-10 mark this season. But as Coach Jennings said for Riverview, probably the best 1-10 team he's seen in a long time. Yeah, I think uh, both teams kind of struggling the first part of the season. I think this is a good chance for both teams to kind of sit back, take a quick breath, and uh, work on your fundamentals today and uh, really get a, a nice victory under your belt. So that wrap ups, wraps up another pregame show, and we'll move on now to, to, to our next matchup. I'm going to keep wanting to say tonight's <laughs> for some reason. Again, a big thank you to all of our sponsors bringing this game or these games to you. And again, a big thank you to First National Bank of Denison as well, kind of helping make this a reality, this showcase on top of that, providing those plaques for our players of the game. We're going to see who's going to pick one up and pick up the win here as it's Riverview to start off with the ball underway again from Claymont High School. Driving off to the right side is Walters. He'll now find Andrews who pump fakes from the corner. He'll pull up, picks up his dribble, looks cross court, and he'll find Summers who will drive, kicks right side. It was going to be an open three-point shot, but instead stepping up to a two is Laird Williamson, and he knocks it down for the game's first points. Hey, Riverview doing a nice job passing the ball around the perimeter, open shot, and uh, again, anytime you can hit your first shot, that's big. Barnett with the pump fake for Cambridge at the top of the key. Now there's an entry pass and working it down was Cambridge, but the ball's on the deck and getting down there and picking it out of there was Matthews. They find an open corner three-point shot's no good. Rebound for Riverview, and it's Massey who hauls it in. So Massey with his first rebound, bringing it up, will be Summers. He'll go left side now. It's Williamson. Williamson, he's going to drive left off left block, off the glass and good. The junior and Laird Williamson now with a pair of makes as he's got a quick first step. So here come the Bobcats again in Barnett. He'll drive left side and dump it off to Rogers. Rogers will work to the top of the key. We'll see how much the Bobcats want to force the issue inside with that six foot five presence that Riverview has in Massey. And the top of the key is Matthews. He'll try to go in and it's knocked away and that's gonna be a steal for Summers for the Black Bears. So here comes Riverview again. Williamson, left side in front of the Cambridge bench. He'll work it right. Summers nearly stepped out of bounds here on the sideline, but instead works it back into the hands of Williamson. He'll kick it right side, and it was almost a nice save there for Walters, but just could not do it. Here come the Bobcats again, and a pull-up floater in the paint. No good. Rebound was going to go to Cambridge, but it will not as it was Barnett who couldn't get it to fall, and it was Homko Green who almost had the offensive board, but just right through his fingers, so some early miscues for Cambridge. Yeah, Josiah, I thought, again, did a nice job of pulling up there, got his feet set, and unfortunately just didn't fall. That one well off the mark there for Riverview in Williamson. Rebound going to be hauled in there by the Bobcats who will bring it up, and it's Barnett again. He'll go left side, and there's a three-point shot on the way off front iron. No good. Offensive board, no good again as missing it was Rodgers for the Bobcats, and they can't take the lid off the basket early. It was Braden Gregg who had the open three-point shot, couldn't get it to fall, and here come the Black Bears again. Tough sledding early on. It's still only a 4 to nothing ball game as Walters is going to drive left. He gets a screen. Now he'll go back, and he will hand it off to Andrews. Andrews now gets to Williamson, who will drive at the free throw line. Pull up, no good, and it will be Barnett with the rebound for Cambridge. Cambridge on offense. They work it down. Three-point shot from the corner is buried, and it's Braden Gregg, who wasn't missing that time. It's a good way to get you on the score. Nice steal. Barnett with the steal, and with the finish off the glass is Rogers. Nice find for Barnett. He has his first steal and second assist of the ball game. Here comes Riverview. Williamson pushes it to the corner, and now on the drive will be Andrews. He'll dump off, and off the glass, and good is Massey, and he's got an and one opportunity upcoming. Tell you, Massey with a nice cut in there, great pass in there, and again, gives him a great opportunity to do the old-fashioned and one. 
On the foul will be the sophomore Ryland Matthews and some wholesale substitutions now for Cambridge as it will be Mason Gregg who is in as well as Deontay Jones. I'll get you the other number here shortly. As free throw, no good. Left it off a of front iron and it was Jones who grabs the rebound. Here comes Cambridge again. Setting up the offense is Barnett. He'll stop, go to the top, and drive right, and go back out again as they work to set it up. Jones will have it. He's guarded by Williamson, and he'll just pop it off to Greg. Greg's looking for an entry pass, and he'll get it there to Jones. He'll go back out. Corner three-point shot on the way is good. So quickly into the game and off the bench, Mason Greg knocks it down. Tell you what, nice shot there. Thought he forced it a little bit there and uh, ended up going in again. Uh, nice shot. The other Cambridge player in, he's on defense now, is Cameron Jeffrey as running in for a tough angle shot along the baseline as Parker Andrews as he finds nothing but the bottom of the net. Again, both teams get some nice open shots right now, taking advantage. And Barnett goes low to Jones, who's wide open for a nice lay-in. Fast back and forth battle early on. Third assist already, Aaron, from Barnett. It's amazing how we went from a defensive struggle to a uh, <laughs> offensive, offensive game really quick. <laughs> Summers has it. He'll go to the top and we'll go Good right side to Massey. Cuts. And now there's a nice cut inside, but Walters can't finish. Rebound hauled in there by Barnett. He'll drive. Give it off, and it's Jones again. The fourth assist. Now this first quarter for Barnett and the second basket for Jones off the bench. 12 to eight ball game, under three to go here in the first and it's been a nice one so far. It's the Bobcats who lead. Now a deep three point shot on the way for Summers. He was too long but a put back up and in by Massey. He's got four and a second board and it's a big one. It makes it a 12-10 ball game in favor of Cambridge. Working around is Jeffrey, he'll go in. Jones, tough angle shot, he didn't find anything. And knocking it out of bounds. It looked like for Cambridge, it was Matthews who threw it off the Riverview player, so it will stay with the Bobcats. And more substitutions as it looks like. The starters are back out there now for Cambridge. Said the quick pace of this game, uh, you saw a couple uh, winded players out there. Coach is doing a nice job getting some subs in. And we'll see how deep these benches are. And nice Andrews was sitting after those uh, first bits of the first quarter, and it's Reed Johnson who comes in. And like you said, Aaron, nice deal for him. That's his, He was on the court for 10 seconds. He <laughs> makes a big defensive play. <laughs> I tell you, Riverview's big thing right now, as long as they move, they get some open shots. Here's a corner three that's not going to fall. Rebound, Massey puts it up again. No good. Rebound again. He tries to go up. And he got hacked, but they are going to say it was a jump ball instead. That's going to favor Cambridge. I thought they got him on the arm there. I tell you, I thought, uh, thought the same thing. Good. Massey with another nice offensive rebound. Cambridge has got to figure a way to keep him off the board. Now the ball comes flying over our way, and it will stay with Cambridge. Good reaction there by uh, Judd from Claxon Communications, yeah. knocking it away from the equipment. Whatever you do, save the equipment. <laughs> Don't worry about you, save the equipment. <laughs> Here come the Bobcats and dribbling around is Rogers. And right block, there's a sling pass from the right block, and it goes into the hands of Greg, who buries it. Second three of the game, six points total this quarter. First assist to Homko Green. Yeah, he did a nice job getting his feet set, and again, nice follow through, a nice smooth shot. Massey drives, and he lost the handle. I think Jones poked it away. It's going to go into the hands of Rogers. He's going to try to go coast to coast, trips it back to Jones, and there's going to yeah. be a charge. A little you out saw of that control. One coming. Yep, you could see it coming from about half court, just a little bit out of control right there, and uh, just wasn't able to, to pop it up. Barnett comes back on for a Cambridge. And back on the court for Riverview is Andrews. Yeah, been a good, clean game to this point. Only the second foul of the quarter. And uh, you know you nice jinxed job. it now, right? Yeah. <laughs> Fifteen to ten is your score. Under a minute and a half to go here in the first. As it is Cambridge, 
so far who've got the edge on Riverview. And again, early on, Aaron, what we've seen, it is kind of hard to believe these Bobcats are 1-10. They got offensive production as Williamson can't finish. Rebound's going to get hauled in there by Cam uh, pardon me, Riverview, but instead it careens away into a Bobcats hand. Here comes Barnett. Up, goes into the corner. Now an entry pass, down low. Spin around shot, and Homko Green just went right through him. Make it a 17-10 ball game. Again, did a nice job having a good, strong base there. Went up really strong, anticipated some contact, and a nice basket. Williamson has it at the volleyball line, and he will just drop it off now to Walters, who's back out there. Walters is guarded by Greg. Instead, they work it. It's back and forth between Williams and him. Now a three-point shot is going to be off the mark. Barnett's going to grab the rebound. Smallest guy on the court, Shannon. He'll grab the rebound, and he's going to try to go coast to coast off the glass. No good. Rebound hauled in by Riverview. It is Summers, and he'll go to Williamson. I would imagine the Black Bears consider holding for last shot here. It looks certainly looks like they're going to as Williamson will take it and get the play call from the volleyball line. Now Williams. He'll drive and goes off to the corner in a miscommunication for Riverview as standing there waiting for the receipt of it was Walters, but Summers tipped it away. Yeah, like you said, a little, little confused there on their offensive possession there. Two guys right in the same spot. Unfortunate turnover. Nine seconds showing on the clock, and it will be Cambridge Ball who, can, who could extend their lead to double digits here depending on what their offensive set is. Five seconds showing and a pull up on the free throw line was left short. Rebound knocked all around and it will go out of bounds as the whistle sounds so that's where it stays. 17 to 10 is your score in favor of Cambridge over Riverview. Stick around we'll be back after this Cush Financial Group timeout. The certified public accountants at Needenthal & Company believe in the value of relationships. Needenthal & Company has been in business for over 50 years in your community, helping individuals and businesses grow. Needenthal & Company can help manage and prepare your payroll, plan your estate, and prepare your business and personal income taxes. Stop in to the Needenthal facility on North Wooster Avenue in Dover and become a valued client today. Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has just what you're looking for, so your athlete has the best gear for the sports they play. Dumont's has a large apparel selection and can handle your customized screen printing as well as embroidery for your team or business. For sporting goods and for all your apparel needs, Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has everything you want to play and look your best. Time for the second quarter from Claymont High School and the Claymont Midseason Showcase. Cambridge jumps all over Riverview in that first quarter, 17 to 10. Quite the offensive output for the Bobcats. Yeah, I tell you, both teams started out a little bit slow, had great shots, both of them, and eventually they started to find the bottom of that net. And once the first one went in, the floodgates opened. So now it will be Riverview ball, and it's Summers to inbound as he'll tip it back in to Walters. Thanks for tuning in on the Big Z Sports YouTube channel. Don't forget you can subscribe and be notified when we go live as we're going to stay on all throughout this showcase. Nice and take. just too easy for Massey as he spins around in the lane and finishes. Barnett steps into a three-point shot and he hits it. Josiah Barnett gets his first bucket of the game. 22-12 now, Cambridge leads. A drive from Riverview and kicking it back out is Andrews. Now he'll take it in. He'll go off right block. He went up, and that's going to be a travel. He went up and came right back down, just couldn't get the ball out of his hands. Hey, Riverview has done a nice job breaking Cambridge's press. Uh, I've gone through it. And looks like got a timeout here, 30 seconds. There's a timeout, and since we just came back from one, we will just stay right here talk a little bit about that first quarter of action. Big-time shots by way of Greg for Cambridge. Buried those two three-pointers with that uh, six points in that first frame there. Yeah, if you look at it, they uh, had seven made baskets, and uh, what, three of them were three-pointers. So mm. got them a good eight-point lead there, and uh, I should say a seven-point lead. Well, how about Barnett with the uh, – he, he just made his first shot. He stepped into that three-pointer, but he had four assists in the first quarter alone taking on the uh, – Real, real moniker of a point guard. Sometimes that kind of passing from your point guard isn't necessarily 
the thing you expect anymore with more modern basketball. Well, and, and I think, too, again, it just shows the confidence that these kids have in themselves, too. And, and, and like I said, their records don't necessarily reflect, you know, how good these teams are right now. And, again, you you got some good kids, and hopefully they keep their chin-ups, keep playing some ball, and there's going to be some victories coming their way. Certainly will be. Cambridge on offense. There's a backdoor cut for Barnett. He goes up strong. Couldn't get it to fall, but he got fouled. So he'll step to the first Federal Community Bank free throw line. That was a great play design for Cambridge. Yeah, I would assume uh, the coach signed that up at the uh, timeout. Great execution and well done. So Barnett, if I'm not mistaken, our first free throw attempts in this game. His first one was short, but got the kind roll. Barnett, a five foot ten junior. His next one's going to be off right iron, and it's going to be rebounded by Massey. Massey's fifth board this first half already. Here comes Riverview. Williamson, he'll drive. Tough angle shot off left block, and that was not going to find the bottom. Rebound to Homko Green. Barnett to set it up again. For Williamson, he's got a lot of speed and a lot of strength, but I'm sure that Coach Jennings is going to want a better quality shot than that one. Stepping into another three-pointer for Cambridge. No good. Rebound. No good. And getting fouled was Rogers. That three-point shot was Greg. He's the one who buried two of them in the first quarter. Just left it short. But he steps to the charity stripe again. Looks like Leighton Massey picking up his first foul. Cambridge has subbed in about three different guys so far. And when we talked with Coach Jennings, he said realistically they really only have about a six-team or six-member roster at the moment for guys that he normally subs in, so they really only take a sixth man off the bench, and so far that has proven true. But given the pace of this game, I think you're going to have to go a little bit deeper. These kids are going to get gassed quick. Yeah, like we talked about in the first quarter, these, a lot of this was going up and down the court real fast. You can see some of the kids tiring out. Entry right fine by Matt to Massey, and I think it was... Andrews, who found him underneath, he couldn't finish, but he will be going to the free throw line. That's just great court vision, like you yeah. said. Hayden Walters, a nice pass there. Again, great hard pass, great hands, and uh, we'll see what he can do here at the free throw line. Massey, the six foot five sophomore, will cash in on his first attempt. He's now got seven and more wholesale substitutions for Cambridge, but it looks like it's almost platoon substituting, and they bring the same three in and out. It's kind of nice about these uh, shootouts that we have during the winter, too. You can try some combinations, see what works, and hopefully it helps you down uh, come tournament time. Massey's free throw would not go. It was Jones who got it. That one went about f as far down as you can get without it going in. Barnett's three-point shot is no good, and they're going to say it was knocked out of bounds by Greg, Mason Greg, that would be, of Cambridge, who's checked in. So it will be Riverview ball. Yeah, did see it coming off the cut up there, headed on the wing. Fortunately, just didn't look like he got his feet underneath him quite uh, yet before he shot it off. So it is Riverview ball. They go cross court to Walters. He'll drive and come back out. Those are dangerous passes going across that far. They've executed them all so far, but... <laughs> At some point, your luck might run out. Summers goes inside. Massey, he'll dribble. He tries to dump it off to Summers. He will grab it. He'll drive right side. Now go to the corner, work it back around, and now they're going to say that Mason Gray got him on the arm. Yeah, one of those, uh, those reaching fouls. You get a little frustrated. Did a nice job moving his feet. Got a little impatient. Looks like we got maybe Leighton Massey. Twist an ankle or a knee. It is possible when they bit. were underneath there, so we're going to have to wait and watch the leading scorer for Riverview. Not good for them. Summers goes uh, up for a three, and it's blocked by Mason Gregg in a collision between two Riverview players, and now a foul's going to get called as they try to go down the court. It's called friendly fire right yeah. there. And that foul was called on. Laird Williamson for Riverview. The only reason I was looking at yeah. you confused is I thought he wasn't anywhere close to that play. But I probably saw it wrong. Yeah, that was a, that was a lot of friendly fire going on <laughs> I there. I couldn't tell. Barnett, hop, step, drive, kick back out. Jones, he'll drop step. He goes in, lost the handle, and it goes right into the hands of Walters. 
Walters will drive, and he'll come back out. Gives it off. Summers steps into a three-point shot just too long. Rebound is not finished by Walters. Battle for the rebound. Jones has it for Cambridge. His third board. Barnett brings it down quickly. Left side, Mason Gregg steps into a three-point shot too long. Jones and Williamson battle for it. Williamson has it. He'll go off to Walters. He'll drive. Pass. Summers up. Hit hard, but he won't finish, so he will step to the charity stripe. It's like Mason Gregg with his second foul. Again, I think we've seen a little bit of result, maybe some legs getting a little tired. We're seeing a lot of shots start to fall a little bit short right now. When for a lot of these teams, where this first one's off back iron, where this, you said fall short and he threw it off a of back iron. That's your fault, you know that, right? <laughs> I think a lot of these teams have gone, they've been playing a lot of basketball yes. lately, and I think that also could be a product of what you're seeing right here. Summers dribbles a couple times and spins it. He'll put that one in. That's his first points. 23-14 is the Cambridge lead. They work it down now. Mid-range jumper too long. Rebound goes into the hands of Massey. He'll push it on to Williamson. Williamson back out. Summers thought about a corner three. Instead, he'll drive. Goes cross court. And Walters points it up from three. And he knocks it down from the corner. First points of the game for Walters. First assist for Summers, and now a three-point shot on the other end is no good for Cambridge, and just pulled away by Williamson. That was in the hands of Rogers, and he said, I don't think so. Good, strong rebound. Williamson will drive right, and he gets checked back out, so he will pass off to Andrews, who goes back to him. Right block, couple pump fakes. Now he gives it to Summers, steps into a three. Too long again. Jones with the rebound for Cambridge, and now we got a foul called. And they're going to say it's going to stay down here with Riverview. I don't know who they got on the foul, though. They're going to say it was a holding on for Cambridge Rogers. Be his second foul. Some more substitutions here for Cambridge. And sitting will be Rogers. And back in is Josiah Barnett. Tell you what, Mason Gregg, nice job on the defense about do end down here for Cambridge. An inbound pass there. Did he get and out of bounds? I, I think yet? he did. I think he was stepping. I think he stepped on the line when he was trying to I shoot it. Thank you, right. So Barnett brings it up for Cambridge. Under four to go, 13 to 17. Cambridge leads. That lead has been cut a little bit though. Riverview has been chipping away. On the court in Homko Green, he's on the right. He'll try an entry pass, spin around shot by Jones, and he finishes through contact. He had the six foot five Massey behind him and did not seem to bother him at all. I tell you, both these teams have some good length on them, and again, use it really well down low. Look out at the scorer's table as that one was knocked <laughs> right back to him. Better that one than us, right? <laughs> Walters looks to inbound, and he will get it off to Williamson, who's going to have a streak to the basket. He tried to go to Massey, but it was cut off by Braden Gregg. Nice heads-up play for him, his first steal. Good hustle back. Barnett jab steps, and now he'll go to the left and set it up. As Coach Pertusit calling out the set, he'll go to the free throw line and a nice entry fine and going up and losing the handle was Homko Green but they're going to say it's because he got hit across the arm. Kale Summers I think, yep. His first. Not a whole bunch of foul trouble across the board for either of these teams. Uh, both teams four te team fouls uh, this quarter. Again, uh, this year with the new Ohio High School rules, uh, once you get the five for a quarter then it becomes a, a two shot foul. First one is up and good from the first Federal Community Bank free throw line. We cannot say enough of how much fun we have had so far at this showcase. Thanks to the Claymont School District, all the presenting sponsors that we've had all season long. As the next one's up and good, a full day of basketball. Doesn't get much better than this. 27-17, Cambridge leads Riverview. Summers has it, and he'll go back off to Williamson. Williamson, I don't think, has sat down at any point. And that one was thrown away as it was Massey going to Walters. And it looks like we are going to get a timeout. We'll go ahead and take this Cush Financial Group timeout with them. Big Z Sports is back after this. 
PAC Drilling, a family-owned and operated company since 2005 in Bolivar, takes pride in being an economic oil and gas drilling company. PAC's objective is to contribute to American energy independence through profitable development, operation, and marketing of oil and natural gas wells. PAC also employs operating technicians to oversee each and every well drilled to maximize its productivity and longevity. Contact PAC Drilling at packdrilling.com. The Tuscarawas County Dairy Farmers want you to know that low-fat chocolate milk is a great choice for student-athletes and hard workers. It provides the nutrition needed after practices, games, or a hard day at work, and it tastes great. Low-fat chocolate milk is packed with carbohydrates for energy, proteins to repair muscles, fluids to rehydrate, plus vitamins and minerals to help build strong bones and bodies. It's the official beverage of the Ohio High School Athletic Association. Tuscarawas County Dairy Farmers. Farms. Family. Food. Back to the PAC Drilling Mobile Studio. Cambridge leads Garraway 20. Garraway. Cambridge leads Riverview 27 to 17. I read a note that was in front of me from. I know uh, we got a lot of games today, but uh, I didn't know not Garraway that one. Was here. Hey. Pardon me. Riverview. <laughs> I mean, uh, don't ask me. Anyway, it is Cambridge yeah. ball. <laughs> That's Mason Craig. Goes right side to Barnett, who will pump fake. Tripped over Summers, but was able to keep his feet there. Cambridge working in and out now, or just kind of back and forth from the right wing to the top of the key. So Barnett will bring it left now. Greg to Greg. Entry pass now. Nothing doing for Matthews, who has to go back out. He will find an open nice. shot in the corner from Braden Greg, who knocks it down. That is his third make from deep. Perry doesn't like anything closer than uh, inside that three-point line. That's it's third three, so like I said. Well, look, if you don't need it, don't go for it. That rebound was hauled in by Cambridge, but it was ripped away by Walters. He'll go to Williamson, back out. Summers thought about a three. I take that back. It was actually Andrews on the rebound because now here comes Williamson, and he'll finish off the left block. His first make in this second quarter. I tell you, great patience by Kale Summers there. Didn't force the shot. Nice assist. Barnett steps into a three, and it's good. Mason Gregg with the assist. Seven points this quarter. We're saying Barnett being the true point guard, and all of a sudden he's decided, hey, I'd like to score a little bit too. <laughs> Summers kicks right. Back out is Massey. Underhand pass from Williamson. Nearly hit Summers, but it went into Walter's hands. Now Massey hop backs to Summers. He'll shuffle step, go off the right side. Floater's no good. Knocked out of bounds there by Cambridge. As I could not tell who was the one who got it. I think it was Braden Gregg, and it was. Yeah, nice little stutter step by Summers there. I, that, that six foot shot is the hardest shot in basketball. That, it, that little floater the on the drive. Shot in basketball. <laughs> Inbound three point shot's no good, and it's Barnett who grabs the rebound. They bring it up now. And there is going to be another bucket made for Cambridge as this time cashing in for his first make of the game was Matthews. Yeah, I give him props, man. That cannot be easy playing with that mask on his face right now, but he's out there having a, a good game so far. Just gutting it out. Summers drives right. He'll stop, give it off. Massey, he'll drive, and a lot of contact, and he went right into the chest of Matthews, who draws the charge. And now we got a technical, I think, coming in here. Did not see what happened, but uh, it's going to be a technical free throw upcoming. Not sure if they got Did that on. Call? I think they got that on Massey. And wait, no, they're going to call a technical on Cambridge, I guess. Oh, I missed that completely. Who did they call it? I don't know who they called that on. I think it might have been on Barnett. And Barnett looks confused, and so does Coach uh, Pertusit. He wants an explanation. So the technical free throw rolls in and out from Walters, who gets another chance for a, for a second one. I, I really don't. I'm curious how, where that one was actually called. And sure enough, there it is now. They do say it's on Barnett, Aaron. Hey, well, must have. Must have chirped something. Next one from Walters is up and good. Coach Pertusit still not happy about it, talking to the official over there who teed him up. 35 to 20. 
The tough thing is, too, again, Riverview gets your ball back. Almost uh -huh. a turnover almost there again after the technical. 35-20 is your score just before halftime. Some substitutions for the Golden Bears. Brogan Shrimplin is in. I'll get you the other one here shortly, as it is number 32, Landon Cochran. Ball's in the hands of Williamson. He'll drive left, 23 seconds still, kicks it off. Three-point shot from Walters from the corner, rolls in and out. Rebound goes into the hands of Mason Gregg for Cambridge. I say Black Bears. I said Golden Bears, apparently. Thanks, Judd. Now here comes Cambridge the other way, and a foul going to be called here. How many times have I said that is the real question. So apologies to all Riverview fans if you're tuned in. Hayden Walters with his first. I'm going to give him a Stumpy's address here and say send yeah. any hate mail to there. <laughs> Barnett readies himself from the first Federal Community Bank free throw line. He'll roll in the first one. Some more substitutions for Riverview. Andrews is back on the court and in for the first time is Carter Westney, the sophomore. Nope, number 23, I'm sorry, Brody Johnson, the sophomore. Barnett's next one is off back iron, no good. Williamson, he grabs the rebound. He's going to try to work it up quickly to Walters. He'll come across the timeline. Five seconds showing, still got some time. Three-point shot from the corner wow. is good. Brody Johnson, the sophomore, steps up in a big way, and he knocks down a big-time three-point shot. 36-23 is the halftime lead in favor of Cambridge. We will step away, and when we return, it is time for your DAC Vitamins and Minerals halftime report. Big Z Sports and Claxon Communications will be back after this. This is Carly Mills. At First Federal Community Bank, our mission is to empower the financial well-being of our community one person at a time. Through integrity and quality, we earn the trust of our customers and exceed their expectations. First Federal Community Bank, investing in our community since 1898. Serving your banking needs in Dover, New Philadelphia, Eurexville, Sugar Creek, Berlin, and Mount Hope. First Federal Community Bank, member FDIC. Jeff Wallach LLC is a family-owned and operated company proudly serving greater Northeast Ohio and surrounding communities for over 25 years. We specialize in vinyl siding, replacement windows and doors, gutters, downspouts, and much more. We provide quality service regardless of the size or scope of the project. Our crews are reliable, respectful, and mindful of a safe work environment. Jeff Wallach LLC is certified by the Better Business Bureau. Call today and discover how we can assist you in making your vision a reality. In the rolling hills of Holmes County, we tend to do things a bit differently. At Kime, we're in the business of uncommon experiences, and we're here to care for your project like we care for our own. We believe that quality matters and want to help you get it right the first time because your project deserves it. So visit Kime Home Center, your source and destination for all things home, building, and woodworking. Kime, built on trust since 1911. Hi, this is Gian McInturf. For the past 30 years, the residents in and around Tuscarawas County have made the call to the realtors and staff at McInturf Realty for buying and selling of residential and commercial properties. We truly live in a great community, and in all those communities, there's nothing better than high school basketball. For myself and all the agents and staff at McInturf Realty, we would like to wish all the area athletes good luck this season and make the call to McInturf Realty at 330-364-SOLD or find us online at McInturfRealty.net. Welcome back in to Eurexville and Claymont High School as we bring you high school basketball again from the Claymont Midseason Showcase. Nick McWilliams and Aaron Stump teaming up together for your <laughs> halftime reporting game number three and just the stuff happening behind the scenes, getting a good uh, giggle there. Good, good luck with your stats. Well, no, don't worry. The stats are in front. Oh, they take them? Oh, okay. Well, no, here's, here's my memory. That's what's usually pretty good. Leading the way for Cambridge in that first quarter is was Braden Gregg as he knocked down three three-point shots with nine points for him. Josiah Barnett, meanwhile, he had seven, or pardon me, actually eight points. He had the two threes and a free throw. Okay. Also registered four assists and three rebounds. And now I'll have to reference the uh, the stats from there so you can keep <laughs> laughing. Uh, Deontay Jones off the bench, he got six points, and he also called uh, hauled in three rebounds, had an assist, and a steal. So for Jones, you know, it's kind of played a big role in this uh, in this game, Aaron, especially coming in off of the bench. 
yeah, as well. as <laughs> also getting points there for Cambridge. You didn't want to give up Reagan, the 50-50 money? I did not. <laughs> Reagan up. Rogers with four and also another four from Riley Homko Green. And you had a three-pointer that was nailed by Mason Gregg and a two-point shot that was knocked in by Ryland Matthews. That was pretty much all the scoring there for Cambridge. On the other side of the coin for Riverview, they've spread out their scoring pretty well too, though, Aaron. Well, that's one thing you've seen on both sides of this team. Again, Cambridge uh, had multiple scores on there, and so had Riverview. And, uh, uh, you know, really the, the free throws haven't been too plentiful, but when you look at the Cambridge side of it, again, they didn't shoot any of the first quarter, shot six right in the free throw line the second quarter. And, uh, again, those those points really help. But when you're talking Riverview, too, you got uh, six scores there. You got uh, Laird Williamson uh, leading the way with uh, three baskets, uh, four in the first quarter, one basket in the second quarter. Uh, you got, oh, I'm sorry, Leighton Massey, I'm sorry, had uh, leading all scores with seven. Uh, again, three baskets and a uh, free throw. And then Laird Williamson uh, with six. And then Hayden Walters uh, with four, again, uh, three-pointer, big three-pointer, again, coming off there and really lifting the team up and going one for two from the free throw line. And then Brody Johnson uh, with three, Parker Andrews with two, and Kale Summers with uh, a free throw in the second quarter. Something that has been huge as I tally these uh, stats up here on why Cambridge has amassed this 13-point lead. They have a slight advantage on the rebound side of things. How about in the assist category, Aaron? nine to two in that first half in favor of the Bobcats. Yeah, one of the things that they've done, they really moved well, and this team really passes the ball well. And again, that's that's been the big difference, I think, with Cambridge uh, this half, um, is again, just that ability to find the open shot. And like we said, both both teams had good shots, uh, especially in the beginning, things started a little bit slow, but, but again, once those first couple baskets fell off the scoreboard, it went nuts. <laughs> It definitely did. Well, that will wrap up our DAC Vitamins and Minerals halftime report. We'll take a quick break, and when we return, it is the second half of action in game number three of the Claymont Mid-Season Showcase. 36-23 is the score in favor of Cambridge over Riverview. Stick around. We're back after this. TMK Valley Propane is embracing remote tank monitors. Are you tired of going outside to check your propane tank or forget to order your propane on time? TMK Valley Propane now provides reliable remote tank monitoring technology. Let TMK Valley Propane take the worry away, provide timely delivery, and never run out of propane again. Thank you for your trust in TMK Valley Propane. All the way with TMK, service with a personal touch. Altman is here for you, in your community, because you matter. We're proud to be the area's first and only independent health system. We are one team, joined together, and committed to one mission, to lead our community to improved health. And we've always been here, dedicated to providing you with the very best in care, wellness, education, insurance, and more. For your community and for your family, Altman is always here for you. Hi, I'm Zach Moteis with the Tuscross Insurance Agency. For all your auto, home, farm, and business insurance, contact our team at the Tuscross Insurance Agency. Or stop in and see us at one of our three locations in downtown New Philadelphia, Sugar Creek, or in Strasburg. Providing excellent service to the Tuscross Valley since 1885. Everyone here at the Tuscross Insurance Agency would like to wish all area athletes and teams good luck this winter. Are you neglecting your building's fifth wall? Did you know something as simple as a clogged drain can lead to a destructive roof leak? Protect your business assets with WM Commercial Roofing's Umbrella Care program. This program will provide you with regular maintenance surveys and repairs to extend the life of your roof. Invest in your business with our top quality materials, advanced techniques, and skilled craftsmanship. Are you ready for a reliable partnership? Visit our website, wmcommercialroofing.com, and follow us on Facebook and Instagram to learn more. Novellus Eurexville is the world leader in aluminum recycling, and they need you. They have immediate openings for general laborers, equipment operators, and various skilled trade positions. They'll start you at $22 per hour or higher. There are advancement opportunities, and Novellus offers industry-leading benefits. To apply or find out more, go to novellus.com slash careers and search Eurexville. That's novellus.com slash careers and search Eurexville. Novellus is an equal opportunity employer. 
The First National Bank of Denison appreciates the hard work and dedication area athletes exhibit to be the best they can be for their team. We follow that same philosophy with our customers, working hard to build personal relationships and making our services convenient. The First National Bank of Denison's community involvement is important to us and we love supporting our local schools. The First National Bank of Denison with offices in Denison, Dover, Janate and Hutton, South Broadway and Shunbrun in New Philadelphia. We have our roots where others have their branches. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. This is RJ Jacobs from DAC Vitamins and Minerals. Did you know that DAC Vitamins and Minerals has more than 40 proven equine supplements that include daily multivitamins, joint digestion, reproduction and fertility, calming, and many other specialty products? DAC also carries a complete line of livestock products called DAC Show Contender. Feed DAC Vitamins and Minerals to get the competitive edge in the show pen. We've been feeding champions since 1983. Wood Electric has been trusted with all of your electrical needs for over 30 years. They are the place to call for residential, commercial, and industrial work. Wood Electric is available 24 hours a day and ready to help with any electrical problem, outage, or installation. Wood Electric, serving Tuscarawas County and beyond since 1988. Like Wood Electric on Facebook or find them online at woodelectric.net. Is your vehicle banged up? Do you want fast, professional service to get you back on the road? This is Garrett Jacobs with AutoWorks Collision Center. We service cars, trucks, SUVs, and even semi-trucks and RVs. Whether you need auto glass replacement, paintless dent repair, assistance with warranty and insurance, or just a free estimate, AutoWorks has you covered. We even offer alignments for your heavy-duty vehicles like buses, motorhomes, and semis with our state-of-the-art Hunter Alignment System. Call 330-878-4223. Open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Let AutoWorks of Strasburg work for you. Welcome back into the PAC Drilling Mobile Studio, second half of game number three of the Claymont Midseason Showcase. Cambridge leads 36 to 23 over Riverview. As it will be Cambridge ball to inbound. And what a first half it was from Josiah Barnett. Those seven points, also dishing out the four assists, three rebounds. Kind of doing a little bit of everything, and he'll start off with the ball on the inbound. He will drive and pull it back out as Cambridge sets up their offense. And Aaron, I do have to say that Coach Dale Jennings for Riverview said this is probably about the best 1-10 team, referring to Cambridge, that he has seen. They've lived up to that, and there's a nice find up over the top as Reagan Rogers dumps it off to Riley Homko Green for the first points of the second half. Here come the Black Bears as it is Walters. He'll dribble to his left and stop and hand off to Summers. Now Summers goes to Williamson. Williamson drives hard. He'll get a screen from Massey. Thought about the mid-range. Instead, he'll go to Summers. It's tipped away. Battle for it. It goes into the hands of Rogers. And now there's a wrestling match for it. And there's going to be a shove as Andrews is going to get called for the foul. I think uh, Regan there was kind of like, all right, come on, come on. I got this deal. I'm, just, I'm getting killed in here, so. Did a nice job, nice call. <laughs> it was on Andrews, as actually both players were kind of chuckling <laughs> how that went down. Rogers to inbound, nearly goes past Barnett, but he hustles it down in front of the Riverview bench. So that'd be really bad if you got that steal, then you threw Ooh. the ball right away, but now nah, they got it. They're good. Now Cambridge with the ball, it's Greg. He looked to go on a cutting teammate, but there was nothing there. Barnett out to Greg for the three-point shot, and it's good. Braden Greg knocks down another trifecta. His fourth for the game. Fifth assist for Barnett. Again, Cambridge done a nice job. Those first two minutes coming out of the third quarter are always important in high school ball, and uh, the Bobcats have come out on fire. Summers entry pass. It's not going to go into the hands that time of Massey. It careens out of bounds, but it goes off of Matthews, who was trying to cut in front of it from Cambridge. So it remains Black Bears ball. So Williamson has it. He'll drive left. Stop. Goes off to Walters. Then he'll set the screen for Walters. He tries to find a cutting Williamson. There's nothing there. And it's stolen away by Barnett. He'll stop. And will reset at the top. Now he'll hand it off to a cutting Good teammate. Pass. And there's another beautiful find as Rogers. Puts it right in the bread basket for Homko Green, who scores again. Again, another good example of people moving really well, moving the ball. Again, Kale Summers, nice three-pointer there. 
Hale, Summers knocking it down. Cuts the lead back to 17, but it is still all Cambridge right now. They've done it real quietly here today. They, they I mean, have. It's, it's just been... It's been efficient for the most part. That's, that's a good word for it, absolutely. Nothing too flashy, but some of these finds that Rodgers has... The two assists that Rodgers has dished out this half to early on have been things of beauty, and Barnett there went to on the baseline to Homko Green, but he could not connect. Rebound hauled in by Walters. Summers pushes it up. Williamson off the glass, too strong. It's Braden Gregg who grabs the board. Dice Summers with a nice cross-court bounce pass there. Barnett steps into a three-pointer off front iron, and rebound's going to go into the hands of Andrews after it was tipped around a couple times. Riverview ball and bringing it up is Walters. He'll go in. Williamson nearly has it plucked away from behind. He'll go to Summers in the corner. Three-point shot is perfect. As it was another one for Kale Summers. Timeout Cambridge. We'll go ahead and take it with them. Big Z Sports is back after this. Cush Financial Group has been proudly serving the financial needs of local community members for over 35 years. The team at Cush Financial follows an industry-leading service model with the unique approach and fiduciary responsibilities associated with their board-certified financial planner. With over 75 years of combined experience, the advisors at Cush Financial Group are here to help you achieve your financial goals. Contact the office at 330-308-8700 or visit cushfinancial.com to schedule your free consultation today. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Independent Capital Company Incorporated member FINRA SIPC. Do you hunt, fish, sew, or have a hobby that you would like to share with someone? Hi, this is Noah Sug with Brig Brothers Big Sisters, and we are faced with our biggest commitment in matching 56 littles with bigs. We will match a little with you that shares the same interests and enjoys the same things, so you can do what you enjoy and change the life of a little at the same time. To learn more, we ask you call 339-6916 or visit bigs4kids.com slash volunteer. Thank you. Five minutes to go here in the third quarter, and it is a 43-29 to 29 lead Cambridge has over Riverview. That timeout from Coach Kyle Pertusit. Aaron, I don't think he was overly joyed with how things have started here in the second half. No, you had uh, Kale Summers come out, hit two back-to-back -back three pointers, and uh, that'll cut into a lead really quick. So I got a nice uh, timeout there, good quality timeout to stop that momentum and get your team uh, refocused. And Williamson nearly came up with a steal there. <laughs> That would have really made him irate, I'm sure. <laughs> Mason Gregg to inbound for the Bobcats. And he doesn't have anybody. He's going to have to get it in. He finally will to Barnett. Goes back up to the top to Gregg, who loses the handle. Right to the hands of Kale Summers, who dish it off, and it's stolen away by Barnett now. Kind of sloppy play here early. Barnett, entry pass underneath on the baseline, goes into the hands of Jones. He'll put it on the deck, goes up, and he got fouled. And I think it was Massey. A little helter-skelter to start off the <laughs> second half, but Cambridge still leads. That foul is going to be picked up by... Say Parker Andrews? It is Parker Andrews. That he would be his third. third. And it looks like they are going to substitute Andrews as first one from Jones from the charity stripe is up and good. So coming in for Andrews will be Brody Johnson. The sophomore has about 40 seconds on the court this game, and the only shot he took was that three-pointer right before halftime. Jones's next one was too long. Massey with the rebound, and now we're going to get a foul called. And it looks like they are going to say that Massey got shoved from behind on that rebound by Matthews. And it is his second foul. Well, for Matthews, he's listed at six foot one, and he's trying to rebound over six foot five Massey. <laughs> I think six five might be a little <laughs> not giving him quite not, enough. It's not a good... Uh... Not a good combination. Williamson straight nice. to the basket, and he got fouled. Guilty of the foul that time was Cameron Jeffrey, who's back in the game for the Bobcats. So Williamson steps to the first Federal Community Bank free throw line. Some more substitutions for Cambridge. And again, it's that kind of platoon substitution. As back in is Homko Green, Braden Gregg, and Reagan Rogers. Like I said, be interested to know if they've done that all season or if that's just kind of a way to kind of keep the legs a little fresh because you have played a lot of games recently. Not sure. 
as Massey had the rebound, but it got knocked away, so it's Cambridge ball. Now a drive. Rogers kick back. Open shot for Mason Gregg, and he couldn't find anything on that one. Goes out of bounds, and they're going to say it stays with Cambridge. He said somebody on the Riverview roster hit it, and I don't think anybody on Riverview I said what. Don't. Yeah, I didn't see that myself. Cambridge ball inbound. Three-point shot is almost <laughs> in again for Braden Gregg, but it rims out. Oh, if he would have hit that one. So now it's Williamson. He had grabbed the rebound. He gets it back on offense. He'll drive left. Kicks out. Johnson lost the handle. And will hand it off to Walters. Walters goes left. Goes Johnson now. Johnson gets a screen. He'll go towards the free throw line. Now back out Massey. And he'll find an open shooter. And Walters from the right wing who buries it from deep. And now we're back to a 10-point game. Cambridge working it down. It's Mason Gregg. Pulls back. Ball makes its way to Rogers on the left wing in front of his own bench. As Coach Pertusit calls out the offense. Now a drive. Braden Gregg kicks out. Jones thought about a three. Instead, he'll drive. Goes off left block, and he got bumped. But they're going to call their travel. They're going to say that he lost his footing and went out of bounds. Yeah, those get a little frustrating sometimes. You feel like you get bumped and knocked off balance, and uh, as you're trying to gather your feet, you, you do travel. But again, as a result of the, the little contact there. So sometimes the ball players, those get a little frustrating. Summers in the left wing. He'll go to the top of the key. Three-point shot. He left it way right. Rebound hauled in by Walters off of the Cambridge player. And he's going to save the possession for the Black Bears. That's great hustle there in the corner again. Get him another possession. Some more substitutions. As back in the game is Andrews for Riverview. For Cambridge back in are Matthews and Barnett. Walters throws it deep to Summers, who shows off his best high-pointing <laughs> ability as he'll go up and catch it. Williamson, he'll drive to the right. Lost the handle, and it goes out of bounds, and he slammed into a Cambridge player. As I think it was Rogers, or pardon me, Matthews, that they collided. Everybody gets back up okay. So it did a nice job. Cambridge did a nice job on defense there. Good, held their ground, didn't reach, and uh, again, got a turnover. So it's Braden Gregg to bring it up over the timeline. He's guarded by Summers. Rodgers will now take it and run the offense. He'll drive to the right block, stop, kick back. They work the ball around the three-point line. Barnett has it now. He'll dribble behind his back, get a screen from Jones. He'll stop, now continue. He'll find an open teammate in Matthews. He doesn't take the open three-point <laughs> shot, and now they found <laughs> Rodgers wide open underneath. He'll try to go back into the top. It's not going to work. Williamson has it. Pump fake. Now up off the backboard and good. You could almost see that one coming. After they had Rodgers open underneath, couldn't get it to him. Now Jones, he gets the ball deep. He's on the right block, spin around, nobody there. He's going to leave it up and somehow get it to fall. Nobody, until you try that, you don't know how difficult that is. That was great patience. Uh, probably there for about a uh, little, about two and a half seconds, we'll say, in that thing. But uh, get great patience in there and uh, nice shot. Williamson from the left wing. He'll drive left. He's double teamed. Tries to go back out. He'll find Andrews to drive, and we're going to get a charge. As sliding in behind him was Reagan Rogers, who hit the deck. That's the fourth foul now on Andrews. Again, did a nice job selling the, the charge there. Again, that, that's a lost start with a lot of these high school kids these days, and uh, he did a nice job. Here comes the Cambridge offense again, as it will be Barnett. He's guarded by Summers. Summers has kind of switched what guys he's on. They've Riverview's been putting him on a lot of different ball handlers. 46-36, your score in favor of Cambridge. Minute 10 showing here in the third. Rogers now will hand off Barnett. And for the Bobcats, they're kind of working backwards now. Now they'll drive. 
baseline find. Dump off, and what a beautiful play. Barnett goes to Mason Gregg, who just leaves it in the lap of Matthews, who finishes. Again, we've said it several times. Again, Cambridge moves very well. And again, the, the assists are just keep piling up there right now. And they continue to cut, have those open shots. The lead continues to grow. Summers gives it off for an open <laughs> three-point shot for Walters. That, uh, that hit every part of the rim. <laughs> the offensive board, though, in the hustle another for one. Reed Johnson. And there's another three-point shot. No good, but a foul is going to get called. They're going to say that Walters going up for that rebound got shoved from behind. Again, great hustle. A series of hustle events there by Walters. Again, got the ball back, just went into the offensive rebound, really worked his tail off. Great job. That foul was on. Josiah Barnett. His second. Riverview ball to inbound. Walters there, and we're going to get a five-second call. Walters couldn't get it in, and there's that hustle again by the Bobcats. Again, what advantage the Bobcats have right now is the amount of upperclassmen they have compared to Riverview. Riverview plays with a lot of underclassmen, a lot of sophomores on this squad. Trying to look at their squad quick, I think they only got one senior on the team and uh, three juniors. Yeah, all so the rest, rest of a bunch rest of sophomores. Of sophomore, so. Again, future's looking bright for Riverview if these guys play like this now. Well, Coach Jennings said when we interviewed him in the pregame that he felt they were going to be really, really good in about two or three years' time. Reagan Rogers steps up, though, and buries the mid-range jumper from the free throw line, and that puts his team lead to 14. On to the final frame. It is the Black Bears trailing the Bobcats 50-36. to 36. Big Z Sports is back after this. The certified public accountants at Needenthal & Company believe in the value of relationships. Needenthal & Company has been in business for over 50 years in your community, helping individuals and businesses grow. Needenthal & Company can help manage and prepare your payroll, plan your estate, and prepare your business and personal income taxes. Stop in to the Needenthal facility on North Wooster Avenue in Dover and become a valued client today. Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has just what you're looking for, so your athlete has the best gear for the sports they play. Dumont's has a large apparel selection and can handle your customized screen printing as well as embroidery for your team or business. For sporting goods and for all your apparel needs, Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has everything you want to play and look your best. Welcome back into Claymont High School in the PAC Drilling Mobile Studio. As we've got a good matchup going on between Cambridge and Riverview, it is the Bobcats leading the Black Bears 50 to 36. Once again, it's kind of similar to some of the other games we've had going on, Aaron, that there have been moments there for sure for Riverview to get on the run and kind of chip away, which they have, but it just seems like this is the deficit that they're hovering around and have been for the past couple quarters and having a hard time, you know, finding that little extra bump to get ahead. Yeah, if you're Coach Jennings for Riverview, again, you all you're looking to do is win a quarter, and uh, Cambridge has actually done a nice job when you base it quarter to quarter. Cambridge has won every quarter. This one, the third quarter, was a 14-13 to 13 advantage for Cambridge. So, again, if you're Riverview, you just want to chip away here. Three-point shot is no good for Riverview, and it's Brayden Gregg who gets the rebound. Bobcats setting it up again with Rogers. He'll drive right, stops, gives it off. Now driving baseline is Matthews. He has nowhere to go, and it's turned over. That's stolen away by Walters. Yeah, and Cambridge's spacing got a little close there, and again, as a result, turned the ball over. Nice defense by Riverview. And now going the other way was Williamson, and he's going to get nailed for the charge. They're going to say he went into Rogers, who was standing in his way. The second foul for Williamson. I think that's the third charge uh, Cambridge has taken. And another timeout called here by Coach Pertusit. We'll stick right here during this Cush Financial Group timeout. Something else, you know, to look at, and we've already talked about this at halftime, but I really want to reiterate this because it has been impressive. Cambridge's ability 
to move this ball right now and really have no moments of lull, so to speak. I yeah. mean, they its like they know exactly where their teammates are at all times. Yeah, they have a great half-court offense right now, and they space it well and they move well, and the vision that their guards uh, and even their big guys down low have. There's been a lot where we dump it down low, toss it back out with a successful three-pointer. And uh, like you were saying, it, they move well and move the – how many assists we got total this game uh, so far? It's for them? About running out of ink on that. Uh, I've got them for 13. That's 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 a great stat for a high school team. And that one nearly told, taken away by Massey instead. Cambridge keeps possession. It's Rogers who go across. Now he'll go to Greg. Now he tries to find Mason Greg. And the ball goes out of bounds, tipped by Riverview. Braden trying to go to Mason. One's a senior, one's a sophomore. I'm going to assume brothers because they look pretty similar too. And I wonder if they're going to give each other a hard time after that. Like, man, I had the open <laughs> shot. It's your fault you didn't get it to me. <laughs> Barnett will come out of the right corner now. He was cut off by Walters, but he'll get around him. He's going to drive, stop, kick out. Three-point shot in the corner is perfect again. Mason Gregg buries it from deep. For Barnett, sixth assist. Williamson to the corner. Summers can't handle it. It careens out of bounds, and it's another Black Bears turnover. Time, time out. Looks like we got it is another timeout. We'll go ahead and take this one with them. It is a Cush Financial Group timeout, and we're back after this. PAC Drilling, a family-owned and operated company since 2005 in Bolivar, takes pride in being an economic oil and gas drilling company. PAC's objective is to contribute to American energy independence through profitable development, operation, and marketing of oil and natural gas wells. PAC also employs operating technicians to oversee each and every well drilled to maximize its productivity and longevity. Contact PAC Drilling at PackDrilling.com. It is the Claymont Midseason Showcase 53-36 Cambridge leads Riverview. Nick and Aaron bringing you this presentation of high school basketball. Again, we got to give another big thank you to all of our sponsors for today's action. Of course, as you know, throughout the entire season, WM Commercial Roofing, Novellus, the Tuscarawas Insurance Agency, and Altman Hospital bringing you all the action. But a big thank you to the First National wow. Bank of Denison as well, as they were integral in making this happen. And we've got another great play there in the ball movement. Rogers to Matthews, another assist, another bucket for Cambridge. I tell you, any time you get that ball down the court and never dribble it is a very special play, so great job. Tough angle shot for Andrews. This isn't going to fall, and it's going to be rebounded by Greg, who will bring it up. And off the glass and good again for the Bobcats is Reagan Rogers. That's his second make of the second half. Walters has it in front of his team's bench. They're down by 21 now. Back out, Walters, three-point shot off the front of the rim, no good. Massey's going to grab the rebound, and they're going to say that he had his wrist grabbed. Again, great hustle, way to go off to the offensive boards uh, for Leighton there. Again, nice, uh, nice job, no quit. Tough sledding for this Riverview team, because, you know, we say about how this is a game of runs, is basketball as Walters' three-point shot's not going to fall, and it's going to go out of bounds. It's going to be Cambridge ball. It is a game of runs, and we were just talking him not that long ago, you know, down by 12, and all of a sudden it balloons to 21. It's almost demoralizing, especially when you get to the fourth quarter, so you got to try to keep that positivity flowing to get back into this game. And, that, again, that's what all the assists do for your team. It's got everybody engaged on there and keeps them excited and keeps them moving. You figure once you move, you get rewarded by getting the ball in your hand, scoring. Uh, it, it motivates you real quick. Walters tipped it away from Rogers. That's why there's no backcourt. Barnett now runs right around him, and they'll go back out. I think Cambridge already, even with five and a half to go here, probably slowing it down a little bit more. No look pass from Barnett in the corner. He left it short, trying to hustle for his own rebound. He knew once he let it go, it wasn't going to make it. <laughs> Williamson will grab the board, though, for Riverview. I think you jinxed that one. They, they, they slowed it down until it got in his hands. He's out firing this bad boy. Well, you know it's not a good sign when the shooter immediately sprints after it. <laughs> Walters does a nice job on the drive, and he'll drop it in for the Black Bears. You know that, or you could just say that's good basketball, follow your shot. But I think he did that because he knew he left it short. Barnett leaves it short. He tips it away, and it's Walters. He's got numbers, three on one. He'll go up and off the glass and good. 
Good play, good decision there by Walters as he was able to get right around the defender and put it in off the glass, cuts the lead to 17. Yeah, Kamer's doing a nice job of cutting off that pass there and uh, smart choice taking the basket himself. And Barnett there, they're going to call a timeout. Another 30-second will keep it here. For Cambridge here, I'm sure for Coach Pertusit there as they got trapped in that corner down there, there was the possibility that there was the possibility that, you know, there could have been that turnover, and he doesn't want the momentum to continue to the Black Bears' direction, you know, after they're going on this little run. Well, if you're Coach Pertusit, this is a great time to really work on closing out a game, too. You got a nice, comfortable lead right now. You know, you pretty much got the game under control, but again, you have to learn how to finish games. And, and these shootout games like this are a great time to do that. Again, we have to play defense for, you know, the entire game. We have to close out, rebound. Um, and the last thing you want to do is, is let this lead kind of slip. Uh, you know, e even if you do win, there's, there's ways that you just feel better about the wins. 431 showing here in the fourth quarter as uh, some off-camera discussion about our McInturf Realty Player of the Game, which we will uh, be figuring that out as we continue on here. It's been a great game for a lot of different players for Cambridge, which, you know, that's usually a good sign for a team success if it makes our job that hard trying to figure it out. Absolutely. I mean, you look at the score sheet right now, the assist sheet right now, the rebound sheet right now, and, and it's, it's all over the board, and that entire team's done a good job and, and made our job very difficult today. So it is Braden Gregg who has it. That one's tipped away, and it's going to be taken away by Riverview. And bringing it down is Summers. He is <laughs> he was corralled by multiple different Cambridge players, but gets through it. Walters to the rack, Ooh, and wow, a nice that. up and under scoop shot. He's got six this quarter alone. Now Cambridge nearly turns it over, but instead it's going to be an easy find underneath as Rogers gets the assist to Braden Gregg, who finishes. That's Rogers' fourth assist, Aaron. I tell you, that's the hard thing, too, if you're the Black Bears right now. Again, you're really pressing, trying to get some turnovers, and unfortunately laid that basket down the other end. No good on the shot there. Rebound hauled in by Humpco Green, and they go to a cutting uh, cutting Brandon Gregg, who finishes and one upcoming. He'll step back to the first Federal Community Bank free throw line. Give him 16. I think Coach Partus it really got to him this time. Again, they seem like they've really ratched up the uh, effort right there. And again, it uh, looks like Cale Summers with his second foul. Is his second foul, and he'll step up to the charity stripe. The ball movement again for Cambridge. <laughs> Boy, has it ever been good. As it continues, even here is. Free throw is up and good for Greg, who has a game-high 17 points now. Pushes his team's lead back to 20. 3.40 now showing on the clock. Walters will stop, pop, and go to the right side to Reed Johnson, who's in the game. Johnson picks up his dribble, goes to Williamson, looking for a backdoor cut. Nothing there. Instead, he'll step back into a three-point shot. And Williamson finds nothing but the bottom of the net. I think he was getting tired of Hayden Walters scoring all their points this quarter. He and, said, I'm going to take care of this. And Barnett's going to get nailed for a carry. He was thinking about a pass and decided to change his mind, but you could see the hand come up over the yeah, top. Good, good call by the officials there. Overall, they've done a great job tonight. i tell you what. Today, they, they, where are we at? <laughs> they've been getting a workout because this game has been moving quick back up and down the court, and there's Barnett with a steal. Here he comes. Right block. Off the glass and good. That is Barnett's fourth steal tonight. And he was going for number five right there. Couldn't quite get it. Now an entry pass, pass underneath and can't finish at the rim is Riverview and Andrews. Rebound gets hauled in by Matthews. Andrews with a nice cut there. Just kind of lost where he was on the court. Another steal. Andrews. Punt fake. Nice move there. And one as they're going to say Barnett found him. No, if your court's... Pertus, there, right there, he calls him over. He called Jeffrey right so over. Wait right now. a minute now. We're going to have a little chat here. Well, for Josiah, you know, so far tonight, 10 points, four steals, three rebounds, and six assists. It's been an all around performance that has been pretty good for the uh, Bobcats point guard. Like talked earlier, you want to see all your players finish those games strong and uh, kind of a lazy pass right there and Courts Portusit to uh, letting them hear about it. 64-48, your score, 2.43 to go. 
in the fourth. Another foul going to be called here. That is going to be the first one called on Reed Johnson. Inbound ball to Greg as he'll work it up now. They had an open man underneath. They will find him in Matthews. He'll step back, go up. Probably got hit on the arm, but finished through the contact. That's his fifth point this quarter. Here comes Riverview, stepping into a threes. Williamson didn't have much legs under it there, and the rebound was hauled in by Massey. He got fouled. You can see the effects now of the up and down speed of this game going back and forth. Some of these shots being left short again. Yeah, a lot of them, and again, uh, Riverview trying to press the defensive end, trying to get some turnovers too, and, and leaving some uh, open shots for the Bobcats. And again, it doesn't matter if you lose by one or 18 where we're at right now, but again, nice. Uh, they continue to hustle, and that's what you want to see. Massey clangs it off front iron. So both Johnson and Johnson not the company. Reed Johnson and Brody Johnson will sit for Riverview. <laughs> You've been waiting all night for that I one, have I You've really been have not. <laughs> all night for that one. Massey <laughs> left it short again. That rebound going to get hauled in by Rogers. He will bring it up. Lost the handle. Now he has to get rid of it, and he will. Matthews dribbles. Gives it off to Barnett, but it was tipped away by Williamson. I promise you, I have not. That just happened organically. Yep. I don't believe you. Either does any of our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> 215 now showing. It's an 18-point ball game. So for all intents and purposes here, you know, Cambridge certainly appears like they are walking away with the victory in this one. And they're going to improve now this season to 2 and 10. As a Riverview player goes down in Walters. And we're actually going to get a time called here by the referee. Probably the right call. He uh, he twisted his ankle and seems to be all right now. <laughs> <laughs> so now, 2-0-1 to go in the fourth quarter. 66-48, Walters does check out. <laughs> Going over to the sideline. So back in will be Reed Johnson. <laughs> oh, the fun we so, get to have away from the camera, right? <laughs> it's always good communication with the officials. They're all right. <laughs> Delivery underneath and can't quite finish and a lot of contact as the ball is going to stay with Cambridge. It was Barnett who dropped it off to Matthews. Man. And actually, I take that back. They're going to say it went off of a Cambridge player. I thought they said it went off a of Riverview. My mistake. So here comes Summers, minute 40 showing. He'll stop in the left wing and goes off to Massey. Massey to drive. Now he'll drop it off. Three-point shot is good. Reed Johnson. Knocks it in for Riverview and another timeout on the court. We'll go ahead and take this one with them. Big Z Sports is back after this Cush Financial Group timeout. The Tuscarawas County Dairy Farmers want you to know that low-fat chocolate milk is a great choice for student-athletes and hard workers. It provides the nutrition needed after practices, games, or a hard day at work, and it tastes great. Low-fat chocolate milk is packed with carbohydrates for energy, proteins to repair muscles, fluids to rehydrate, plus vitamins and minerals to help build strong bones and bodies. It's the official beverage of the Ohio High School Athletic Association. Tuscarawas County Dairy Farmers. Farms. Family. Food. Welcome back into the PAC Drilling Mobile Studio. Game number three of the Claymont Midseason Showcase is winding down. Just a minute 34 showing on the clock. 66 to 50. It is Cambridge who has the lead well on their way to another victory. And with their second of the season and a well-earned one. But both these teams still duking it out. But it looks like Riverview has officially called off the dogs here. Tell you what, again, got to give props to Claymont High School and all their administrators putting this tournament on. Again, wonderful tournament. Thankfully, the uh, the weather did cooperate, uh, which always helps. And, uh, again, appreciate everybody coming out. And, again, appreciate our listeners who are listening live right now or also uh, listen to the live streams uh, anytime they want to. So it will be Cambridge Ball who have also who have also called off the dogs as both teams now with their benches in. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and apologize when I inevitably get the names wrong on these numbers. <laughs> they have not been in for most of the game. Jones is out there for Cambridge, who we've seen him in for a lot of the game. And driving it in for Cambridge. Now kicking it back out was Brayer Ford. And who has it in front of me is Camden Lauer. Ball's worked into the paint. Cross court, Jones goes back to the top in Lauer, and then work it back around. Now a fastball That's inside to Trayvon Alexander, who somehow handles it. He was going to catch that if he <laughs> wanted to or not. He's going to leave an imprint. Lauer loses the handle, and it looked like it was off of a foot there of a Riverview player. Instead, they're going to say it's off of Lauer's foot. So it will be Riverview ball. I tell you what, got to give uh, props to this team out here from Riverview. Hustled the whole time. That's a long time to play defense. Did a great job. Got the turnover. Brogan Shrimplin will give it in to Brody Johnson. 45 seconds showing. Johnson drives, kicks out, and the ball's worked out to Shrimplin. We go right side, has it tipped away. That one's going to be a steal, and here comes Jones. He's going to try to finish off the right block and left it too strong. <laughs> Rebound hauled in by Riverview. You know, he's kicking himself because he's made some tough shots in this game <laughs> off the bench, and he's thinking, really? That's the one that I miss. Here goes Johnson on a drive. He'll get his man up by in Jones, and it is fouled. And knocked away. Deontay ended up getting, yep, Deontay. That's his first. So they got him on the arm. 18.8 .8 seconds showing. 66.50 is our score. Jones, minus that foul. Off the bench, really, one of the difference makers in this game with nine points, three boards, and an assist and a steal. Again, really both, nice game for both him. Both teams having a lot of depth in the scoring department. Again, like you said, though, Cambridge, uh, again, multiple players uh, really stepping up in key times and uh, making this bolt go. First one was up in good for Johnson. Next one rattles all over the place, but it will fall. Makes it a 14-point game. 15 seconds. Cambridge works it up. It's Cameron Jeffrey who will go back out as the clock looks like it is going to hit zero. Black Bears going to back off. Bobcats are going to win. 66-52 is going to be your final score here as Cambridge is victorious for the second time this season. Riverview will now fall to 5-8, and eight. and what a battle for both these sides. Yeah, it was a great uh, entertainment game, real clean game. Uh, and like you said earlier, Cambridge really played efficiently, I thought, and their lead just grew very quietly, and before we knew it, we are in a double-digit lead, and uh, off they went. Certainly, and I mean, uh, you couldn't ask for some better action between these two sides. It had pretty much everything. There were some moments that were a little bit rough, some others that, you know, you could see the gelling really starting to happen. But overall, for Cambridge, a well-earned victory there. 66-52, your final score from this afternoon's action, actually into this evening's action, I should say. So with that, now moving on to our DAC Vitamins and Minerals post-game show. Very brief DAC Vitamins and Minerals post-game <laughs> show. Leading scorer on this game for Cambridge with 17 points was Braden Gregg, and it was really hard not consider giving it to him with the four three-pointers that he hit. But with a little bit more complete game and one of the catalysts in what brought them this victory and also uh, had a all-around great night, was the point guard for Cambridge in Josiah Barnett, the five foot ten junior. Ten points, six assists, four steals, and three rebounds. He ultimately will get our McInturf Realty player of the game nod, and really the offense ran through him, and when it was running through him, it was it was good. Like you said, it, we, we that, that was a tough call tonight, and uh, a lot of players could have gotten that. Again, you had several players, what you had three with eight, one with nine. Um, Cameron had 10. You had great good. outputs all over the place. Yeah, so again, well done. Uh, it's a good quality team. Like you said, that that team's only 1 in 10 right now. Uh, the second half of the season, uh, I think uh, they'll, they'll have a little bit better record. Leading scorer for Riverview was Laird Williamson, the junior, as he finished with 13 points, 4 rebounds, and 2 assists. And the Black Bears, as we said, fall to 5 and 8 Cambridge improves to 2 and 10. That will do it for this presentation of high school basketball with Z Country. When we come back, we'll move on to the next game for tonight. It is Carrollton taking on West Holmes. Chris Kale back on the call with you with Big Z Sports. We'll be back right after this.
Welcome back to Claymont High School, game number four of the Claymont Midseason Classic, where the one and eight West Holmes Knights take on the two and ten Carrollton Warriors. Coverage brought to you by the First National Bank of Denison, the Tuscross Insurance Agency, Altman Hospital, WM Commercial Roofing, and Novellus. Welcome into the Wood Electric pregame show. I'm your play-by-play -play announcer for game number four, Chris Kale. Joining me in the PAC Drilling Mobile Studios, my boy Aaron Stump. For Claxton Communications, Abby Wright and Gage Wright. Stumpy, both these teams kind of coming in looking for their identities. They're looking to build on what they had in the first half of the year and carry that towards tournament play. Both teams could get a big win and take a big step in doing that today. Well, that's a nice thing, especially about these shootout series that we have right now. Again, it, it allows you to take a break from your conference play. It allows you to take a little break from that grind that it has. These games are fun. It also allows these coaches to really work on things that they really need to work on the second half of the season and really run into tournament time. I agree with you 100%. Mike Ackerman, the head coach of the Carrollton Warriors, they are 2-10. and 10. They lost to Minerva back on Friday night, 62-42. to 42. West Holmes, they haven't played a game since Tuesday. They lost to Ashland 67-31, head coached by Ben Belden in his first year. They are 1-8. The last time these two teams played, back on January 29th of 2022, Carrollton got the 59-49 win out at West Holmes. So that's going to do it for uh, this portion of the Wood Electric pregame show. It's time to go with our courtside interviews, brought to you by Kime. We'll be back on Big Z Sports right after this. This is Carly Mills. At First Federal Community Bank, our mission is to empower the financial well-being of our community one person at a time. Through integrity and quality, we earn the trust of our customers and exceed their expectations. First Federal Community Bank, investing in our community since 1898. Serving your banking needs in Dover, New Philadelphia, Eurexville, Sugar Creek, Berlin, and Mount Hope. First Federal Community Bank, member FDIC. Welcome back to Claymont, the Midseason Classic. I'm Chris Kale, being joined courtside by West Holmes coach Ben Belden, brought to you by Kime. Coach, I know things haven't went the way you've wanted in the first half of the season in your first season with the Knights, but talk about the growth that you've seen from game one all the way until now. Yeah, I mean, I think um, you just mentioned it. There's been there's been a lot of growth. There's been uh, some ups and downs. I mean, we've lost, you know, we lost the game by four to start the year. We lost the game by two in our first home game. So we've been competitive in every game, and that's kind of the biggest thing is just learning how to compete and compete for four quarters. I still think we're kind of waiting to put four quarters of basketball together, but, you know, we've seen spurts of it. We've had a rough go the last two or three games. Uh, you know, Christmas kind of took away a little bit of our momentum a little bit, to be honest with you, and we've battled some injuries and those types of things. But, you know, we've had some of our best practices the last week or two, and, um, you know, we're just, like you say, looking to get healthy at the right time, looking to kind of put it all together at the right time and put our best foot forward. Coach, you start three seniors, two sophomores. Talk about those seniors and how they've help lead the Knights? Yeah, I mean, to go through each of uh, each of those seniors, you know, Collier is our point guard. He um, He's one of those kids that's like the first kid in the gym, the last one to leave. His mom's on my staff, obviously, so that kind of helps. Uh, but, but he's put in, you know, tons and tons of work uh, on the basketball floor, in the weight room. I mean, I, I coached against him for three years before I got to be his coach. And so, you know, the how he's evolved as a basketball player is pretty remarkable. And then there's Nate Fair, who, you know, he's, you never have to worry about what you're going to get from him. He's just plays hard every single time does everything the right way like just a great kid and then Sam Sprang is all of those things also and uh, kind of a quiet leader he, he, he kind of um, leads by example pretty steady kids um, and, and, and talented and if he was you know he might be our best post player in terms of post moves now he plays on the perimeter but uh, we always joke that you know if he was a couple inches taller he'd be you know an all Ohio post player so uh, he brings an, another added benefit to that and uh, I don't know those three like I say are our starters and they've really led us so far this year. Coach a Carrollton team awaits you this afternoon they're looking for their identity they're kind of reloading from a 21 win season and, and trying to look better in the second half. Talk about what you expect out of the Warriors at both ends of the floor tonight. Yeah I mean well interestingly enough last year when I was the coach at Riverview we played Carrollton in the in the tournament and they got us by 15 or 20 points but I obviously got to really familiarize myself with Carrollton. They're looking to do a lot of the same stuff. Uh, Lincoln Mallory number five for them is really good uh, he's a really good all-around player. He's a really great shooter. He can get to the basket, and he's leading them. And, um, you know, those young guys for them were, were pretty good last year, too. They're just trying to settle into to being a varsity team. So 
Uh, they're going to play really hard. Um, they've got, you know, kind of a variety of offenses and defenses that they'll throw at you to try to keep you on your toes. And then they're going to ride the hot hand, I guess, and, and, and ride the strategy stuff that's going to be, um, you know, that's going to be good for them moving forward. But, you know, at West Holmes, you know, we're, we're – we know what we're going to do against any opponent, to be honest with you. So um, we're, we're looking at what we do and not worrying too much about our, who our opponent is and just being real consistent with our stuff. And that's what we're gonna, how we're going to approach tonight. So if West Holmes is going to get out of here at the Midseason Classic with a win tonight, what needs to happen? Give me those keys to victory. Our biggest thing is getting stops. Um, you know, obviously we got to know where the Mallory kid is uh, and limit him. He's their, he's their leading scorer. And so, you know, anytime you go up a team against a team like Carrollton, you want to take away what they do well um, and that's get him the ball so we've got to make sure that we we hold him in check and you know we got to dictate the, the the pace of the game a little bit there's times where we're going to want to speed it up there's times where we're going to want to slow it down be a little bit more methodical and just control the tempo of the game that's the biggest thing coach thank you so much for your time good luck tonight thank you that was Knights head coach Ben Belden brought to you by Kime when we come back to Claymont High School I'll be joined by Carrollton head coach Mike Ackerman on Classic Communications in the rolling hills of Holmes County, we tend to do things a bit differently. At Kime, we're in the business of uncommon experiences, and we're here to care for your project like we care for our own. We believe that quality matters and want to help you get it right the first time because your project deserves it. So visit Kime Home Center, your source and destination for all things home, building, and woodworking. Kime, built on trust since 1911. Welcome back to the Wood Electric pregame show. I'm Chris Kale being joined courtside, built by Kime, with Carrollton head coach Mike Ackerman. Coach, I know the first half of the season hasn't gone how you'd liked. What are some of the things that you have been working on to kind of turn the page for the second half as you get ready for tournament play? Yeah, um, you know, obviously we'd like to win a couple more games there earlier on, but, uh, you know, we're, we're backloaded in terms of our home games. You know, this is our 13th game, and 10 of them have been on the road. So, uh, you know, we're going to have a nice little string of home court advantage, you know, coming down the stretch and, you know, losing – you know, the majority of our starting lineup and rotation from a 21-win team last year, we knew there was going to be a little bit of a growing growing spell. And, you know, Lincoln being back, is, you know, he's, he's helped at times. You know, a couple of the wins we had, he had some big games and stuff. Young guys just got to grow up, got to make shots and, uh, you know, keep working. And I thought, you know, the other night we didn't shoot the ball well against Minerva, but uh, we, hung, we hung in there and we battled. And, you know, one thing I will say about our guys is they'll compete for 32 minutes, and that's all you can ask for at this point. You know, eventually the side will turn and the ball will go in and things, things will go our way. Way, but you know right now you know they're showing a lot of character a lot of integrity about who they are you know fighting through a tough time and you know we're ready for it to turn on us so coach you guys play in a tough conference the EBC always pretty tough top yeah. to bottom talk about how that kind of you know iron sharpening iron and get you ready for tournament play playing in a tough conference yeah you know the every night in the EBC you know you got to strap it up and be ready to go you know Marlington we played really well and um, you know, they're a six and five team right now and we beat them by 20, you know, and then turn around and, you know, struggled against, you know, West Branch team. It's also very good. And, you know, we beat Salem one night and then come back against Minerva. I mean, uh, you just never know, you know, how it's going to go that night. You know, it's going to be a fight for 32 minutes. And, you know, uh, unfortunately, the game comes down to made shots a lot of times, you know, and taking care of the ball. And the nights that we won, we did those two things. The nights that we didn't, we didn't. So, uh, you know, hopefully tonight, you know, we take care of the basketball and make some shots. Coach, a West Holmes team on the other side, in the other locker room that uh, you have this afternoon. They're kind of looking for their identity and kind of rebuilding as well. What do you expect from them at both ends? Uh, you know, they got three seniors that, that play a lot. You know, the, the spraying kid, uh, number four and, and number five. Uh, shoot a lot of outside shots, you know, like to get to the rim. And then they got two sophomores that start for them. You know, they play in a crazy competitive league too, you know, with Worcester and Ashland and uh, New Philly and Madison and Comprehend. I mean, they, they play a tough schedule too. So uh, I'm not really worried about their record. I've seen them on film. They're a lot better than what their record says. So, uh, you know, I'm expecting a very competitive match here. I think there's going to be a lot of driving in the hoop. You know, referees are going to have to have their hands full here with uh, get, keep, keeping this under control because I think uh, we're going to try to get to the rim so are they. So. Coach, finally, what are your three keys to picking up a big win in this midseason classic tournament this afternoon? Uh, I think we, we got to share the basketball. We got to run our offense a little bit better. Uh, we can't rely on one pass and a shot. Uh, you know, I think transition, we'll be able to get out and score in transition. But when it comes to the half court, I think we're going to sit down and run our offense. And then defensively, uh, you know, we got to limit them to one shot and we got to jump to the basketball and put some pressure on the ball. So uh, I think if we do what we're capable of doing, I think we'll be all right tonight. Coach, thank you for your time. Good luck tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you. That is Warriors head coach. 
coach Mike Ackerman, presented by Kime. When we come back to claim on midseason classic, we'll have the Needham Thal and Company keys to the game starting lineups in game number four between the Warriors and Knights. Right after this on Big Z Sports. Welcome back to Claymont High School for the Claymont Midseason Classic. Chris Kale, Aaron Stump here with you for game number four between West Holmes and Carrollton. Uh, we got a couple of newcomers, town people in here. Got to give a shout out to Coach Troyer. So, uh, yeah, we, we'll make sure that, that <laughs> we take care of that. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, thank you to Kime for our courtside interviews. I've got our Needham Thorn Company keys to the game. First for the West Holmes Knights. Make someone other than number five beat you. Which is Malerny. You got to get you got to get the ball out of his hands. Worry about us, not them. They need to control what they can do, not worry about what Carrollton's doing. Box out and rebound is the third Needham Dolan Company key to the game for the West Holmes Knights. For the Carrollton Warriors, fine scoring outside of Malerny and Barong. Limit turnovers, and you've got to step out and guard these shooters of the Carrollton Warrior or of the uh, West Holmes Knights. Those are the keys to the game brought to you by Nienthal for Carrollton and West Holmes. You have the starters for the West Holmes Knights. Stumpy. Again, ben, Coach Ben Bell, again, enjoying a tall lineup, uh, starting with three seniors and two sophomores. Starting off, we got a six-foot senior, number one, Sam Spring, averaging 10.2 points a game, 2.3 rebounds and 1.6 assists. You got another six foot three inch senior, number two, Nate Fair, who's averaging 10.4 points a game, six rebounds. Senior again, it's another six footer, yeah. number four, Collier Klein, averaging 11.6 points, three assists, and three rebounds a game. And then you got two sophomores again, another six footer, number five, Lynn Klein, again, uh, for 2.2 uh, .2 points a game, three rebounds. And finally, a name I've been waiting to pronounce all day, <laughs> Manny Camacho. Just, that, that's just a cool name. Yes, it yeah, is. A six foot four inch sophomore, averaging 5.4 points and five rebounds a game. For the Carrollton Warriors, head coach by Mike Ackerman, number five, Lincoln Mallerney. He's averaging 18 points a game. He's a six foot senior. The 6'2 sophomore, Javen Johnson, number 11. He averages three and a half assists a game. Keegan Barkin, a six foot junior, averages five and a half points per game, whereas number 12. Number 15, Andrew Barong, a six foot junior, averages nine points and seven and a half rebounds. And Bryce Lonka, the 5'6 junior for the Carrollton Warriors, wearing number three. And we're underway. West Holmes in the away. Reds, Carrollton in the home whites. We're underway for game number four, Stumpy. Should be a good one. Two teams looking for their identity, looking to get a big win uh, as they march to kind of propel them into the second half of the year. Yeah, we're just starting to get in that midwinter grind. And again, a, a big win uh, today would really mean a lot. So, a little turnover on a the travel there. It was, it was a turnover by the West Holmes Knights on their of, first possession. A lot of contact there. Well, We'll see how that goes the rest of the game. Yeah, Nate Fair tried to get into the lane, and it didn't quite work out for him. Mallory has it on the left wing. He's got the headband. He's rocking the little headband there. Little, what do we looking, got going on there? Looking sharp here today. I'm telling you. Maybe well, it's for warmth. It, it could be. It could be. <laughs> it's a little chilly outside, isn't it? Mallory goes baseline. He's going to cross-court it into the corner, and we're going to have a foul on one of the trees for West Holmes. Manny... Man, yep, Manny Camacho with his first foul of the game. 7-13 to play, no score. Game number four, Lonka will inbound from his own baseline. He'll get it in and double team down there. We're going to get ball. a jump ball, yeah, yep. but it's going to stay with the Carrollton Warriors. we got to ask this official to move left or right. Yeah, he's yeah, he's, right he's kind of, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, excuse me, can you move, please? You're affecting the broadcast. Man, a lot of contact right in front of the official, but Carrollton keeps it. <laughs> you know, we're getting on this guy pretty hard early on, ain't we? <laughs> Mallory has it left wing, looking for the pick from Barong. Thought you were going to take your headset off there for a yeah, second. Yeah, no, I was about ready to throw it at him. I was about ready to jump. I was about ready to jump in uh, the scrum and take the ball away. You know, steal for the third team. <laughs> <laughs> like Nate Fair with his first foul for the West Holm Knights. So Andrew Barong going to head to the first Federal Community Bank foul line for the first trip for the Carrollton Warriors, and he knocks in shot number one. 
So Barong, a six-foot junior, again, 9.7 and a half rebounds. He's an 88% free throw shooter. And you can tell right away yeah. that uh, Carrollton's really, that's that's their game right now, and both possessions gone right through him. Yep. Little full court pressure here. Little zone pressure out of Carrollton. Good job by West Holmes to break that pressure. Here's Collier Klein, gets it into Lynn Klein. Nice Cousin Lynn Klein gets swatted away, and Mallerney coming the other way. He's going to pull the three, finds nothing but air into the hands of a West Holmes Knight. Wonka falls down behind the play. A lot kind of dribbling. Of crazy boy. here, yeah. A lot, a lot of dribbling What's here. Need to... And we're throwing out shirts. You got Nick McWilliams yeah. doing things, you know. Look, we got all night long Shannon Tell Thomas on the other side <laughs> throwing shirts out. We got these Claymont uh, midseason showcase shirts, and uh, they're pretty nice, man. Tell you what, Shannon, uh, ni nice little throw there. Uh, he's got a nice little uh, wing there throwing him up there. Well, there you go. <laughs> His uh, call your client heads to the line. He'll make the first one for the West Holmes Knights. Klein, a 54% free throw shooter. First points for the Knights. And second shot is good from the first Federal Community Bank foul line. So Bryce Lunk of the 5'6 junior will bring it across the timeline. Man-to-man -man defense out of West Holmes. Keegan Barkin has it on the right wing. I think we're going to have a foul on Lynn Klein. Well, Lynn, a little too hard. I thought that was good defense, actually, right there. Lynn Klein, a sophomore. I believe he led the West Holmes Knights in tackles on the football field this year as a sophomore. He was also a pretty good uh, wide receiver for the Knights. We know how good their receivers are out there. And a steal. First turnover for Carrollton. Here comes Collier Klein in the lane and a blocking foul. Good call. Had his feet set, just uh, again, did a nice job avoiding the block and uh, tried, to, tried to sell it a little too much. So checking in. That's gonna be Bryce's second foul. Wow, early on, That's don't want early. that. Everett Brooks checks in for the Carrollton Warriors. and Braylon Murphy. Braylon Murphy, a normal starter for the Carrollton Warriors, uh, a little dinged up, so they're trying to protect him a little bit early on. Again, like we talked earlier, this is a good one of those developmental games. You start trying things out, trying different combinations, and, and a good time to rest some players if you need to as well. Three-point shot by Nate Fair. Missed that one. Tied it two. And Mallory going to be charged with the travel there. Second, Carrollton turnover. We're knotted at two. 5.21 to play first quarter. A little low scoring through the first three minutes. Stumpy. Yeah, and unfortunately not any basket to this point. All are scoring at the free throw line right, right now. And yeah, no field goals. Kind of wonder if uh, West Holmes will try to use some of the height advantage they have here. They got all five guys out in the perimeter and see yeah. if we get some cutting through here and some Passes down low. Camacho's a big boy. I'm putting him on a low block and letting the kid work. But he's hanging out by that three-point line. So West Holmes swinging it around the perimeter. Call your Klein with a drive down the right side of the lane. He missed the shot. Scrum on the floor. And we're going to have ball. a jump ball. And it's going to stay with the West Holmes Knights. One of the things you really like to see how many bodies went on the floor right there to get the jump ball. So again, yeah. game really means a lot to these yep. kids and uh, a lot of a lot of skin left on the floor there. Which you absolutely well, like we said, this could be a, a springboard into the second half of the season. I mean, for either one of these teams. Yep, absolutely. So ball's going to be turned over by the West Holmes Knights. Both teams two turnovers here through the first half of the first quarter. Yeah, and Carrollton went in that little zone defense in there, try to negate some of that height. There Bottom for Mallory. Lincoln Mallory, a six foot senior, averages 18 a game, gets the first field goal of the game, right about the four minute mark or so. And it's five to two, Carrollton. 
You know, one thing these kids do, again, they shoot with so much confidence right now. And again, you need to do, there's going to be so many ups and downs during this game, this season. And again, great shot there. Here's Klein in the lane, gets it back out to Lynn Klein. Good ball movement out of West Holmes and good defense out of Carrollton. A little bit of a zone out of Carrollton. And a three-point shot is in. Sam Sprang from three. Both teams with a three-point <laughs> field goal and two foul shots. What's that? Anything you can do, I can do better? Is you know that, that the saying? game we're playing? Uh, it, could, it could very well be. <laughs> if that's the case, it's going to be a pretty good ball game. Three-point <laughs> shot found the bottom for Braylon Murphy. Murphy checked in off the bench. Normal starter, and he gets that one to go. A little dinged up, like we said earlier, and it's 8-5, to five, Carrollton in front. Again, zone that Carrollton's playing right now, forcing a lot of that outside, and again, got to hit the soft spots. Your boy Camacho had it underneath and threw it away to Lynn Klein. Wasn't a, wasn't a pretty pass by Camacho. <laughs> Say, Come on, put that bad boy up. I mean, it, so look, I understand his name's Manny, but if I'm his parents, I'm I'm a little disappointed <laughs> in his parents because I would have went with Hecker because we could have called him Macho, man. Come on. Macho Camacho. Uh, <laughs> we can that, still call him that because awesome. it's just a nickname, right? <laughs> Manny Macho Camacho. That's awesome. That's, that's the best last name. As Absolutely. A, a, as a stump, I can say that, too. <laughs> <laughs> so West Holmes trying to break this zone pressure of the Carrollton Warriors, they do. And Nate Fair had it taken away from behind. Fourth, West Holmes turnover. Carrollton Mack with the basketball. Here's Mallerney, top of the key. You know, West Holmes does a nice job breaking that press with the pass. Then as soon as they put it on the grounds when they start having yeah. the turnovers. Yeah, you just cannot turn the ball over. I think that's one of the things that has been a problem for Carrollton is West Holmes, I'm sorry for West Holmes, as Carrollton turned it over. Nice spin. Nate Fair spun Ugh. into the lane, but he couldn't hang just on good. to it. Nice spin move, just couldn't hold on to it. So a fifth West Holmes turnover. Checking in for the Carrollton Warriors. Barong back in. Been a lot of contact on both sides. Again, been consistent, which is you can ask for, but it looks like both teams are having a little bit of difficulty kind of dealing with that contact right now. So talking to head coach Mike Ackerman, and he said, telling you, the officials are probably going to have to blow their whistle a lot because both teams are going to play very physical basketball this afternoon. So, And he wasn't lying. First quarter has been very physical. Yeah, our sports director just walked by yeah. with food and didn't offer us yeah. any. I see how it's going to be this game. Yeah, Barron was swatted away by Nate Fair. He got the loose ball and went up and under and gives the Carrollton Warriors the 10-5 to lead. Tell you, even with the size advantage, Barron's been a nice beast inside that middle there dealing with that. And another steal and turnover for West Holmes. Here comes Mallerney to Barron. Back to Mallerney for three. Off the front of the rim and no good. Rebounded by Lynn Klein. Tell you, West Holmes did a great job boxing out there. Even the ball bounced on the ground there. That's a sign of a great team boxing out. Here's Sprang. Sprang going to travel down the right side of the lane. He lost the basketball, but it went out of bounds, I believe, off of Barong on the far side. You know, me and Shannon were talking earlier. There's advantages and disadvantages to sit in floor level when yes. you're calling a game. Sometimes you can't see everything <laughs> sitting at this level. Sometimes you get blocked by officials. My, my eyesight thinks us being really close, though. Nice steal and score by Braylon Murphy, who takes it coast to coast after the seventh West Holmes turnover, and it's 12 to 5. Back into that pressure for Carrollton, and they do force another turnover. Another turnover for Good West Holmes. Murphy's going to lay it in off the window. And it's 14 to 5, 30 seconds to play opening quarter. The good thing about sitting low level is you feel like you're a little bit more into the game. You know, feel like you want to reach out and grab a loose ball, <laughs> yell at an official, something, right? Three point shot on the way. It's good. Oh, and they, they called it, it off. The wire. It, hit, it hit the extension. <laughs> Tough break for uh. West Holmes there as they got the three to fall, but it was off the extension or the wire. 
tell you, like you talked pregame, uh, they, you know, sat Braden Murphy starting the game because of a, you know, a little injury right there. I, I don't think he liked sitting there. No, I don't think he did uh, either. I think it might have fired him up a little bit. <laughs> they were trying to, coach trying to protect him a little yeah. bit, but doesn't look like he needs protecting much. Mallory into pass. the lane and a nice pass to Barong off the window and scores. Carrollton dominant first quarter as we come to the end 16 to 5. The Warriors in front back on Big Z Sports right after this. High school, second quarter just underway, 16 to five, the Carrollton Warriors in front. And West Holmes gonna get the basketball after a missed shot down at that end. So again, Carrollton's press doing a nice job. West Holmes breaking it, but once they get into the front court, they're turning it over. Yeah, that's been the big difference. I said they break it really well, then start dribbling and end up losing it. Macho Camacho with the stick back. <laughs> There's our big man. Way to go. <laughs> we need to get Macho Camacho the player of the game here. You know what I mean? You have a nickname like that. Oh, nice. swatted away by Nate Fair. Coming the other way is Klein off nice. the window and scores. How about that, Stumpy? Again, and how do you turn it around? Again, great defensive end, great transition, and, uh, and the old-fashioned and one. So the swat at the other end, and they quickly push the ball up the basketball floor, does the West Holmes Knights. That Javen Johnson with his first foul. And Klein will miss the and one opportunity. 16 to nine, one minute gone by second quarter. Mallory brings it across the timeline. Swing it around. This is Luke Thomas. And three-point shot by Barong. Oh, no, they yep, called that two a two-pointer. Yep, two-point two shot yep. by Barong. Just must have had his toes really Yeah, I was going to say, line. just might have been inside the line there. 18-9, to nine-point nine basketball game. Definitely more active on the defensive end are the Carrollton Warriors compared to West Holmes. They're, they're forcing them to take those outside shots. Yeah, and this, another turnover. This zone's really bothering them right now, and you would think it'd help them get it into the big guys and get in those open areas, but it really hasn't to this point. Boy, it is a physical game. Yeah, and, and, and we talked about that, right? They said you're going to have to blow that whistle a lot because it's going to be a physical basketball game. And guess what, Stumpy? I don't have a 13 on my roster for uh, Carrollton, so... Coach Mike Ackerman never gave me a roster uh, <laughs> with a number 13. So, if you want to blame somebody, blame Coach. Yeah, yeah. We'll just call him number 13. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the line is Murphy, and the shot is good. So, three for three from the First Federal Community Bank foul line are the Carrollton Warriors. They lead by 10. 6.23 to play. 
first half. Second shot is good. So Carrollton definitely a good free throw shooting team. Murphy, Mallerney, Barong, all above 80%, all above 85% for that matter. And like you talked earlier, doesn't look like there's too much uh, scoring as far as number-wise on either team. You got both teams with three scores apiece right now. And like I'm sure both coaches like say we need some other guys stepping up here and uh, making some shots. So nice ball fake there by Nate Sprang, the 6'1 freshman in off the bench, number 24. Wearing red. Klein to Klein, a little Klein cousin two-man game out front. Here is Fair, baseline shot up no good, swatted out of bounds by Lynn Klein. Yeah, West Holmes doing a nice job moving the ball on the perimeter. Again, nothing's going inside right now. You got all five guys in there, kind of a half cut that yeah. goes in there. Those got to be a lot crisper. Find those open shots and take those uh, easy six-footers or get your in-and-out game like you talked about pregame. Right. Javen Johnson had it swatted away from him at that end. There's Barong. Shot off the rim, no good. Another rebound for the West Holmes Knights. Collier Klein has it, thought about the three-point shot. But you look at him right now, West Holmes again, all five guys hanging out the three-point line. Not yep. much movement in the, the interior at all of that zone. 100%. You know, I mean, look, Macho is a big boy. Use the size advantage, him and Nate Fair, and get them in the paint. Yep, stick him in the free throw lane and let yeah. him go. And he turned, almost turned it over. Good hustle. Camacho on the floor and a timeout. Head coach Ben Belden of the West Holmes Knights will take 30 seconds back after this on Big Z Sports. In the rolling hills of Holmes County, we tend to do things a bit differently. At Kime, we're in the business of uncommon experiences and we're here to care for your project like we care for our own. We believe that quality matters and want to help you get it right the first time because your project deserves it. So visit Kime Home Center, your source and destination for all things home, building, and woodworking. Kime, built on trust since 1911. Claymont High School, Chris Gale, Aaron Stump here with you. Game number four of the Claymont Mid-season classic. It's been fun so far. And again, a huge shout out to the First National Bank of Denison. Uh, we'll be given our First National Bank of Denison player of the game. A nice, beautiful plaque that those players are going to get. They don't get the t-shirt here. They get something a little more memorable to take home from a from a little classic tournament. Yeah, it's a like pretty this. slick deal right yeah. now. I mean, that's that's I, I like seeing the t-shirts around when we do those season, but that's that's a nice little change of pace right there. And uh, those kids all talk about it. I said they see it the, the yep. game prior, they end up looking over like, hey, that's oh, me next game. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> Let's go. Exactly. And again, a huge thank you to the First National Bank of Denison for providing those plaques and uh, you know, Dumont's for the T-shirts and all that good stuff. It's just, uh, it's been a great, uh, you know, day out here of basketball. And we still got this game and, and one more to go. Tell you, Claymont's really done a nice job hosting this as yeah. well again. Yeah. Uh, really appreciate all their, their staff that stepped up and made this happen. And another turnover by the West Holmes Knights. Barong had it, went off and... You know what? I'm not even going to count that as a turnover because <laughs> no, West Holmes gets it back. <laughs> and it it really didn't get much into – nobody really got possession of the basketball. So we'll just kind of – we'll call it a wash. Good hustle play on both sides. Yeah. Again, almost got the steal. And, uh, again, nice hustle play on both sides. Yeah, both teams fighting hard. And, uh, you know, both teams, you can tell they, they want to win this basketball game for sure. Another jump ball. Gonna stay down there. So we will keep it with the West Holmes Knights. 4-13 to play, 20 to 9. Carrollton in front. West Holmes trying to claw back in. Here is Klein. Right there. Yep. Klein oh. tried to take the drive and really good defense on the interior. Javen Johnson, the 6-2 sophomore there, really affected that shot. Really, it was almost triple teamed was Collier Klein when he got in there. Three-point shot on the way. No good. Johnson with the rebound. There's Camacho in there with the block. Yep, Camacho got the block. Sprang maybe helped him from the backside. 
And now into the front court, Nate Fair. Fair being guarded by Johnson. Here is Sprang. Over to Collier. Over to Collier. Camacho waiting in the corner. Nice cut there by Lynn Klein into the lane off the window nice. and scores. Nice in one opportunity for Lynn Klein, the sophomore. Only a 60% free throw shooter, but he's going to get the in one opportunity. Again, like you had talked about, though, you know, uh, head coach of the Claymont Mustangs, Gary Watkins, uh, you know, Justin Jackson, the AD out here, all the staff, all the volunteers. Uh, have done a really good job. Domino's Pizza of Yurksville gave us, you know, some food today. Uh, you know, so we appreciate that. It's been a good time. It's a lot of fun. Looking forward to continuing to build this year after year. Who knows? Maybe uh, next year we make it a two-day tournament and, uh, you know, get a lot more basketball. There in. we go. Hey, the weather outside's frightful, but man, it is fun in here. Yeah, why why wouldn't you want to come in here and just I mean, you, you know, you pay for one game and get to watch five. And if you're a basketball nut, you just want to come in here and I mean, you can sit in here and watch some good basketball all afternoon long and heck, nobody wants to go home and watch the Packers and the Cowboys anyway. <laughs> Everybody's waiting for that Detroit Lions and uh Rams game there tonight. You go. There you go. Yeah, nobody wants to watch the first game. Ooh, nice defense there by Klein as he swatted it away. Fourth Carrollton turnover. Three minutes to play, first half, 20 to 12. West Holmes trying to cut into this eight point Carrollton lead. Klein has it out front. They're at a place right now, again, a nice three pointer right now. And uh, again, you got the debt rule we'll save. So trying to. Uh, Ooh, they did call it on him. <clears throat> yeah. I'm surprised they didn't call the swinging elbow there. They could have called the swinging elbow off the top rope from Collier Klein yeah. if they wanted to. <laughs> Collier Miller, by the way, checked in for West Holmes, I believe, at the last Cush Financial Group timeout. That's Klein has it backcourt. Who was that foul on anyway? I think, was that on Barone? Yep. Yeah, yeah, it was yep. Barone. Uh, his Barone ended up being just his first. So with the basketball is Miller. Finds Camacho, and they call it a travel on him. Not, Ooh, I don't know about that one. I, I was just going to say, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not real sure about that one. He was dribbling the basketball, was he not? Yeah, yeah. Oof. Okay. C considering you get a Euro step, I, yeah. Was, I, was I mean, a small Euro step? I, I don't know. <laughs> no comment. We'll move on. 20 to 12. That was, uh, the bad thing is, that was the 10th West Holmes turnover in the first half. You wonder why they're down by eight. Barong for three. Shot off the back of the rim. No good. Rebounded by Klein. So call your Klein another rebound. He'll get it up to Sprang. Sprang goes baseline into the lane. Out to his brother. They'll swing it around to call your Klein. Keeps the dribble and it was fouled. Number 24, Everett Brooks with his first. So Brooks will pick up the foul. Checking back in is Nate Fair. Checking out is... Macho Camacho. The Carrollton's fourth foul of the second quarter. Once we go five fouls, it's two shots automatic now. Yeah, getting getting a little close to that mark, huh, Stump? 2.03 to play. It's been interesting how that's worked out uh, this summer. We've been to some high school games where been in the fourth quarter, that fifth foul, it's been a two shot at the end of the game instead of that one and one. So it's been interesting how that's worked out. It, it has because it's affected teams to try to get back into the game because they got a two shot foul and you don't get that one on one opportunity. Absolutely. You also see where it, it even causes teams more time to try and, you know, say they only get one foul through the first six minutes, and now all of a sudden you've got to start fouling, and it yep. takes forever to get that team to the foul line. It'd be interesting to see the high school stats statewide, how that's affected the game. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to see how many uh, how many ankles it's saved, too, because that's why they <laughs> say they did it. So nice into take. the lane and a nice take by Nate Fair. Nate Fair to the rack, the hoop, the harm. And he'll head to the line for the N1 opportunity to cut this one to five. Foul on 13. Yeah, foul's on number 13. <laughs> we don't know who he is. He's the Phantom Warrior. We'll call him the Phantom Warrior. Uh, and Fair's second sh or his N1 opportunity is good. So three for four at the 
first Federal Community Bank foul line are the West Holmes Knights. Maller needs a barong into the lane. He was triple teamed and fouled. 20 to 15. Carrollton jumped out quickly to a to a nice lead, and West Holmes has clawed back to within five. Like Sam spraying with his first. Well, they, Only they, the team second. They stopped turning it over. Yes. You know what I mean? There were so many turnovers in the first quarter. I think they had seven or eight in the first quarter. I think they've got two or three here in this quarter, but, uh, you know, ten total for the West Holmes Knights, and once they kind of chilled out a little bit, settled in, then they've been able to cut into this lead a little bit. Mallory uh, has it in the corner. You've seen a lot of penetration on the West yeah. Holmes side of it, too. Finally, right there. Right? Nate Fair, you know, that prime example right. of it, doing a nice job. Yeah, instead of living at the three-point line. And the rebound. Barong's going to knock it out of bounds. Now, from our angle, no. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. Right, I'm with you. <laughs> so West Holmes will inbound the basketball. 44 seconds to play. Tell you what. Still pressure. Five point. Yeah, I know. Oh. Lead at this. Oh, and Fair turned it over. Uh, One too many steps. Hurts. Yep, it does. One too many steps out of Nate Fair. You see... See some of these cheerleaders walking around here with blankets and everything else. <laughs> People sitting in the stands, they got blankets on. I think it's pretty comfy this, in here this right is now. Not, we got the nice earmuffs keeping us warm. Yeah, too, so. yeah. yeah, I'm not cold. I got shorts on, bro. <laughs> I'm just like the players, man. I don't, I don't need, I don't need pants. Bunch of sissies. <laughs> <laughs> so Javen Johnson has it. They give it off to Barong, top of the key. Over to Braylon Murphy. Trying to play for the final shot here. 20 seconds to play in the first half. Switch man to man for West Holmes, and they're going to get a foul. Probably a good idea because, really, still now only sitting at three team fouls. I tell you, Sam's second foul. Yeah, three team fouls. You're not. Yeah, I mean, uh, you still got two to give before you get them in, the, or one to give to, before you put them into the bonus here. Play, play aggressive, make the, make the officials call it. So Phantom 13 with the basketball. They'll hand it off to Mallerney. Mallerney at the elbow. Nice. The turnaround jumper is good. Two seconds. Klein going to try and get one up. And ooh, it did not go. That is the end of the first half. 22 to 15. The Carrollton Warriors in front of the West Holmes Knights as we've reached the Dak Vitamins and Minerals Halftime Show. When we come back, we'll total up the stats. We'll give them to you right after this on Big Z Sports. Hi, this is Gian McInturf. For the past 30 years, the residents in and around Tuscarawas County have made the call to the realtors and staff at McInturf Realty for buying and selling of residential and commercial properties. We truly live in a great community, and in all those communities, there's nothing better than high school basketball. For myself and all the agents and staff at McInturf Realty, we would like to wish all the area athletes good luck this season and make the call to McInturf Realty at 330-364-SOLD or find us online at McInturfRealty.net. TMK Valley Propane is embracing remote tank monitors. Are you tired of going outside to check your propane tank or forget to order your propane on time? TMK Valley Propane now provides reliable remote tank monitoring technology. Let TMK Valley Propane take the worry away, provide timely delivery, and never run out of propane again. Thank you for your trust in TMK Valley Propane. All the way with TMK, service with a personal touch. Altman is here for you, in your community, because you matter. We're proud to be the area's first and only independent health system. We are one team, joined together, and committed to one mission, to lead our community to improved health. And we've always been here, dedicated to providing you with the very best in care, wellness, education, insurance, and more. For your community and for your family, Altman is always here for you. Hi, I'm Zach Motice with the Tuscross Insurance Agency. For all your auto, home, farm, and business insurance, contact our team at the Tuscross Insurance Agency. 
or stop in and see us at one of our three locations in downtown New Philadelphia, Sugar Creek, or in Strasburg, providing excellent service to the Tuscross Valley since 1885. Everyone here at the Tuscross Insurance Agency would like to wish all area athletes and teams good luck this winter. Are you neglecting your building's fifth wall? Did you know something as simple as a clogged drain can lead to a destructive roof leak? Protect your business assets with WM Commercial Roofing's Umbrella Care Program. This program will provide you with regular maintenance surveys and repairs to extend the life of your roof. Invest in your business with our top quality materials, advanced techniques, and skilled craftsmanship. Are you ready for a reliable partnership? Visit our website, wmcommercialroofing.com, and follow us on Facebook and Instagram to learn more. Novellus Eurexville is the world leader in aluminum recycling, and they need you. They have immediate openings for general laborers, equipment operators, and various skilled trade positions. They'll start you at $22 per hour or higher. There are advancement opportunities, and Novellus offers industry-leading benefits. To apply or find out more, go to novellus.com slash careers and search Eurexville. That's novellus.com slash careers and search Eurexville. Novellus is an equal opportunity employer. This is RJ Jacobs from DAC Vitamins and Minerals. Did you know that DAC Vitamins and Minerals has more than 40 proven equine supplements that include daily multivitamins, joint digestion, reproduction and fertility, calming, and many other specialty products? DAC also carries a complete line of livestock products called DAC Show Contender. Feed DAC Vitamins and Minerals to get the competitive edge in the show pen. We've been feeding champions since 1983. Wood Electric has been trusted with all of your electrical needs for over 30 years. They are the place to call for residential, commercial, and industrial work. Wood Electric is available 24 hours a day and ready to help with any electrical problem, outage, or installation. Wood Electric, serving Tuscarawas County and beyond since 1988. Like Wood Electric on Facebook or find them online at woodelectric.net. First National Bank of Denison appreciates the hard work and dedication area athletes exhibit to be the best they can be for their team. We follow that same philosophy with our customers, working hard to build personal relationships and making our services convenient. The First National Bank of Denison's community involvement is important to us and we love supporting our local schools. The First National Bank of Denison with offices in Denison, Dover, Janate and Hutton, South Broadway and Shunbrun in New Philadelphia. We have our roots where others have their branches. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Welcome back to Claymont High School. Chris Kell, Aaron Stump here with you. Game number four of the Claymont Midseason Classic. New Philadelphia and Claymont on the floor shooting some, uh, just doing a little shoot around. You know it's always a big thing when you see the IBC commissioners here. Donnie Spinell over there in the is corner. It? Oh, there he is, yes. yes. He's over there with his, with his patent advisor in the corner, you know. <laughs> So it's good to see, good to see Spinny here. This is all right. Yeah, this has been a great tournament. Again, a huge shout out to all the Claymont staff, all the administration, all the volunteers and helpers that came out here today. Uh, you know, Gary Watkins, the head coach of the Mustangs, he's been running all over the place. He's been doing milk, <laughs> been doing pizza, been doing T-shirts. Uh, Justin Jackson's been announcing. He's been getting teams to locker rooms, parking buses. Uh, it has been, uh, you know, uh, a definitely a good thing out here, and hopefully things will continue to build with the Claymont Midseason Classic, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. This is my last game for the day. We'll turn it back over to Nick and uh, I believe Shannon, Shannon. for That's right. Claymont and New Philadelphia as the nightcap, but right now 22-15, to 15, Carrollton in front. When you look at the team stats, the Carrollton Warriors only four first-half turnovers. The West Holmes Knights with 11 and it has definitely killed them. Uh, free throws from the First Federal Community Bank foul line. Carrollton a perfect four of four at 100%. West Holmes at four of five at 80%. And uh, what do you got for individual stuff? I tell you what, like we talked about, Carrollton need more scores. Uh, they, they did a nice job with Brong the second quarter. 
but it still has eight at the half. Uh, right. Six of those come in the first quarter. Uh, Lincoln Malarney with five. Uh, he's got a three-pointer in the first quarter and a basket in the second quarter. And their lead scorer is Braylon Murphy uh, with nine. Again, didn't even start the game. Yeah, off the bench. Came off the bench. Like I said, had a nice little edge to him. And, uh, again, had a nice half with uh, nine points. For West Holmes, again, he's, he's seen it spread out a little bit, you know, especially that second quarter. You got Sam Spring with three, Nate Fair with three, Collier Klein with four, Lynn Klein with uh, three, and Manny Camacho uh, with a uh, single basket there in the second quarter. So if you're West Holmes, you won the second quarter, yep. and, and you're happy to see that. Uh, second quarter was a 10-6, to six, uh, again, second quarter for the West Holmes Knights. So they had it within five. You had the turnover there with about 40 yep. seconds left over, and then Carrollton comes down, scores the basket, and it goes back up to seven. So that's where we stand right now. And, uh, again, really either team can win this one still. Yeah, absolutely. It, this basketball game definitely still up in the air. West Holmes stops turning the ball over. Uh, 11 first-half turnovers. You have to clean that up and take care of the basketball in the second half. Our Needenthal and Company keys to the game uh, you know, for West Holmes, worry about us and not them. Well, the worrying about us is taking care of the basketball and stop turning it over. Um, you know, make somebody other than Mallory beat you. Well, they're doing that. The problem is Braylon Murphy's beating them. And well, again, they Barong, they did shut him down right. the second quarter. Yes. West Holmes, again, majority of those yep. turnovers came the first half. So the combination of those two, you close the gap. Um, absolutely, 100%. And uh, same thing with Carrollton, limit turnovers, they've done that. They step out and guard shooters from West Holmes, they've done that. Uh, they need to still find some scoring other than, uh, you know, Barong and Mallory. Well, they got it in Braylon Murphy. So they've kind of hit all the need and Dawn Company points, keys to the game. Uh, on the Carrollton side, West Holmes got to work on theirs now. So, again, that's going to wrap up our Jack Vitamins and Minerals halftime show. When myself and Aaron Stump return to Claymont High School, second half of game number four of the Claymont Midseason Classic, right after this on Big Z Sports. Is your vehicle banged up? Do you want fast, professional service to get you back on the road? This is Garrett Jacobs with AutoWorks Collision Center. We service cars, trucks, SUVs, and even semi-trucks and RVs. Whether you need auto glass replacement, paintless dent repair, assistance with warranty and insurance, or just a free estimate, AutoWorks has you covered. We even offer alignments for your heavy-duty vehicles like buses, motorhomes, and semis with our state-of-the-art Hunter Alignment System. Call 330-878-4223. Open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Let AutoWorks of Strasburg work for you. Cush Financial Group has been proudly serving the financial needs of local community members for over 35 years. The team at Cush Financial follows an industry-leading service model with the unique approach and fiduciary responsibilities associated with their board-certified financial planner. With over 75 years of combined experience, the advisors at Cush Financial Group are here to help you achieve your financial goals. Contact the office at 330-308-8700 or visit cushfinancial.com to schedule your free consultation today. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Independent Capital Company Incorporated, member FINRA, SIPC. Welcome back to Claim on High School. Ready for the second half between the West Holmes Knights and the Carrollton Warriors. Big Z Sports, Clax and Communications. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Again, a huge shout out, of course, to the Cush Financial Group, bringing us all of our timeouts, our courtside coaches interviews, brought to you by Kime, our first Federal Community Bank trips to the foul line. That was the Dak Vitamins and Minerals halftime show. And, of course, our presenting sponsors here this afternoon, First National Bank of Denison, WM Commercial Roofing, Novellus, Tuscarawas Insurance Agency, and Altman Hospital. Second half underway. Carrollton Warriors in the home whites, moving from right to left now. And we'll see if they can extend their lead or West Holmes can chip in. Phantom 13 with the basketball. Still don't know who he is. <laughs> Nobody told us. Barong with the save. save out there. Phantom 13 to the... Baseline and a three point shot by Maller, and he's no good. Rebounded by Nate Fair. So Fair will bring it up across the timeline. First, Give off to call your first line. two minutes of this third quarter are going to be huge for both teams right now. And uh, again, West Holmes doing a nice job on defense. Nice basket there. Absolutely. Call your Klein, the six foot senior, makes the jumper at the foul line. That cuts the lead to 22 17. Just what uh, they need from the West Holmes Knights. Now we'll see if they can. Sit down and play some defense here. Just quietly been hanging around right now. Nothing too flashy. And 
A little bit of contact in the lane. That was a good drive right there. Javen Johnson. It's going to be on Nate. Yep, Nate Fair is going to end up being his third. So that's actually a big foul right there. I think he had good defense just when he came down. Yeah. That's, that's when it got him. Yeah, and I, and I think Johnson, you know, I don't think the foul affected the shot, uh, you know, makes – that one from the first Federal Community Bank foul line. Five for five now are the Carrollton Warriors. And uh, I, I think Johnson got a little bit too far under the hoop and fair bailed him out a little bit with the foul. Second shot is good. High arcing free throw out of Javen Johnson, the 6'2 sophomore. His first two points of the game right there. He gets on the board. So another good press break there by the West Holmes Knights. Sprang has it to Klein. Klein looking to the high there post, Nate go. Fair had it stripped away. Good hands right there by Lincoln yep. Mallerney to strip it away. And that's exactly what West Holmes wanted. Absolutely. But a little bit better defense when it came to Mallerney there, stripping it away. Yep, Nate Fair with his fourth right there. And he's going to have to take a seat. Nate Sprang checks in now. The 6-1 freshman gave them some good minutes. To start things off, Nate Fair going to have to take a seat. The 6'3 senior definitely going to be at a disadvantage now for West Holmes as Macho Camacho almost had the steal. Barong on the baseline. He'll kick it out to Lonka. And the shot by the Carrollton Warriors was up and good by Bryce Lonka, his first two of the game. Did a great job using his body there. And uh, again, like you said, his first basket. Really close to a travel there from Lincoln or uh, from Lynn Klein. Sprang on the baseline, got the shot up, but I think we're going to have a foul on the floor first. Be on Andrew Barong, be his second. So we talked about, you know, the contact in the first half, and uh, you know the officials maybe having to turn it up just a little bit. They're starting to blow the whistle here early on. Ooh, didn't see that one either. No, I didn't either. Slim down there. <laughs> Klein with it. Good to spring. Ball, good hustle. On the floor. Good hustle good by Javen Johnson. And the other way is Lonka with the left hand and the score. So after the second West Holmes turnover, the Carrollton Warriors get a bucket by Bryce Lonka. And West Holmes back on the offensive end, trailing by nine, and they're going to have another turnover. Third turnover, back-to-back -back possessions. So uh, we talked about the turnover bug for the Knights. And, you know, 5.31 to play third quarter, so we're two and a half minutes gone. They've already got three turnovers. And that's what kind of got them in trouble the first quarter yep, again. They, they took care of that the second quarter. And, again, we're starting to see a little bit of that uh, turnover bug. Three-point shot by Mallory finds the bottom. Lincoln Mallerney, the senior, pushes the lead to 31-17. Timeout, Knights. We'll take a 30-second timeout. Back on Big Z Sports right after this. Do you hunt, fish, sow, or have a hobby that you'd like to share with someone? Hi, this is Noah Sug with Brig Brothers Big Sisters, and we are faced with our biggest commitment in matching 56 littles with bigs. We will match a little with you that shares the same interests and enjoys the same things, so you can do what you enjoy and change the life of a little at the same time. To learn more, we ask you call 339-6916 or visit bigs4kids.com slash volunteer. Thank you. Cush Financial Group has been proudly serving the financial needs of local community members for over 35 years. The team at Cush Financial follows an industry-leading service model with the unique approach and fiduciary responsibilities associated with their board-certified financial planner. With over 75 years of combined experience, the advisors at Cush Financial Group are here to help you achieve your financial goals. Contact the office at 330-308-8700 or visit cushfinancial.com to schedule your free consultation today. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Independent Capital Company Incorporated, member FINRA, SIPC. Welcome back to Claymont High School. 520 to play, third quarter, 31-17. Warriors in front of the West Holmes Knights. West Holmes after that Cush Financial Group timeout. Going to inbound the basketball in the backcourt. They'll get it in, and this is Sprang over to Klein. Klein will cross the timeline. 
Again, good time out by Ben Belton there in West Holmes. Again, Carrollton went on a 9-2 run here to start of the third quarter and need a way to slow it down a little bit. Phantom 13 picks up foul number two for him. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, if you're just joining us for this game, uh, we do not have a name on number 13. It never came on the roster. So we apologize for that to that young man, but we're just going to call him the Phantom. Camacho with it, top of the key. Good defense by Barang. And getting an elbow in the face was Phantom 13, and I don't think he's real happy about it. Klein has it. He'll go to Sprang. Said, so here we go again. A lot of dribbling, not going a lot of places, just not a lot right. of movement right now. Need to take that. Sam Sprang yeah. with it in the lane, and he traveled. Fourth turnover. Wasted a lot of time and really got nothing out of that. Nothing accomplished on that offensive trip for the West Holmes Knights. And uh, you can see the frustration of Ben Belden. And it's going to take a little bit of take a little bit of time it's it's going to be more than you know than the nine games that they've played so far to be able to turn this thing around but definitely uh not how coach belden's drawing things up as they get a foul at the other end yeah it's going to be on sam spray it'll end up being his third 31 17 4 16 to play third quarter you know, Carrington's done a nice job of just clogging that middle. And yeah. you don't have that sharp shooter from the outside for West Holmes to kind of bring them out of that right now. And until you do, they're just going to keep clogging that inside and forcing them to hit those long shots. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to shoot it for three, I, I'm not. Oh, that's a trip on 15, I think, right yep. there, Barang. Yep. yep. But, you know, like we talked about, I mean, look, we're we're not coaches. We're fans of the game. This game's easy. We're broadcasters, from here. right? It's easy from here, right? <laughs> so we're not trying to. We're just saying. I mean, uh, you know, you would think that West Holmes would like to work the ball to the high post, and then you can work from that high post and either get a cutter going to the baseline, a cutter on the other side of the lane, or you get a kick out for a three. And they're not doing any of those things. They're swinging the ball around the perimeter. They're not using the foul line. They're not using Camacho, who's standing, you know, six foot five. Hit the high post. And a rebound by Phantom 13. And you know, right you there's know, a prime example. Lynn Klein, again, yeah. nice penetration there. Great shot. Just couldn't put it down. Yeah, it, well, and it, and it was good. But, again, they didn't use Camacho. He was standing on both elbows, going back and forth on the foul line to both elbows, and they didn't use him. So. Got a foul on West Holmes, number four, Collier Klein. Looks like his first. Klein with six points. To go along with that foul. <laughs> there are already 14 fouls here. Yeah, I mean, so. yeah, we're like, up to, like you said, looks like they called it a little bit tighter this yep. half, and now we already have seven uh, team fouls uh, this yep. half. Eight. The 13, <laughs> 13, they'll do the old hook. Yeah, he did. He Phantom did. 13 just did the old hook. Phantom 13, we don't know who he is, but we're calling him the Phantom. And uh, <laughs> he uh, gave the old hook. Yeah, so, so the so the hook wasn't invisible. <laughs> he may be the phantom flash, but the hook was not as invisible when he picked up the offensive foul. That's actually his third. 31 17, 322 to play. Go. Both teams with four fouls. Collier Klein knocks one in from the top of the key. And he has nine now. 313 to play. Cuts the lead to 11. 31 20. Warriors in front. They break. The token pressure there. Mallory on the other side of the floor. And now we're going to get the 15 foul. And with three minutes to play in the third quarter, this could be a foul shooting uh, contest. The fouls on Lynn Klein end up being his second. So Mallory at the first Federal Community Bank foul line knocks that one in. Three for three here in the second half are the Carrollton Warriors. Tell you what, good shoot, free throw yeah. shoot game. Both seven teams, for seven yeah. for the game right now yeah. for Carrollton. Seven for seven from Carrollton and four or five for West Holmes. So, yeah, nice job by both teams. Points have been tough to come by, and the free throw line's been friendly to both of them. Yep, absolutely. Four for four now. 
Here is Klein. Good Call your take. Klein a good take, and he'll get the hoop and the harm. 31-22. Call your Klein looking to cut this lead to 10 for Carrollton. 2.52 to play. Both teams with five fouls, so whenever you hear another whistle, it's two shots. Two shots. Rest, rest of the, of the way. quarter. And, and this is the problem that you kind of run into. If you've got a crew who tightens things up in the second half, we're going to be here for a little while. Absolutely. Shot is off the back of the rim, no good. Nice offensive rebound by Macho Camacho in the stick back. There's the big man. There we go. 33-26 now. 2.42 to play. Or, no, I'm sorry, 33-24. Nine-point game. Almost a travel there by Javon <laughs> Johnson. Didn't that, got stuck in the air, didn't yeah, he? He, did he? He did, and I think his foot came down before the ball came out. Did a nice job getting rid of it. 225 to play. Murphy turned it over. Steal right there out of Coyer Miller. Miller will hand it off. Camacho gets it on the low block and scores. See what happens when you start to get the ball Here inside? Go. Here we go. 33-26, ball game starting to come back for the West Holmes Knights. Time out on the floor, back on Big Z Sports after this. The certified public accountants at Needenthal & Company believe in the value of relationships. Needenthal & Company has been in business for over 50 years in your community, helping individuals and businesses grow. Needenthal & Company can help manage and prepare your payroll, plan your estate, and prepare your business and personal income taxes. Stop in to the Needenthal facility on North Wooster Avenue in Dover and become a valued client today. Welcome back to Claymont High School. I see uh, one of the goats walking in down here in the door. You see that? Yeah, there we go. There we go. Maybe doing a little scouting because he's uh, <laughs> no, he's no. got the new Philadelphia no. Quakers back in uh, in February. Just here to enjoy some basketball. Okay. No, no. no. Hall, of, <laughs> Hall of Famer, Hall of Fame official, Hall of Fame coach, Bob Von Kennel in the house here at Claymont High School. Tell you, we started the quarter, a 9-2 run by Carrollton. Right now, West Holmes on a 9-2 run. Yep. And, and by the way, best crowd of the day so far for West Holmes and Carrollton here at this uh, Claymont Showcase. And, uh, you know, shout out to everybody who had to travel a little bit on a Sunday. You know, all the games had pretty decent crowds. This is just the better of the four so far. Yeah, again, nice facility here. Beautiful, and, uh, yeah. Really done it well today, and like you said, hopefully keep growing it uh, for years to come. Absolutely. Mallory hands off to Everett Brooks. Brooks into the lane, has it stolen away by Klein. Third Carrollton turnover. Bryce Lonk uh, with his foul. Looks like his third foul. Oh, you said there was a foul, so you know what that means. Yep. We're, and we're shooting two. We're, we're shooting two. The days of the one and one are gone. Adam Sawesky would be beside himself right now, <laughs> just so you know. It's the first shot is up and no good. It's only the second miss for West Holmes. Collier Klein, 54% free throw shooter, splits the pair. I'll tell you, Collier's having a nice third quarter here, his eighth yeah. point of the third quarter. Hey, he sits with 12 right now in yep. the lead is only six. Carrollton leads by six, Barong, cross-court pass to Phantom 13. Take a drive and shut off, good defense there by Klein. Mallerney has it at the foul line, hands off on the three-point line to Javen Johnson. 116 to play. Johnson with it on the right wing in front of head coach Mike Ackerman. And, all right. Oh, well, you know what that means. We're, shoot, <laughs> we're shooting free throws again. Lynn Klein with his third. Again, now, now they're end up. <laughs> right. Our sports director, Adam Sweski, just looked over at me. He knows what the fouls mean now. Shooting two rest of the way. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so the first one was good there by Mallerney. And Mallerney knocks both of them in. 
Good four for four from the line this game, his 12th point. Well, I mean, when you look at it, the Carrollton Warriors are perfect. 10 for 10 from the That's first Federal Community Bank foul line. That'll get you far. <laughs> That'll do good things. That's just... Moyer will bring it, or Miller, sorry, will bring it across the timeline, and he's going to get called with the dribble, dribble. That's the fifth turnover in quarter number three for the West Holmes Knights. 54.9 seconds to play. Yeah, another, another big turnover from yeah, West Holmes again. Just you start closing that gap and start having those turnovers. Yeah, Coyer Miller, the 5'10 senior, had the right idea, just hit it with both hands. You know what, props right there. Again, had the turnover down here, didn't hang yeah. his head, really went and played some good, yep. strong defense there. Great job there. Yep, absolutely. 41 seconds to play, third quarter. Carrollton with the basketball. Nice job by Collier Klein. Klein will get it away, get it back from Camacho. And a fourth, Carrollton turnover. They had four turnovers in the first half. They've got four in the third quarter. Klein to Miller, back to Klein. Klein into the lane. Camacho high post. Here's Sprang, baseline floater is good. Nice floater. Nice floater by the freshman, Nate Sprang. And he sprung into action. <laughs> Three-point <laughs> shot is no good. You've been waiting Here's all day. Klein. I know I've been waiting all day for that. He gets the oh. heave. Probably could have, if he would have taken another step, that one would have been good. <laughs> We've reached the end of the third quarter. Four is going in the air. 35-29, Carrollton in front. Back on Big Z Sports with the fourth quarter right after this. Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has just what you're looking for, so your athlete has the best gear for the sports they play. Dumont's has a large apparel selection and can handle your customized screen printing as well as embroidery for your team or business. For sporting goods and for all your apparel needs, Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has everything you want to play and look your best. PAC Drilling, a family-owned and operated company since 2005 in Bolivar, takes pride in being an economic oil and gas drilling company. PAC's objective is to contribute to American energy independence through profitable development, operation, and marketing of oil and natural gas wells. PAC also employs operating technicians to oversee each and every well drilled to maximize its productivity and longevity. Contact PAC Drilling at packdrilling.com. Welcome back to Claymont High School. Chris Gale, Aaron Stump back here with you. Fours in the air, fourth quarter underway, 35-29. Carrollton in front. West Holmes will start with the basketball. Important possession right here. If they can cut this down to a four, three-point game, uh, you know, I, I like West Holmes' chances of riding some of this momentum and cutting into this lead. We've been here a few times tonight, and again, just haven't been able to crack that six, seven-point lead yep. yet and uh, put a little pressure on Carrollton. We'll see what happens. You just can't turn the basketball over. You just can't do it. Now, one bright spot for Carrollton. Bottom oh, call your coin. Nice shot. Three-point game. Now some pressure out of West Holmes. Javen Johnson still has not got it real close for Mallory there. Three-point shot by Murphy. Off the rim, no good. And a rebound by Sprang. Sam Sprang sprung up and got that rebound. Man, <laughs> you've been waiting all day to get it. Well, of course you? I have. I, I, you know, it is what yeah. it is. That puts uh, four on Phantom 13 right Phantom there. 13 with four fouls as he heads to the bench. And the West Holmes Knights can cut this lead to one or tie it on this possession. Lynn Klein with it to Collier Klein. Great pass. To Sprang. Nate Sprang, the freshman, lost it on the baseline. It's okay. It'll go out of bounds. And it'll stay with West Holmes. Yeah, it's okay. You're right. 100% right move. Yep. The right move. Go up strong. 
They'll give it to Camacho. Over to Lynn Klein. Back to Spring. Into his brother Sam. So call your Klein with it. Camacho. Oh, and he threw it away. <clears throat> so turnover West Holmes. They're sixth here in the second half. 35 32. 6.41 to play. Carrollton basketball. Lonka with the basketball. He'll give it over to Mallory. Gets it back. Full court pressure by the West Holmes Knights. Mallory. And he threw it away. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's actually been pretty funny watching these coaches. You had Coach Bill did last possession. Like, oh, and now you got Coach Hawker. Be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, both, uh, both coaches <laughs> pulling their hair out over there. Living and died with each possession. <laughs> You know, I, I told them before the game, if they continue to coach basketball, they're going to look like me, and I ain't got much up there, bro. So, you know, they didn't believe me, I don't think. Just a one-possession basketball game right now. Lynn Klein going to take this one out. I think they got some moisture on the floor over there. Might have spilt a drink. Oh, is that what happened? We have a, a party foul over there. Thank you. What right. the Our sports director is going to get out and find out what's going on. I bet uh, you if he laid down, he could sop that all up with that shirt he's got on. Uh, so West Holmes uh, with the basketball. Oh, and he threw it away. Brutal. Another turnover, West Holmes. Mallory, coast to coast. The steal and the score, 37-32, Carrollton. West Holmes back with the basketball. Sam Sprang right down Broadway, and he's going to pick up the foul. That's what you got to do. Very aggressive offense for West Holmes. That's what led them to get back into this ball game. You got to continue with the aggression. Yeah, great job there. And like you said, force them to foul you, and they've done a nice job from the free throw line. So that's Barong's fourth foul. And the shot is up and good by Sam Sprang, a 74% free throw shooter. So you Final. got a little over six minutes left, and they're – Top score. We are in Hawaii, right? No, I, we're, I in Ohio. So. we're in Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got going on down there? Uh, I don't even know. Shannon Thomas, it's weird uh, around here. You got people wearing hula skirts uh, and stuff. That's funny. <clears throat> All right. Carrollton Mack with the basketball. 37-34. Tell you, Javon, getting right in that corner at half court. Not a good time. Ackerman calling a good timeout. Yep, good timeout. 37-34 back on Big Z Sports right after this. The Tuscarawas County Dairy Farmers want you to know that low-fat chocolate milk is a great choice for student athletes and hard workers. It provides the nutrition needed after practices, games, or a hard day at work. And it tastes great. Low-fat chocolate milk is packed with carbohydrates for energy, proteins to repair muscles, fluids to rehydrate, plus vitamins and minerals to help build strong bones and bodies. It's the official beverage of the Ohio High School Athletic Association. Tuscarawas County Dairy Farmers. Farms. Family. Food. This is Carly Mills. At First Federal Community Bank, our mission is to empower the financial well-being of our community one person at a time. Through integrity and quality, we earn the trust of our customers and exceed their expectations. First Federal Community Bank, investing in our community since 1898. Serving your banking needs in Dover, New Philadelphia, Eurexville, Sugar Creek, Berlin, and Mount Hope. First Federal Community Bank, member FDIC. Welcome back to Claymont High School as I stare at Nick McWilliams instead of a basketball floor. Hey, I hear that uh, the Dallas Cowboys are getting what reamed <laughs> right now. I'm not broken up about it whatsoever. <laughs> Look at Nick crying over yeah. there right now. He's, he's really I mean, my about NFL it. weekend couldn't have went better unless, you know, I mean, I wish the Chiefs would have got beat last night or the Chefs, but that didn't work out. But I, two I, of the three ain't bad. I didn't see the game. I wasn't uh, subscribing. Well, I wasn't Peacock. either. I'm just saying. It's, <laughs> yeah, I'm not subscribing $29 for one game, let alone a, a game shot. that I don't even like. <laughs> <laughs> so the basket at that end was Mallory. He's got 17 now. Big three-pointer for Carrollton right there. 40 to 34, back up to a six-point game. Sprang has it. He's going to go to Klein. Klein elbow off the rim, no good. Sprang with the rebound. The freshman up with it, and he lost it. And almost a steal over there. Good hustle by Klein. 
Wonka will bring it across the timeline. That's the big thing with these kids. Again, Sprang in a great position, a great rebound, only a freshman, and he's going to grow and get stronger. Yep. And again, another couple years, he grabs that ball and puts it back yep. up. Exactly. How about a five seconds? Nope. Yeah, could be. Mallory into the corner to Murphy. Swinging back, Lonka, top of the key. Mallory has it right over in front of the bench, double team. Gets it into Cooper Hahn, who checked in at the Cush Financial Group timeout. Three point shot, no good. Rebounded by Nate Fair. Tell you, nice, nice in and out game by Carrollton right there. Yeah. Unfortunately, just missed it. And, and again, good execution by the Warriors. 4.23 to play in regulation. Sprang has it. He'll go to Collier Klein on the right wing. Klein, switch man, poked away by Lonka, and he's going to get called with the reach. Good call by the official there. He just yeah, it was. poked it away and caught more of the arm than he did the basketball. It's going to be Bryce's fourth foul. Again, like you talked the first half, we didn't have anybody in foul Nothing. trouble. Now, now uh, everybody is. Now it seems <laughs> like. So Sam Sprang with it, top of the key. It'll give it off to call your client. Klein trying to drive baseline. Nice Shot move. up off the rim, no good. And rebounded by Johnson. Great, good take there and a good strong rebound by Johnson for Carrollton as well. Carrollton in no hurry, 3.48 to play, six point ball game. Mallory, just kind of hanging out with it a little bit. He's got the sweatband rocking. You know what he looks like? Oh no. <laughs> so yeah, oh no. That's, oh, no. I love it when you say that. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of the guy's name right now. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Mark not... Mark Knopfer. You know who that is? No. Lead singer at Dire Straits. <laughs> That's exactly what he looks like. No. As he gets the, the drive there. Look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull yeah. up a picture of Mark Knopfer, and you're going to be like, oh, yeah, that's him. Wow, you got to be over 40 to even know who that is. Well, right. You know who it is, don't you? <laughs> I do know okay. who that is. Tell you, Lynn Klein with his fourth foul. Lynn Klein, fourth foul. Carrollton basketball. <laughs> 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 it, the hair would have to be a little longer, <laughs> right? Uh, but you, you went old school back there. That's I did. The guy I was impressed. Good turnover. Good steal. Lynn in. Klein with the steal and the score. Carrollton, their sixth turnover of the half, their tenth of the basketball game. Good, Lynn's uh, first points of the second half. Again, gets him to within four here with pressure to go. Pressure from uh, West Holmes, 2.34 to play, 2.33 to play. Murphy has it, now Mallory with it, top of the key. And a foul by Lynn Klein, and that's gonna be it for that's him, gonna right? That's gonna be his fifth. Look, it's even better when you get the <laughs> white headband. Hey. <laughs> So it's even better when you see it with the white headband. Uh, oh, looks like we're going to get a timeout, West Holmes. So timeout, Ben Belden. We'll take a 30-second timeout back on Big Z Sports after this. Jeff Wallach LLC is a family-owned and operated company proudly serving greater Northeast Ohio and surrounding communities for over 25 years. We specialize in vinyl siding, replacement windows and doors, gutters, downspouts, and much more. We provide quality service regardless of the size or scope of the project. Our crews are reliable, respectful, and mindful of a safe work environment. Jeff Wallach LLC is certified by the Better Business Bureau. Call today and discover how we can assist you in making your vision a reality. Whatever you say. <laughs> Welcome back <laughs> to Claymont High School. Four point basketball game. 40 to 36, 227 to play. I tell you what, this will be interesting. You got the falls again. You got three against Carrollton, two against West Holmes. Carrollton still yet to miss from the free throw line. Uh, could be an interesting uh, game down, there, down the uh, pipe here. So I got a little bit of trivia. 
you know, my, my older brother, Bob Glasgow, who was the official here the other night, sent me some uh, interesting trivia. Said Macho Camacho's mom is Erica Bevington Camacho. She was a heck of a basketball player, won a Schleybaugh's first state championship team. Really? See, you just learn things, and, and we know people are watching. Guys, so that's guys. always a good thing, too. 40 to 36, nice and a steal for Nate Fair. Fair going to get the harm. Wow, he was hammered at the other end by the Phantom 13. And he is out with his fifth foul. So the Phantom going to take a seat. I tell you what, good foul though. I mean, he got it was. A I mean, he, game, two minutes left. To get he didn't it let him get it. Yep. He didn't let him get it, get the basket, did he? Good, good. Make him earn foul it. And nice job. West Holmes, three for four here in the second half from the First Federal Community Bank foul line. Nate Fair trying to push the lead to five, or I'm sorry, cut the lead to three and doesn't do it. 2-10 to play, 40 to 36, Carrollton by four. And now it's a one score game. So Nate Fair cuts the lead to three, one possession ball game. This has turned out to be a good one. They're a great one. These are the games you want as a coach too, because again, you've got to have this experience in tight games coming in. How do you deal with it? Well, we talked about both teams looking for identities, looking for a boost into the second half of the season. You play a tight game. This is going to make both teams better, and the winner tonight may use that use that to propel them into the second half Absolutely. of the year. One forty-four to play. Going to make West Holmes pressure the basketball. In no hurry are the Warriors. One point basketball game, Lonka with it right in front of head coach, Mike Ackerman. Lonka back with it, being guarded by Collier Klein. They'll hand off to Mallerny, Mallerny's foul. Good job by Collier Klein there. Gonna Good. pick up the foul. His second foul, he's not in trouble at all. And again, I think that's what, four to four, yeah, for each team. So everything after this will be uh, two shots. And again, this is what you talked about. This yeah. is where I missed the one and one. Yep, 100%. <laughs> right now. Because it, it's going to hurt West Holmes more than more than anything. As Mallerny skies <laughs> for the basket. 42-37, Mallerny's got 19. Did a great job using his body to shield the defender there. Ooh, and I don't know. Old Macho Camacho might have pushed <laughs> Lonka out of bounds there. Might have been a tackle first and 10 Carrollton. Nonetheless, the Knights going to stay with the basketball. <laughs> oh, and he threw it Bad into the backcourt. Could have bad consequences, and he missed it at the other end, but he made contact with the with the with the basket, that should absolutely be basket interference. He slapped the backboard. Should absolutely no, no, be basket interference. Slap the backboard now. No, I think you can slap the backboard. I think you can slap the backboard, but you got to make contact with the ball, do you not? Mm. I thought that you could slap the ball off the backboard, but you just can't go up and whack the backboard. Apparently, you can. <laughs> <laughs> well, Stumpy, I, 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 <clears throat> you know what? Something we now we got homework now. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I gotta figure maybe this out. For Bob, maybe maybe Bob will text me back. Yep. Thanks. All right. At the foul line, Mallerny will knock in the first one. Again, this is where, like we said, you know, not having the one and one, even though he made the first one. If he would have missed that, that definitely hurts West Holmes as he leaves the second one short, but it rolls in with the shooter's touch. Still perfect from the foul line are the Carrollton Warriors 13 of 13 here this afternoon. You wonder why they're leading 44 to 37. Couple that with the turnovers of West Holmes. Camacho had it underneath and lost it. We're gonna have a foul and Camacho gonna head to the line. I'll tell you, Bryce just fouled out. So Bryce Lonka, the 5'6", junior, will have a seat for the rest of this one. They'll put Braylon Murphy back in for Carrollton after this first shot from Manny Camacho. 
Camacho's first shot is up and good. His first point of the fourth quarter, fifth of the half. Only a 46% free throw shooter. That one looked good. I say he looks smooth. <clears throat> yeah, he does. Yeah. Looks comfortable there. Second shot, perfect. Yeah. I'll tell you what, give a tip to the cap to both teams. They're shooting exceptional from the foul line. Absolutely. We got a timeout on the floor. 30-second timeout, five-point game for Carrollton. 48 ticks on the clock. Back on Big Z Sports right after this. In the rolling hills of Holmes County, we tend to do things a bit differently. At Kime, we're in the business of uncommon experiences, and we're here to care for your project like we care for our own. We believe that quality matters and want to help you get it right the first time because your project deserves it. So visit Kime Home Center, your source and destination for all things home, building, and woodworking. Kime, built on trust since 1911. Welcome back to Claymont High School. 48 seconds on the clock. 44-39, Carrollton in front. It's been a good ball game. Carrollton jumped out early. West Holmes has made several runs. Carrollton's popped it back up to double digits, and then West Holmes would come clawing back. Again, one of the things they've done is their free throws. Four for four the first yeah. half, and two, eight for eight the second yeah. half. I mean, yeah. they're 12 for 12 for the game. There's yeah. the difference. And, and West Holmes was four or five in the first half, and they are six for eight in the second half. So both teams shooting exceptional from the foul line as we get a foul in the backcourt here. The Kyer, or Kyer Miller, his first foul. And, of course, we're shooting two. Of and again, course. if you're West Holmes, you're going to extend this game as long as you can. Absolutely. But uh, if history uh, prevails here. Yeah, it's going to be tough if you're in, you make your foul shots. And 14 of 14 are the Carrollton Warriors. And Lincoln himself, 7 for 7 yeah. right now. Sitting with 22 points and 23. 20 for 20. No, I'm sorry, 19 and 19 in the second half. Or, I mean, in the ball game from the foul line for Carrollton. We got a timeout or a foul? Looks Not like we've got a timeout. Sure how you call a timeout there, but okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> 46-39, 37.9 seconds left. We'll keep it right here. And again, 19-19 so, uh, and 19 from the foul line for Carrollton. 10-13 right now for West Holmes. And, uh, you know, when you look at the difference on the scoreboard of seven points, <laughs> a couple missed three throws either way, and, and this is a different story. I said you're kind of impressed with Carrollton, too. Again, that lead got yeah. down several times, seven, six, five, got down to three at one yep. point. And they just kind of stuck to their game, and, you know, now we're back to a seven-point game. And they got the three, but it just never seemed close. Yeah, and I'm with it's, you. It's kind of been a strange game of sorts uh, yeah. to this point. But, again, uh, props to Carrollton Warriors hitting their free throws. Yeah, and, and props to the West Holmes Knights. That team never gave up either. They kept battling back, kept battling back. And, uh, you know, one of those things where they cut it to three and then it would be back up to nine. Yep. And then they'd cut it to three again. And they just kept, you know, springing into action. If it <laughs> If West Holmes can cut down the turnovers, they'd be a lot. Yes. For, they, they'd be a lot further ahead of themselves right now. Call your client for three, and I think uh, they're going to get. He signaled the over and back, but there is no over the back foul. I'm gonna they're going to call the push. Everett Brooks on his second. Not sure what they called. Yeah. I mean, I would have called over and back or over <laughs> the back, but that's not a call. <laughs> Uh, Nate Sprang makes the first one. He's actually a 100% free throw shooter. <laughs> I kid you not, he is, 100%. Oh, I say he's one for one. Yeah, he is. No, not <laughs> not in the game. I mean on the season. And he missed one. I put the kibosh on him. Uh, we just kiboshed him. I, Dang, I hate doing that. I, I apologize, Nate. That is all Sorry, Chris's Nate. fault right It there. is 100%. That's... I'm going to get a letter now from uh, his parents. <laughs> Jeez, Al Pete's. 46-40. Put the kibosh on the freshman there. Nate's uh, Nate's got a good future, though. He's, yeah, he does. He's got a good uh, yep. basketball body. Just got to strengthen it up a little bit, which will yep. happen here the next year or two. And, yeah. And, uh, again, you'll hear his name uh, here for a while. 
It's great watching these freshmen play. Yeah, it is, and, and getting a lot of quality minutes as missing the first free free throw of the game from the first Federal Community Bank foul line. Just jinx oh, the Warriors. Warriors. Yeah. I'm just we're just throwing kamashes <laughs> everywhere, dude. <laughs> and he missed the second one. Camacho with the rebound. West Holmes got to go, trailing by six. Collier climbing into the front court to the elbow. The turnaround jumper is no good. Camacho, he grabbed that with one hand and put it back up with one hand and got the foul. Wow. Did the old shield with the right yeah. arm. That was well done. That was well done right there. It was well done by the Macho Camacho. What I want to know is, is... What, what size hands does that kid have? Because he, he almost palmed that one. What are we going to call him Minute Bowl or something? She's a Pete's as he makes that one at the line. So 12 of 16 are the West Holmes Knights. The Carrollton Warriors are 19 of 21. That's it. Not, not bad shooting by either team. The free throw line. Again, job. turnovers, yeah. the big difference today. Yep. 100%. As Camacho makes both at the first Federal Community Bank foul line. 13.7 seconds left. Four-point game. Going to need to foul, and they do. So heading to the line for Carrollton, the 6-1 junior Everett Brooks. Collier, that'll be his fourth foul. So Brooks's first shot is good. There's his first points of the game. I mean, the story in this game, as long as you don't put Johnson at the foul line, you're going to make him. <laughs> <laughs> they need to foul number 11. <laughs> Second shot is good. That poor guy. I got a pick on the kid. It's <laughs> all right. He, he uh, messed up the good streak for the Warriors. <laughs> Collier's shot no good. Fair is going to make the follow, but that's going to do it. 48-44 is the final. Wow. 48-44, your final of this one. And uh, Stumpy, looking through things, I, I think you uh, you have to call our first National Bank of Denison Player of the game, six-foot senior, Lincoln Mallerney. Well, one of your keys to the game for West Holmes was to stop Andrew Barong, and, yep. and they did the second half. Right. And then you had Lincoln step up big time and uh, really do some great things for the Carrollton Warriors. Again, uh, great game by him, very well deserved. Well, you know what? You're done for the day. I'm done. And so am I. It's time to go watch some football for us as we'll turn it back over to Nick McWilliams here. And Lincoln, uh, what was Lincoln's final stats, brother? Lincoln ended up, what, f only five points the uh, first half. And then right. eight for eight at the free throw line, uh, 14, 16, eight. Ended up with 23 points. 23 Again, 18 points. the second half. Great, great second half. Wow, as the Carrollton Warriors improve to 3-10 and 10 on the season, the West Holmes Knights drop to 1-9. and nine. Again, thank you for joining us from Claymont High School for game number four of the midseason classic. The Carrollton Warriors improved to 3-10 and 10 with a 44-40 win over the West Holmes Knights as they drop to 1-9. and nine. Again, the first National Bank of Denison player of the game, six-foot senior Lincoln Mallerney with 23 points for the Carrollton Warriors. I am Chris Kale saying so long for me till Wednesday. Stumpy, I will see you down the road as well. Coming up next, the final game of the Claymont Midseason Classic. Nick McWilliams and Shannon Thomas will bring you the Claymont Mustangs and the new Philadelphia Quakers coverage on our YouTube live stream brought to you by the Claxon Communications right after this on Big Z Sports.
Welcome in to the final contest of the Claymont Mid-Season Showcase. It pits New Philadelphia taking on Claymont, the Quakers versus the Mustangs as it caps off what's been a great day of high school basketball in Z country. Big Z Sports back with the final broadcast. It'll be Nick and Shannon taking you along for the ride as we expect some fireworks here as it's the IVC versus the OCC, Shannon. And more importantly, it's Tuscarawas County versus Tuscarawas County, two of the bigger schools in the county is New Philly. Travel down here to Claymont, who is hosting the showcase on their home court today. So the Mustangs versus the Quakers and our night, what do you call it, nightcap. Our nightcap, yeah. Yeah, this is a, a matchup that, you know, could happen more often, but it actually doesn't, believe it or not. Well, it used to for years when mm -hmm. both teams were in the ECOL, but the ECOL eventually went, went away and Claymont went to a smaller school because of a lot of numbers, you know, dropping and Quakers traveled around to a couple different leagues and now they're at the OCC. Well, this is a matchup that I'm just going to guess, depending on how tonight goes, we might see more often in the regular season, which you actually might hear a little bit more about that from New Philadelphia head coach Zach Ross upcoming. Speaking of Coach Ross, that's who we're going to head to first as we'll go to our coach interviews brought to you by Kime. And a big thank you once again to all of our presenting sponsors for today's broadcast. And additionally, a big thank you as well going out now as well to First National Bank of Denison, who have been integral in this broadcast for today as Aaron Stump's trying to leave the building and also tear everything down on his way out. Again, we will go ahead and take our first break, and when we come back, we'll hear from New Philadelphia head coach Zach Ross. I'm coming on your electric pregame show. Altman is here for you, in your community, because you matter. We're proud to be the area's first and only independent health system. We are one team, joined together, and committed to one mission, to lead our community to improved health. And we've always been here, dedicated to providing you with the very best in care, wellness, education, insurance, and more. For your community and for your family, Altman is always here for you. Hi, I'm Zach Moutice with the Tuscross Insurance Agency. For all your auto, home, farm, and business insurance, contact our team at the Tuscross Insurance Agency. Or stop in and see us at one of our three locations in downtown New Philadelphia, Sugar Creek, or in Strasburg, providing excellent service to the Tuscross Valley since 1885. Everyone here at the Tuscross Insurance Agency would like to wish all area athletes and teams good luck this winter. Welcome back into the Wood Electric pregame show as we go courtside with the coach for our final matchup of the night. Our segment along the sideline brought to you by Kime. It's head coach for the new Philadelphia Quakers in Zach Ross. And coach, you know, looking at the season thus far, as we just talked about, seven and four, you come in here on a Sunday matchup, which is a little bit odd, but at least uh, the normal tip time, right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, obviously, it's a unique thing, but it's good for us. Uh, kind of puts us in a uh, adverse situation, which is always going to help you later on down the road trying to figure out things in different ways regardless of when you're playing and where you're playing. Um, and that's why I said it's a huge culture game for us tonight, just kind of see where we're at uh, with our maturity and our ability to buy into who we are. Now speaking of that maturity, uh, only three seniors on this squad for you guys, so as opposed to some years past for Quaker basketball, a little bit younger. So has there been some kind of those growing pains this season thus far? Yeah, for sure. We've had a lot of different lineups. Uh, I think right now we're trying to, fi uh, we finally figured out kind of our rotation, how we want to sub, who needs to be in there. Um, and I think as you get to January, that's kind of what you're doing and w what was to be expected whenever you lose uh, three really important seniors that were leaders. And now even these three seniors are in totally different roles uh, this year. So just trying to figure out that and how we can best be uh, successful as a team offensively and defensively. Now you guys come into uh, Eurexville and uh, Claymont's home turf as they've been holding this entire showcase. Uh, a matchup that we could see maybe more often, but you know it's not one that it's one that ties in with this showcase. Wherever it's kind of matchups you might not necessarily see uh, that often. So whenever you look at Claymont, you know they sit at six and six, and they've been kind of the opposite ends of the spectrum at some times this year. So what do you see out of the Mustangs that you guys are looking to work against? Yeah, for sure they got a lot of good guards. Uh, they shoot it really well. Um, they're they're lack of size uh, could go either way really it's an advantage for them because how are we going to match up but it should go both ways of uh, how are they going to guard us um, yeah it's a great matchup only it's nice to only take a 15 minute trip as compared to our league uh, something I would like to continue I I'm sure 
Uh, they put us at the nightcap for a reason. Uh, they wanted to play us, so we're, we're looking forward to the challenge. I'm sure they're going to be uh, bringing it tonight, and they're really excited for the matchup. And finally for you here, uh, whenever we come to this point of the year, kind of past that midway point, you talk about a showcase kind of setting uh, when you're playing this next competition. Um, what is it that you guys are looking to maybe improve upon or work with uh, that you can use as a jumping off point for the rest of the year? Yeah, uh, as, as we talked about, we, can, we got our rotations kind of set, who we're going to be playing and different types of the game, and just continue to improve upon that. And you're just trying to find a way to put together a full 32 minutes uh, of a game, which we have yet to do this year. We're, we're getting better and we're having some better minutes. Uh, but at, at this point, I think just improving upon what our identity is, which all of our guys know, and we, we communicate daily uh, within our culture time. So I think as long as we just be ourselves um, and just try to read the best version of yourself each and every day, I think that's kind of the key moving forward and just trying to find that uh, the cliche, just 1% better each and every day. Well, thank you for your time, Coach, and good luck to the Quakers. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Head coach Zach Ross for the new Philadelphia Quakers. Our trips down along the sideline with the coach brought to you by Kime. Stick around. We're going to wrap up your Wood Electric pregame show after you hear from head coach Gary Watkins from Claymont. We're back after this. In the rolling hills of Holmes County, we tend to do things a bit differently. At Kime, we're in the business of uncommon experiences, and we're here to care for your project like we care for our own. We believe that quality matters and want to help you get it right the first time because your project deserves it. So visit Kime Home Center, your source and destination for all things home, building, and woodworking. Kime, built on trust since 1911. Are you neglecting your building's fifth wall? Did you know something as simple as a clogged drain can lead to a destructive roof leak? Protect your business assets with WM Commercial Roofing's Umbrella Care Program. This program will provide you with regular maintenance surveys and repairs to extend the life of your roof. Invest in your business with our top quality materials, advanced techniques, and skilled craftsmanship. Are you ready for a reliable partnership? Visit our website, wmcommercialroofing.com, and follow us on Facebook and Instagram to learn more. Welcome back into the final Wood Electric pregame show of this Claymont Midseason Showcase as we are set to feature the new Philadelphia Quakers taking on the Claymont Mustangs, and we'll go down along the sideline with the coach, brought to you by Kime, and it's head coach Gary Watkins for the Claymont Mustangs. And coach, you know, it's been a long day here throughout the day for you and for the staff, but we get to this final game and you get to uh, be out there on the sideline with your team. I'm sure that kind of makes it worth it, right? <laughs> well, it's always nice being in the gym, and thank you guys for covering uh, the first annual showcase, and hopefully we can get you back next year in some of the teams. So I think it's been a fun day. Now, looking at uh, your team, 6-6 six and six now is the mark. As we've talked about before, there's been ups, there's been downs. Well, you guys are coming into this matchup with New Philly uh, off of a big win against Strasburg. What was working right for you guys in that one? Well, we talked to the guys, and we're always looking for about 10 goals, and uh, we achieved seven or eight of those, and that's always a nice thing. We're not greedy. We'll take five, five or six, and you can be in some games. But we did seven or eight of them, so that usually results in a, in a good game and hopefully a W. Now, some of the matchups that we've seen throughout the day, <clears throat> pardon me, in this showcase, uh, some of the matchups you might not expect to normally happen. New Philadelphia and Claymont's one that we could probably see quite a bit, you know. Uh, what do you see out of the Quakers, and what do you expect whenever it comes to taking them on? Well, we tried to keep the showcase of some local teams we couldn't on the first year, but we wanted to get, and I like playing county teams and, and close teams. So we, we got Philly we got Philly on here, um, and... Um, we, we scout them. They got, a, they got a really nice team. They've had a nice team in the past, and I think this one matches up with what, what they have had before. we got someone looking for pizza. Uh, and looking at for you guys, as whenever it's on your home court, you know, this has been kind of a showcase not only of just area basketball, but also of Claymont, your guys' gym, the facilities that you guys have, and all the staff that have put in a lot of hard work to make this happen. Um, so just with this being the final game to close everything out, do you think there's going to be any extra motivation maybe for your guys going out there on their home court? Well, you always want to take care of home court, no matter if it's the first game, the last game, or whatever game it is. So hopefully the guys recognize that, see that, and they take care of business tonight. Now, looking further ahead for the rest of the season, you know, at 6-6, six and six, we're heading down the stretch here. Uh, what do you want your team to take away the most when it comes to taking on this new Philadelphia team that they can use the rest of the year? We just, we've really talked of overcoming adversity. Um, throughout the season. Sometimes uh, in any athletic event, it seems like there's going to be highs and lows and you just have to, even if it's, it's going good, you got to understand that. And if it's bad, it's still time to come back. And so hopefully they 
can deal with adversity. Well, thank you, as always, for your time, Coach, and good luck to the Mustangs. Thank you very much. Head Coach Gary Watkins for the Claymont Mustangs. Our segment's brought to you by Kime along the sideline with the coach. Stick around. It's going to be your starting lineups and tip-off. Claymont versus New Philadelphia is up after this. Novellus Eurexville is the world leader in aluminum recycling, and they need you. They have immediate openings for general laborers, equipment operators, and various skilled trade positions. They'll start you at $22 per hour or higher. There are advancement opportunities, and Novellus offers industry-leading benefits. To apply or find out more, go to novellus.com slash careers and search Eurexville. That's novellus.com slash careers and search Eurexville. Novellus is an equal opportunity employer. This is RJ Jacobs from DAC Vitamins and Minerals. Did you know that DAC Vitamins and Minerals has more than 40 proven equine supplements that include daily multivitamins, joint digestion, reproduction and fertility, calming, and many other specialty products? DAC also carries a complete line of livestock products called DAC Show Contender. Feed DAC Vitamins and Minerals to get the competitive edge in the show pen. We've been feeding champions since 1983. Welcome back into Claymont High School and Eurexville as we've got the final game for the Claymont Midseason Showcase. The new Philadelphia Quakers will come out against the home Claymont Mustangs. Nick and Shannon bringing you this presentation of high school basketball and a big thank you again to Claxon Communications for all of their efforts throughout this entire day of basketball here on a Sunday in Z Country. And we'll thank you to Judd Bone who's behind the computer running everything and also a thank you to Logan McPeak up at the top running the camera for us for this evening's game. It is the Wood Electric pregame show and we are going to move things right along into your starting lineups for today and Shannon I think you're going to get the Mustangs who are the home team so I'll start off with the New Philadelphia Quakers led by head coach Zach Ross. Their starters are number zero, the junior, six foot five forward, the big man, Boston Crowell. Then it's number two, a guard, a senior, six foot two in Colton Slaughter. It's a, then another guard, sophomore, five foot six, number four, Reed Wells. Then it's number five, a six foot six senior forward in Owen Shellis. And finally, a six foot two senior guard, number 25, Owen Miller. Starting for the Mustangs will be number one, Jordan Connor. He's a senior. Where number two will be Drew Fox. He's a junior. Number 11, Matthew Jackson, another senior. 14, Brody Moreland, who's a senior. And number 21, Clint Barnhart. He is also a senior for the Mustangs. Thank you for that, Shannon, as Mustangs are now going to be introduced here in front of their home crowd. And i got to say, hands down, by far and away, and this is no surprise, it's the biggest crowd that we've had for any of these games so far today. The biggest crowd in both student sections are well represented tonight. Got a plenty of uh, noise going to be made right here beside us from the Mustangs. And a big thank you again to all of our sponsors making this possible and the First National Bank of Denison jumping on and making this a Quite the showcase as you see the players coming out on the court now. They're throwing out the T-shirts to their respective fans out there in the stands. Kind of a cool little touch. Or Brody Moreland going deep, apparently, for the Mustangs. And we haven't just thrown out a few shirts today. We've thrown out over a couple oh, hundred a shirts. Adam, Adam Sewesky has been busy running back and forth, getting shirts, getting chocolate milk, all thanks to the Tuscross County Dairy Farmers. And Bueller's. See, we had the easy parts of this, you know. That was just sit here, watch, and talk about basketball. Adam's been doing the legwork. All right, here we go. It's game five, New Philadelphia versus Claymont. Taking the tip for New Philadelphia is their big man and Owen Shellis, or one of them. And it will be the high flying Jordan Connor who will take it for Claymont. Mustangs in white, Quakers in red. Just about ready to go here. As we are underway, and it's Connor who wins the tip for Claymont. Here we go. Bringing it up will be Jackson, who will hand off left side to Moreland, who finds Connor at the top of the key. Huge size advantage for New Philadelphia against Claymont. We're going to see how they are able to cope with that. Connor gets a screen, and he'll set back up at the top with Jackson taking it once again. Yeah, and i got to go back to the starting lineup we were originally given. Devin Whitman is actually starting oh. for the Mustangs at number zero, so got to apologize to Devin. That wasn't the starting lineup we was given. Good call on that, Shannon, as that ball was poked away and dropped. It'll be Wells to bring it up for the Quakers. He'll stop, give it off to Crowell, who's at the top of the key, goes back to Wells. Good catch on that. I didn't even notice that. 
So it's the left side and a drive. Colton Slaughter, step back. They are not going to want him to have any space. And now a Colton Slaughter three is off back iron. No good. Rebound hauled in by Clint Barnhart. Here come the Mustangs. Jackson is in the right wing. There's nothing there. He'll go back to the top. A three-point shot is off for Barnhart. Battle for the rebound, and it's going to be hauled in by Jordan Connors, losing his footing, and he threw it back into Jackson. Good effort hustle play there by the senior for the Mustangs. Yeah, nice job by or Jackson, too. He seen he was in trouble and made a scramble back towards the hoop. He's able to save it to him. Balls work to the left side now, and it goes to the top of the key, or excuse me, outside the three-point line now to Moreland, who will set up the offense. They go left to Barnhart, now to Whitman. It's just working around, still trying to find some penetration underneath. It might be there for Moreland as he drives in hard, and we're going to get a blocking foul called there as they're going to say Shellis was still moving in front of him. So Moreland will step to the first Federal Community Bank free throw line. Yeah, nice job by Moreland right there to get it and turn towards the hoop. And Shellis was still sliding his feet a little bit, according to the referee. Picks up the block. 6.19 to go in the first, and we have no score so far as both these teams feeling each other out. A couple dribbles for Moreland, and he will put it up and good. And that's one thing about both of these teams. They, they can score points in bunches where they can go in dry spells. Moreland's next one was long, but it got the kind rule. He's now got the game's first two points. Wells to bring it up. Quakers looking to set up their offense early. It's Miller. He'll work it inside to Crowell, the big man, and he was getting pushed on the baseline, and so he just turned around and threw it off of Barnhart. Good positioning by Barnhart, Barnhart not giving the big man for New Philly any room. Yeah, he had him trapped down against the baseline, and Boston knew right away that he wasn't going to be able to get a clean shot, so he had an exit plan. Shellis dribbles on the free throw line, hands it off to Miller. Miller now drives, looking. Tried to go to Slaughter. There was nothing there, so they go back out to Wells. Wells drives, kicks, corner, Miller, three-point shot is in and out. Crowell grabs the offensive board, puts it back up and in, and one. Crowell split the defense and got his first offensive board and potentially has the old-fashioned three-point play upcoming. Yeah, they're going to nail Clip Barnhart with that foul. Crowell, the six-foot-five junior, puts his legs into it, and it is good. Three to two, your score under six to go here in the first quarter. Jackson brings it across the timeline guarded by Miller. He'll hand off to Moreland. Moreland now, he'll go to Whitman. Now they work it right wing, and it's Connor. He's going to drive on Shellis off the right block. Just too much muscle on that one. It went over the rim, and it was hauled in by Miller. New Philadelphia setting up. Left corner in Wells, but he'll work it back out. Gets a screen from Crowell. They were looking for him to streak in the paint. There was nothing there. A screen from Shellis gets Miller some separation, but not enough. And New Philadelphia has to reset again. Mustang's got some tough defense going on right now. Crowell looking to get into Shellis, but there's no lane. So the Quakers just working around the top of the key again. Slaughter drives. Extra pass now. Miller goes off to Wells, who nails it from three-point range. Nice ball movement by the Quakers right there. They threw it around the court four or five times before they finally found them open wells. Jackson to bring it up. His team trails 6-2 to two early. They go to Whitman. He's on the left wing. Now we'll go to Barnhart. Inside, Connor, left block, spin shot, and it is blocked by Owen Shellis. Nice job by Shellis just to stand there and go straight up. Got the clean block. Now it's Miller. He'll go to work on the left side in the wing. He'll hand it off to Wells. Gets a couple of screens. Wells thought about pulling up for the mid-range. Instead, he'll go Colton Slaughter from three-point range. No good, but the foul's going to be called. They're going to say Whitman got him, so he's stepping to the free-throw line for three. Whitman came in and got the body into him on the follow-through. First foul of the game for Whitman. It's a little confusing for me, Shannon. Claymont's got zero, and New Philadelphia's got double zero on their rosters. <laughs> Too many zeros flying around here. First one from Slaughter is perfect. Slaughter, as we know, last thing Claymont wants is to let him heat up from deep. He will burn you. Next one's good. 
Substitution, Crow will sit. Miller will sit. Into the game for the first time for New Philly. Carson Crandall and Vincent Magani. Whitman and Jackson sit for the Mustangs. In comes Drew Fox and Dylan Watkins. Next free throw up and good. It's a perfect three for three at the line for Slaughter. So now Fox will move it up for Claymont. They go to Moreland. Now the ball worked to the wing, and Watkins goes to the top to Barnhart. Left side, Fox is going to drive on Wells, who come back out, finds Moreland, who has an open three-point shot. No good. Connor battles for the rebound, and he's going to haul it in. Good hustle. Moreland kicks right side. Connor, he's going to dribble drive. Hands it off. Watkins, he goes to the paint, and will have to go to Barnhart. So far, that size for New Philly on the interior is a problem, and Connor thought he was going to get a cutting either Fox or Watkins, but there was no buddy home, and it goes out of bounds, another Claymont turnover. Yeah, that's one of the things there. He's got to be patient with. The Mustangs have done a nice job moving around. They were starting to get a little bit of separation, but you got to keep moving it to get that open shot. So Slaughter will play the point this possession, and he'll immediately hand it off to Wells. It is Magani. Hands it off to Wells again. He's at the top. Dribbles right. Gets a screen from Slaughter. Now he'll stop in the wing. Kick back. Slaughter. He's going to drive. Stop at the free throw line. Thought about a shot. Instead, he'll pass it off to Crandall. Crandall. Left block. He's trapped. Double team. Goes to Slaughter. He's going to step into a three-point shot, and it goes off front iron. Rebound hauled in by Claymont. Watkins tipped it to Connor. Here come the Mustangs. Looking for a way to score. Trying to take the lid off the basket. They have yet to make a field goal. Their only points coming from the charity stripe. Connors on the right wing. Goes top to Barnhart. Moreland trying to find any semblance of penetration here. He'll pull up just inside the three-point line, and he will knock it down. He's got all four of Claymont's points. Yeah, nice little jo job right there. Come off the dribble, straight-up jump shot. Wells goes between the legs, stops, hands off Shellis. They work left side to Crandall. Two and a half showing in the first. It's a nine to four new Philly lead. Claymont trying to defend their home court in this mid-season mid showcase. And now we're going to get a foul called here, I think potentially on the screen set by Shellis. And the, and the umpire just told him you threw your elbow up. That's Shellis' second, and that is somebody they cannot afford to have out of this game very much. Correll will come back in. Yeah, Shellis is going to sit for a little bit. Still two minutes left here in the first quarter. He's got two fouls. So Fox is going to inbound right in front of his own bench. So also taking a seat will be Magani. Magoni, pardon me. I've only said that wrong a couple times. Here comes Jackson, left side. Goes to Connor on the left wing. Now Watkins, he's going to drive. Stop at the free throw line. Step back on Crowell, left it short. Rebound, hauled in by Wells. Also, apology, Boston Crowell. Slaughter's working it around, goes left. It's Wells. Goes right, having some fun with Adam Sawesky. <laughs> Wells at the top, he'll have to reset. A minute 40 showing, still 9-4. to four. It is the Quakers over the Mustangs. Wells steps into it. Three-point shot went almost all the way down and came back out. I actually think it touched the bottom of the net before it came back up. It was Watkins with the board. Here comes Carter, and he'll go in hard in the lane, and an and one is upcoming. Slamming into Wells, who they say was still moving in front. The, the two referees were looking at each other, and the, the guy underneath says, you blew your whistle first, you take it, and then he threw the block call. Well, the guy underneath, blew, he, was, he called it, but, yeah, he then deferred it, which is kind of hard to do, but... Nonetheless. So Wells will pick up his first foul, and Connor will go to the or to the foul line for an and one. Under a minute and a half to go. Connor steps into it, and it is good. Give him three. A little bit of a momentum swing now here for the Mustangs. Here comes Slaughter. He's setting up the offense. New Philadelphia moves it around, and it will be Miller looking for some Backside spacing here, potentially. Are the Quakers trying to get it to Crowell? 
He's posted up on Watkins, who's trying to lock him down. Ball worked, and it's tipped away by Slaughter, or off the hands of Moreland as they were trying to go to Slaughter. Hey, what? Crandall just got that ball away. He was close to a five count. Thank goodness we got Adam Sewesky over here because I just, how many names did I just pronounce wrong there in that first quarter? Yeah, and if you're pronouncing wrong, I'm pronouncing wrong because <laughs> I, I look at you for the intelligent. <laughs> oh, that's your first mistake. Here's Crandall on the, as he'll hand it off to Miller. Miller's going to drive to Crowell. He's going to drive. Right block. Tries to spin around. Up and under, underneath, and he finishes past the back shoulder of Watkins. Nice moves right there for the big man. Backing down in. Looked like he was going to kick it back out, and he just went ahead and put a little spin move in there and got the bucket. So it's Whitman back on the court. He's going to have a wide open lane, and he left it short. Rebound hauled in for New Philly. And now a scramble for it. We're going to get a tie-up and a jump ball. It's still going to favor New Philly, I do believe, as it will. That's where the possession arrow is showing. The scramble for it came as, well, we have a 24 on the court for the Quakers, but I don't know who 24 is. We don't have them on the roster. <laughs> as it could be Quinn Miller. Owen Miller has it at the volleyball line will work right. And there it's tipped away again. It's Matthew Jackson on the steal. He's gonna try to finish, no good. Rebound goes into the hands of Philly. They're gonna work it up quickly, no time left, and the shot is not gonna count. So Claymont claws back a bit. It's 11 to seven, New Philadelphia leads. Back to the Claymont mid-season showcase right after this. Wood Electric has been trusted with all of your electrical needs for over 30 years. They are the place to call for residential, commercial, and industrial work. Wood Electric is available 24 hours a day and ready to help with any electrical problem, outage, or installation. Wood Electric, serving Tuscarawas County and beyond since 1988. Like Wood Electric on Facebook or find them online at woodelectric.net. The First National Bank of Denison appreciates the hard work and dedication area athletes exhibit to be the best they can be for their team. We follow that same philosophy with our customers, working hard to build personal relationships and making our services convenient. The First National Bank of Denison's community involvement is important to us and we love supporting our local schools. The First National Bank of Denison with offices in Denison, Dover, Janate and Hutton, South Broadway and Shunbrun in New Philadelphia. We have our roots where others have their branches. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Welcome back to the PAC Drilling Mobile Studio. As I did get confirmation, it is indeed Quinn Miller, who's number 24 for New Philly. He's listed on the roster as 12, but they have different numbers depending on the jerseys they're wearing, of course. So apologies there, so as we, I think Quinn took a seat. So we did confirm it's Quinn. We did. Here comes Claymont with Fox across the timeline. No stop. Left side, guarded by Wells, finds Jackson at the top of the key. Works left. Watkins, he's going to pull into a three-point shot. Left that well short. Drew Fox almost has the offensive board, but now we're going to get a foul called on Wells as Fox was going for it, and Wells kind of shoulder-checked him up underneath. Yep, Fox, he's uh, only a junior for the Mustangs, I believe. Uh, he is indeed a junior. He's, he's, a, he's a very hard basketball player. Every time he gets on the court, he hustles. So that's Wells' second foul. They're going to actually sit him. Crandall will come in. Inbound goes to Jackson now, who reset the offense for the Mustangs. Didn't shoot the ball particularly well in that first quarter. Didn't have a ton of shot opportunities, truthfully. They work it into Watkins, tipped away by Crowell, but they're going to say they fou he fouled him. They're going to say he got his body into the back of him. Hmm. I didn't see that, Shannon. I just thought it was a clean play. I don't know. Because I thought they just signaled push, which I definitely didn't see. But regardless, it'll be Crowell's first. Now the inbound, nearly a miscommunication there, but Whitman is able to grab hold of it. Barnhart goes top and finds Jackson. Neither of these teams, a ton of penetration thus far. I say that as there's a drive by Whitman, who he loses the handle, and Watkins saves it offensively, but man, it's just plucked away by Owen Miller. His first steal. Down go the 
Quakers as they go top. Slaughter, three-point shot is buried. Boy, he got that one high up in the clouds. It's got a nice little arc to it. Mustang ball on the left part of the court on the wing, right in front of the new Philly bench. Jackson will now work it around. Watkins steps into a three. He can't get it to go. Rebound, Whitman. He'll stop as he lost the handle, but he somehow regains it and finds a cutting. Dylan Watkins. He'll finish in the lane for two. Yeah, nice job right there by Whitman to be able to fight to get the rebound. Thought he was going to lose it, but he found Watkins. And now we're going to have a miscommunication between Crowell and Crandall as they couldn't link up. It's a turnover for Philly. Fox will sit. Connor comes back in. Moreland's also back in as Whitman takes a seat. Mustangs fighting hard to stay in this game here. This would be a big offensive opportunity right here if they can go down here and get a bucket. Would you use the word gritty to describe this first quarter, or first half, I should say? It's been physical. And Watkins goes right past Crowell and finishes above the defender. He's got four. We now got a three-point ball game. Philly works it left side. Now top, Slaughter. He'll stop at the free throw line in the right corner of it and go to Owen Miller, who will drive, stop, and go off to Quinn Miller. He gets it again at the top. He'll drive, stop, lost the handle. Now he's got to go somewhere with it. He finds Slaughter, and Moreland hacked him. Slaughter, when he grabbed it, Shannon, his momentum was moving him backwards, and if, if Moreland just stands on top of him, he's just going to fall for the backcourt. Yeah, he, uh, he, he was going down backwards, and Moreland just kind of jumped towards him at the same time, and he pretty much cleaned him, if that's the word you want to use, because <laughs> <laughs> he gave him a shot. He made it count, so to speak. <laughs> so it's Magoni. He goes right to Miller. Owen Miller looks for Slaughter to break open, and he will. Now he'll go and spin to the free throw line, but has to work it back out. So it's Owen Miller working it around again. Now it's to Magoni. He'll be at the top. He'll go between his legs, stop at the free throw line. As it's Quinn Miller... At the top of the key. No lanes to penetrate right now. The Mustangs are locking down on man-to-man -man defense right now with the Quakers. Slaughter steps into a three-point shot from eight feet behind the line and buries it. Yeah, they, they kind of just, they're hanging out at the three-point line to play defense on him, so he goes back a few extra feet and goes ahead and drills it. Watkins goes in. Connor is bumped back out. Magoni on him. He's picked up his dribble and has to reset as Jackson goes back to the corner by the timeline to slow things down again. 17 to 11 is the Philly lead. Entry pass. Connor can't handle it. It goes out of bounds. And he's not happy. He said Magoni pushed him. But Stripes aren't hearing any of it. No, I mean, they, they've let a lot go on. I mean, it's got to be a pretty blatant foul to, in order to get it called. Comes Owen Miller, and he'll hand it off to Slaughter. Now a handoff to Quinn Miller. Got to differentiate 24-25, Owen and Quinn. Left side, Magoni somehow saved that. Acrobatics on the sideline. He is guarded closely by Whitman, or excuse me, Barnhart. Owen Miller inside. Crowell lost the handle. It was poked away by Moreland. And yeah, Moreland did a nice job getting in there. Got in the passing lane, deflected away. Watkins was able to secure it. Connor's going to drive. He'll stop, and it's plucked away by Crowell. The big man for Philly is going to try to go coast to coast. Thought better of it and slowed it down and gave it back to yeah, nice, Slaughter. Nice job by the big man right there. He knew he couldn't do it, so why take a chance of turning it over? Would have been fun to see. Slaughter's at the top and goes right to Magoni. Magoni picked up by Connor. Now they'll give to Slaughter. Moreland all over him again. Both these teams' defenses... Sit right in your jersey. Owen Miller, though, gets an open three-point shot that rattles all over the place but won't fall. Jackson with the board. Magoni for the Quakers to get the foul. That is Jackson's first rebound. And it looks like Fox is back in for the Mustangs. 
as is Moreland, who took a very brief break. Connor and Jackson to sit. Crowell will sit, and now New Philly's going with a small lineup here, Shannon. And it looks like, yeah, not too much height out there, so I wonder if they're just trying to match maybe the speed of the Mustangs a bit. Well, as fast as this game's been going, you got to give legs rest, and they're deep enough to do it. Watkins too long on the three-pointer, but it is rebounded again offensively by Moreland, who can't bury the three in and out again. So many almost shots for both these sides. Quinn Miller goes in. He got hit on the wrist as he went up by Watkins. Shannon, if we counted all the buckets that have rolled around in the rim, what do you think this score would be right now? Well, both sides would have a lot more points. Yeah, it would be a lot more points than what we got right now. They uh, nailed Whitman with that foul. That was Whitman, all right. That's Whitman's second foul. Quinn Miller's first free throw was up and good. Yeah, if you're Whitman, got to be a bit more careful, but Coach Watkins, not taking any chances, will have him sit with the two fouls before halftime. Next free throw for Miller is in. It was in, it was out, it was off the backboard, then it was in again. 19-11, New Philly leads Claymont. Two and a half to go before the half. And now we're going to get an illegal screen called here. As I couldn't tell who was trying to set the screen. They're was going, it Moreland? They're going to get Moreland. I think they was getting him for trying to fight through the screen. I was looking down at my sheet, and I just saw a mass of players on the ground. Timeout for New Philadelphia. We'll take it with them. Big Z Sports is back to the Claymont Midseason Showcase after this. Is your vehicle banged up? Do you want fast, professional service to get you back on the road? This is Garrett Jacobs with AutoWorks Collision Center. We service cars, trucks, SUVs, and even semi-trucks and RVs. Whether you need auto glass replacement, paintless dent repair, assistance with warranty and insurance, or just a free estimate, AutoWorks has you covered. We even offer alignments for your heavy-duty vehicles like buses, motorhomes, and semis with our state-of-the-art Hunter Alignment System. Call 330-878-4223. Open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Let AutoWorks of Strasburg work for you. Here we go back again for the second quarter from Claymont High School here from Eurexville. It is the Claymont Midseason Showcase. A big thank you again to our presenting sponsors up there on the screen, but also a huge thank you to the First National Bank of Denison who have played an integral part in making this showcase a reality. And also thanks to them. We got some nice player of the game awards to hand out, some serious hardware. If you haven't seen those yet, head on over to our Facebook page. For one, to find out who our players of the game are, but also to see what they got. And there's going to be a travel as Crandall went left and right a few too many times without putting the ball on the deck. Hey, he tried to fake one way, fake the other. In the meantime, he changed that pivot foot, got nailed for the travel. Fox to bring it across for the Mustangs, who have had some great moments so far, but have also had a hard time taking the lid off the basket at various points. Barnhart drives, and they'll reset to Fox again. Fox on the right side, he'll jab step right, go in left, and he dropped the handle, but just picked it back up and goes to Barnhart, who will drive. He's double team, looking for a cutting Watkins, but it was sealed off quickly. So Barnhart's in the left wing now, and he got fouled. They're going to say Crandall got him on the arm. Crandall going to pick up his first. Instead, they're going to say Crandall actually shoved him towards the sideline. Just going to refrain from making any comments about foul trouble, Shannon, because solely for the fact that every time we've done that so far, it seems like we jinx the team that seemed to be doing all right. Sophomore Miles Wolf is in for the first time for Claymont as Drew Fox steps up into a mid-range. Off back iron, battle for the rebound. Watkins was locked up with it as Crandall couldn't handle it. Owen Miller drives left, stops, goes back out to Slaughter. Crazy thing is, Shannon, Slaughter has nine, and you could say that's been rather quiet for some of the performances we've seen him have. Shot was no good for Miller. 
Rebounded by Fox for the Mustangs, and here he comes. He'll give it off. Watkins tries to spin around on right block. Had it knocked away. Now we'll put it up. Found nothing, but it's rebounded by Wolf. And they'll reset again. 50 seconds left and a half. The Mustangs got to find a way to get a bucket right here. Claymont on offense have Connor, now Watkins in the left wing, right in front of Coach Ross of New Philly. They're going to have an open Barnhart for three. It was too long again. Rebound is hauled in by the Quakers, but they're going to say it's going to stay down here with Claymont. The foul is going to get called on Quinn Miller. They're going to say he shoved, probably going trying to get positioning for the rebound. That's two foul shots now. That's five fouls on. Certainly is. It'll be Watkins to step to the line. And you see that the player's having to shuffle there and get in the free throw lane because they're still getting used to the new role too. Watkins first one is up and good. Watkins now in this second quarter, he's got five. Actually, in fact, he's the only Mustang to score so far in this second quarter. He'll knock down the second. And we got a whistle here. Was it a lane violation? I think they did call a lane violation. Well, so in that case, so point comes take, off the, the board. take the bucket off the board. So it will remain a 19-12 ball game, 30 seconds to go. Didn't see who they got on the lane violation. I think it was Barnhart. Regardless, it's Slaughter to bring it across the timeline as he's going to dribble it down. New Philly going to hold for the last shot as coming up here shortly, we'll have your DAC Vitamins and Minerals halftime report. Wells goes to Crowell, who's guarded by Connor. They find Magoni. Right side, Wells looking for a wing shot. Under five, four, three. Owen Miller steps back, three-point shots way long, and that will do it for the first half of action. 19 to 12 is your score. It is New Philadelphia leading Claymont. Stick around. We got stats from the first half and plenty more coming up. Cush Financial Group has been proudly serving the financial needs of local community members for over 35 years. The team at Cush Financial follows an industry-leading service model with the unique approach and fiduciary responsibilities associated with their board-certified financial planner. With over 75 years of combined experience, the advisors at Cush Financial Group are here to help you achieve your financial goals. Contact the office at 330-308-8700 or visit cushfinancial.com to schedule your free consultation today. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Independent Capital Company Incorporated, member FINRA, SIPC. Do you hunt, fish, sew, or have a hobby that you would like to share with someone? Hi, this is Noah Sugg with Brig Brothers Big Sisters, and we are faced with our biggest commitment in matching 56 Littles with Bigs. We will match a little with you that shares the same interests and enjoys the same things, so you can do what you enjoy and change the life of a little at the same time. To learn more, we ask you call 339-6916 or visit bigs4kids.com slash volunteer. Thank you. The certified public accountants at Needenthal & Company believe in the value of relationships. Needenthal & Company has been in business for over 50 years in your community, helping individuals and businesses grow. Needenthal & Company can help manage and prepare your payroll, plan your estate, and prepare your business and personal income taxes. Stop in to the Needenthal facility on North Wooster Avenue in Dover and become a valued client today. Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has just what you're looking for, so your athlete has the best gear for the sports they play. Dumont's has a large apparel selection and can handle your customized screen printing as well as embroidery for your team or business. For sporting goods and for all your apparel needs, Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has everything you want to play and look your best. PAC Drilling, a family-owned and operated company since 2005 in Bolivar, takes pride in being an economic oil and gas drilling company. PAC's objective is to contribute to American energy independence through profitable development, operation, and marketing of oil and natural gas wells. PAC also employs operating technicians to oversee each and every well drilled to maximize its productivity and longevity. Contact PAC Drilling at PAC. Drilling.com. 
Welcome back to Claymont High School. As you've been tuned in to the Claymont Mid-Season Showcase, New Philadelphia leads Claymont 19 to 12 in the fifth and final game today. Shannon, early on here, it has been <laughs> quite the contest, quite the defensive battle as we had a three-point shot nailed for, I didn't catch the 50-50 amount, but that young man's going home a little bit richer. Yeah, and I think, that, is that a, might be Alex Gears' little boy. I can't actually tell who it is, but yeah. regardless, it, it, good shot from him. So 19 to 12 is your score. And it's been an interesting game to say the least, as for New Philadelphia, only four scorers. As for Claymont, only three. The four for New Philly, they are led by none other than Colton Slaughter, the senior guard. He has nine. He's got three makes from the charity stripe and two shots from deep. Then you have five points by way of Boston Crowell, three points by way of Reed Wells, and two points coming from Quinn Miller off of the bench. For Claymont, your only scoring was five from Dylan Watkins, four from Brody Moreland, and three from Jordan Connor. Outside of that, there hasn't been a whole bunch else available. And, you know, Shannon moving forward for the second half of action, you know, the rebounding totals, believe it or not, are actually well in the hands of Claymont. So to see it this score the way it is, is rather surprising. Yeah, he, uh, it, it, it's, they can't get any shots to fall as far as Claymont. I couldn't even get out my words because it's puzzling to see how many decent shots that Claymont has taken, and they're just rattling in and out, and they're just not able to get them to fall. It's been strange to see because both teams have actually had that problem at various times throughout this evening's contest. And on top of that, you know, the ball movement hasn't been great for either side because right now as it stands, for either side, I've got it marked down at one assist apiece, if you believe that. Yeah, and I don't even keep track of the assist because I know you got it, but I should have kept track today. I could have handled it. And now we got Santa Claus down here Adam, throwing out shirts. Adam Sawesky is making everybody's dreams come true with some of the shirts that we have on here for tonight's broadcast as he's trying to throw them all out. He said, I don't want to take any of these home by the time I have to leave from here. So he's going around to both sidelines. We'll to, that's his new nickname, I hope you understand. When we go back to work on Monday, I'm going to call him Santa Claus. And look at the underhand arm. Well, he used to coach softball. What do you expect? Well, you know what? And I hope his daughter Sarah is watching him throw that ball, those shirts underarm. That way he can get yelled at for it. <laughs> About all the technique that's wrong. So with this 19-12 ball game, we will step aside and return here shortly. We'll bring you the second half of action. Again, a huge thank you to all of our presenting sponsors and, of course, the First National Bank of Denison who have been integral in bringing this action to our YouTube channel. Stick around. Nick and Shannon are back after this. The Tuscarawas County Dairy Farmers want you to know that low-fat chocolate milk is a great choice for student-athletes and hard workers. It provides the nutrition needed after practices, games, or a hard day at work, and it tastes great. Low-fat chocolate milk is packed with carbohydrates for energy, proteins to repair muscles, fluids to rehydrate, plus vitamins and minerals to help build strong bones and bodies. It's the official beverage of the Ohio High School Athletic Association. Tuscarawas County Dairy Farmers. Farms. Family. Food. This is Carly Mills. At First Federal Community Bank, our mission is to empower the financial well-being of our community one person at a time. Through integrity and quality, we earn the trust of our customers and exceed their expectations. First Federal Community Bank, investing in our community since 1898. Serving your banking needs in Dover, New Philadelphia, Eurexville, Sugar Creek, Berlin, and Mount Hope. First Federal Community Bank, member FDIC. Jeff Wallach LLC is a family-owned and operated company proudly serving greater Northeast Ohio and surrounding communities for over 25 years. We specialize in vinyl siding, replacement windows and doors, gutters, downspouts, and much more. We provide quality service regardless of the size or scope of the project. Our crews are reliable, respectful, and mindful of a safe work environment. Jeff Wallach LLC is certified by the Better Business Bureau. Call today and discover how we can assist you in making your vision a reality. In the rolling hills of Holmes County, we tend to do things a bit differently. At Kime, we're in the business of uncommon experiences, and we're here to care for your project like we care for our own. We believe that quality matters and want to help you get it right the first time because your project deserves it. 
So visit Kime Home Center, your source and destination for all things home, building, and woodworking. Kime, built on trust since 1911. Hi, this is Gian McInturf. For the past 30 years, the residents in and around Tuscarawas County have made the call to the realtors and staff at McInturf Realty for buying and selling of residential and commercial properties. We truly live in a great community, and in all those communities, there's nothing better than high school basketball. For myself and all the agents and staff at McInturf Realty, we would like to wish all the area athletes good luck this season and make the call to McInturf Realty at 330-364-SOLD or find us online at McInturfRealty.net. TMK Valley Propane is embracing remote tank monitors. Are you tired of going outside to check your propane tank or forget to order your propane on time? TMK Valley Propane now provides reliable remote tank monitoring technology. Let TMK Valley Propane take the worry away, provide timely delivery, and never run out of propane again. Thank you for your trust in TMK Valley Propane. All the way with TMK, service with a personal touch. Altman is here for you, in your community, because you matter. We're proud to be the area's first and only independent health system. We are one team, joined together, and committed to one mission, to lead our community to improved health. And we've always been here, dedicated to providing you with the very best in care, wellness, education, insurance, and more. For your community and for your family, Altman is always here for you. Hi, I'm Zach Moteis with the Tuscross Insurance Agency. For all your auto, home, farm, and business insurance, contact our team at the Tuscross Insurance Agency. Or stop in and see us at one of our three locations in downtown New Philadelphia, Sugar Creek, or in Strasburg, providing excellent service to the Tuscross Valley since 1885. Everyone here at the Tuscross Insurance Agency would like to wish all area athletes and teams good luck this winter. Are you neglecting your building's fifth wall? Did you know something as simple as a clogged drain can lead to a destructive roof leak? Protect your business assets with WM Commercial Roofing's Umbrella Care program. This program will provide you with regular maintenance surveys and repairs to extend the life of your roof. Invest in your business with our top quality materials, advanced techniques, and skilled craftsmanship. Are you ready for a reliable partnership? Visit our website, wmcommercialroofing.com, and follow us on Facebook and Instagram to learn more. Welcome back into to Uricksville and Claymont High School. High school basketball in Z Country, our fifth game of the Claymont Mid-Season Showcase, as it is the new Philadelphia Quakers leading the Claymont Mustangs 19-12 in what has been a defensive battle early on, and I cannot imagine... Shannon, that either head coach Zach Ross for the Quakers or head coach Gary Watkins for the Mustangs was overly pleased with the offensive output of their teams. No, they both seem to struggle a little bit. Some turnovers. That was a very loud whistle right there in front of us, and that means it's time to play ball. But <laughs> Coach Watkins couldn't be happy about the results. His shooting percentage is way low, not because of bad shots. Like we said, they just can't get the ball to fall. So it will be Wells to set up the offense first for New Philly, and they go off to Owen Miller. They'll be in the right corner just inside the three-point line as they try to go into Crowell, and it's taken away by Moreland. He'll save it. Moreland with his second steal. Mustangs work it up, and those are the plays you're going to need if you want to recapture the lead. Nice job by Moreland, though. He stole it and was on his belly with the ball and, and was able to get rid of it without getting called travel. So that, that in itself was a job for him. Moreland drives right side. He's guarded by Slaughter. Ball makes its way all the round to Jackson. Entry pass. Connor spin around on Owen Shellis. And Connor, who was giving up some major size there, still found a way to make it fall. Yeah, nice job by Jordan Connor right there. A little bit of patience when he got the ball and made sure he got a nice position to get that bucket. Crowell has it and goes right to Wells. Wells will jab step and back off. He's by the volleyball line looking for a cutting Miller. There's nothing there. He's guarded by Jackson. Now goes right wing to Shellis. Shellis goes to Crowell. Now left Wells. Not a lot of lanes on the backdoor cuts for these Quakers as, again, even though the Mustangs are giving up so much size, they're doing a great job of sealing those off as Slaughter's three-point shot finds only the backboard, and it's Connor with his second rebound. Yeah, they gave, they gave him some room right there, and he took a shot and just didn't hit anything. It is Jackson 
run the offense. Quite the size differential again. Shellis picking up Jackson now. Crowell, he's on Barnhart. He'll drive off the glass too strong as I think he got a little bit too off balance as that was the first rebound for Shellis. Slaughter's open from three-point range and he buries it. Wells gets his first assist and Slaughter now has 12. And we're going to have a timeout here as Jackson needs to retie his shoelace. 22 to 14, just about six minutes showing here in the third quarter. Well, New Philadelphia's offense has looked uh, pretty straightforward here to start. Find the open shot for Colton Slaughter. Yeah, and like you said, Slaughter's not one of those ones you want to leave open. And it's actually, we got a little moisture on the floor we're going to get rid of. See the officials for the game, they keep everything in order and call the fouls, and they also keep the floor clean, apparently. We call that multitasking. So Connor's going to inbound for the Mustangs. His team trails by eight. With that last make from him, he's tied for the team lead with five points. Jackson brings it across. He's picked up by Miller. Works left to Connor in the wing in the left. And nearly traveled. There it is. Connor picked up his dribble, was trying to pass, but somebody cut off the lane. And Connor wanted an explanation. He says he didn't move his foot, but I think you and I saw the same thing. Yeah, he moved his foot right there. He kind of went to throw it, and they cut off the lane, and he just kind of moved to keep from throwing the ball. That back left foot, it just kept going. Slaughter drives, goes right to Wells in the corner. Now they found an open crowd who will finish it. Couldn't finish in the lane. A lot of contact and no call. Connor's going to grab the rebound and bring it up for Claymont. Yeah, the man underneath let him play right there. There was a lot of contact right there. Inside, Moreland spin around mid-range. No good. Battle for the rebound. Nearly a putback as we're going to have a battle for the ball. Crowell's going to get it. Now we're going to tie up. Jackson jumped on him, but they're going to say that was a foul, not a tie-up. I would imagine it be on Jackson. I think Jackson went on top of him to grab the ball, and when he did, uh, Boston just kind of helped him on by. So the foul is going to be in, in, indeed on Jackson with the, well, they say the push because I don't think you can call a tackle. I would have called it the Jimmy Superfly snook of the way he come in there and landed on top of him. Five-star frog splash. 22 to 14 is your score, and New Philly works it up. It's Wells. Bet you didn't think you were going to hear that reference today. <laughs> of course, I didn't think I was going to hear a Jimmy Snooker reference either. Shellis, or pardon me, Slaughter goes right to Miller. He's guarded closely and a lot of contact from Whitman. They're letting him play again. Slaughter drives right block, lost the handle, and he goes careening into Jordan. They're going to call the foul, though. I think Moreland might have got him on the arm. I think they're going to get Whitman. It is Whitman. Good call. Yeah, Whit Whitman reached out there with his arm and kind of got him around the waist as he was going to the lane. So Whitman will sit. Watkins is back in for Claymont, and Fox is in for Connor. Yeah, Whitman picks up his third foul halfway through the third quarter. Slaughter inbounds. He'll find Miller. Now goes right side. Now we're going to get another offensive foul. It's going to go on Shellis for the illegal screen. That's the – oh, no, they're going to say it's Crowell. My mistake. Nope. Oh, no, there it is. And, no, it's going to be on Quinn Miller. Well, at some point, I'll get it right if I go through the whole roster. Well, I mean, luckily for them that they didn't go with the first name you said because Shellis would have had three fouls. Well, I think Shellis thought it was on himself because he, he was looking like, really? So it's Jackson. He's working it around for the Mustangs. 4.45 to go in the third as he's cut off and goes across court to Barnhart. He's in front of his own bench. Gets the call from Coach Watkins. And now goes to Dylan Watkins. He'll drive, stop, pop back out to Moreland. Claymont's trying to get that baseline cut, but, the, but New Philadelphia is cutting it off. Every single time, no matter how many times they switch, it seems like the Quakers are on top of it. Yeah, Quakers doing a nice job right now in their half-court defense, putting the pressure on. Moreland gets the screen from Watkins. He'll drive into Shellis. Now he'll deliver. Watkins going to try to spin around. Lost his footing. Goes into the corner. And we'll find Barnhart. Barnhart drops it back to Moreland. He's guarded by Slaughter. He'll go to the right. And we're going to get another travel. Moreland got started too early before he put the ball on the deck. Yeah, Moreland tried to throw a ball fake in there with a step. And he just stepped with the wrong foot. So the score remains 22-14. to 14. 
Magoni's back in. Quinn Miller will sit. Owen Miller to inbound to Wells as they get the play call in from Coach Ross, who at times has been less than pleased with how the offense has gone, but his team is still leading by eight. Slaughter's going to drive. Off the glass, no good, but he got fouled, and it's going to be going on Fox. No, it's going to go on Watkins. Sorry, the two was for two shots. Watkins back in off the bench, picks up his first foul. Mustangs already with three team fouls with 3.45 to go, and Slaughter was well off. You saw him bow his head and shake it a little bit. He knew once he let that one go, it was not going to fall. And usually when you got a guy that can shoot three-pointers like that, he knows his foul shots are missed as soon as he releases them. That one was a little bit better that time as he'll bury it. Gives him 13 this game. All of his points have either been from the foul line or from the three-point line. Which I think we've come to expect for the most part. Jackson goes back. It's close to that timeline. But we'll keep it moving. He'll go Moreland. Moreland to the right. And we're going to have a shove here. And I think it was going to be Magoni. Yeah, Magoni kind of went forward just as Moreland was going to go forward, and they slammed into each other. That would be Magoni's second. Fox to inbound from right in front of his own bench. And he'll go back to Moreland. Three and a half to go here in the third. It's a nine-point game. Claymont still very much within striking distance, but they're going to have to find an answer on offense. Watkins goes left, finds an open Moreland. He'll step into a three, and it's off back iron, and there's a battle for the ball and a collision. And I'm not sure who they're going to get it they're on. They're going to get Wells on this one. Sure enough, it will be on Wells, and that's his third. Yeah. Well, Wells or uh, Drew Fox was trying to get around him to go in to get the rebound, and Wells kind of pushed him from the side, and then uh, – Fox bounced off of Shellis and hit the floor. I just saw Fox flying. That's I, I didn't know where it came from. Inbound goes to Barnhart, who almost had it too hot to handle. He'll try to go on Slaughter. Slaughter gets his hand in there, and it gets knocked out of bounds. It's going to be Quaker ball, as Barnhart was the last to touch it. Except Mustangs are still within striking distance, but they can't keep throwing away these offensive opportunities. They're, they're making the Quakers miss down here. They got to convert on the other end. Magoni to set up the offense from the volleyball line. As a little bit less movement out there right now for New Philly. I think that both these sides, I mean, it's been a lot of movement constantly. I mean, they've been doing a lot of running, and I think we're starting to see the effects as Slaughter was too strong on that shot. Now he grabs his own rebound. Too strong again. Moreland pulls it in for Claymont. They're going to need more of that if they're going to get back into this. Jackson to drive. He'll stop. Gives it off to a streaking Marlin who cashes in, and that was a thing of beauty. Just that, what the Mustangs needed right there. It's the kind of plays like that that will get them back into this. They now trail by seven. 2.15 to go in the third. Miller goes to his left, gets around his man, finds an open Magoni. He'll go up strong, can't get it to fall, but Barnhart probably got him with the body. Second foul of the game on Barnhart. So Magoni steps to the charity stripe. Yeah, the Quakers keep running this offense out here. They're running screens at the top. That's his first points of the game. They are trying to find these cutting lanes, and there's been a few moments that they've been there, but they have had a hard time converting whenever they do get the lane. Yeah, they, they, they run them around down there, and then Mustangs eventually end up losing one of them. Next free throw. That was off the right side. Owen oh, Shellis with the offensive board. Can't put it back in. And now Watkins grabs the rebound. For Watkins, that is his fourth rebound. Connor drives, gives it off. Watkins, it was tipped when it was going to him. He'll find a streaking Moreland who puts it on the deck. Stripped away Magoni. Give him his first steal. Moreland did a nice job just to catch that ball coming in there, and then it got poked away. And now Moreland's going to pull it away from Slaughter. Moreland gives to Jackson. Jackson in the corner now. Three-point shot was left well short for Claymont. Rebound goes to Jackson, who puts it up and in. Somehow Matthew Jackson, the smallest guy on the court, lucks out with the rebound and puts it up and in. Let's go. Let's go. 
24-18. New Philly still leads. Slaughter steps into a three way off the right side. Rebound is going to be hauled in by Whitman, and he'll bring it up. That's his first board. Jackson to Watkins. Watkins cross court and ooh, nearly had two players knocking it away from each other. Yeah, two players standing in the same area. Just about spelled disaster for the Mustangs. Whitman goes from right to left. He'll go off the left block, try to finish, but it looks like he got fouled. Yeah, Magoni's going to get nailed with this one. For Magoni, by my count, that's his third foul. Yep. So Whitman will stand in at the free throw line. He has no points so far, but can get himself on the board here. His team trails by six. Under a minute to go in the third. And the first one is no good. This has felt like such a fast-paced game now in the third quarter. It feels like this time has went by extremely fast. Yeah, th this game's went by fast. They've let a lot of stuff happen. Hasn't been too many foul shots. Not too many whistles. Whitman, three dribbles, spins it, puts it up. No good again, and Shellis grabs the board for New Philly. That's his third rebound. Missed opportunity right there for the Mustangs. Wells gets a double screen. He'll keep going to the left. Now goes to the wing, and it's Crandall. Right side, Quinn Miller hands off to Wells. Wells picked up by Jackson. Just 35 seconds showing. Nearly had it stolen away, but it's Slaughter. Goes left corner to Miller, and he'll make it fall. Yeah, they had Slaughter out there wide open, and that pulled Miller's guy off of him to go over to make sure Slaughter didn't get the shot, and Miller made him pay. And now Whitman is too long on the three-point shot. Connor hits the deck, and somebody's getting called for the foul. It looks like it is going to stay with Claymont. That's going to be on Quinn Miller. He picks up his third. So you bury a three-point shot, but then you get your third foul, and that will put Claymont in the double bonus. Well, the new double bonus, so to speak. First free throw rolled from front to back, but it fell. And for Connor, that is his sixth point. Some substitutions for both sides. Back in the game is Wolf for Claymont and Crowles back in for New Philly. Connor's next one is good as well. Two big buckets right there for Connor after that three-pointer at the other end. 15 seconds showing on the clock. Wells is going to take his time as they get set for the final shot this quarter. They can put themselves back up by double digits this possession. Miller's in the right wing. Looks for Crowell. There's nothing there. It was tipped. Slaughter picks it up. Two, one, steps into the three, and it is too long. No good. 27 to 20. We head to the final frame. Quakers lead the Mustangs, and we're back after this. Novellus Eurexville is the world leader in aluminum recycling, and they need you. They have immediate openings for general laborers, equipment operators, and various skilled trade positions. They'll start you at $22 per hour or higher. There are advancement opportunities, and Novellus offers industry-leading benefits. To apply or find out more, go to novellus.com slash careers and search Eurexville. That's novellus.com slash careers and search Eurexville. Novellus is an equal opportunity employer. This is RJ Jacobs from DAC Vitamins and Minerals. Did you know that DAC Vitamins and Minerals has more than 40 proven equine supplements that include daily multivitamins, joint, digestion, reproduction and fertility, calming, and many other specialty products? DAC also carries a complete line of livestock products called DAC Show Contender. Feed DAC Vitamins and Minerals to get the competitive edge in the show pen. We've been feeding champions since 1983. Time for the final quarter of the Claymont Midseason Showcase. Thanks again to all of our presenting sponsors throughout this season and WM Commercial Roofing, the Tuscarawas Insurance Agency, Novellus, and Altman Hospital. And a special thanks to the First National Bank of Denison. They're providing some pretty awesome hardware that you'll see for our player of the game following this contest. And this has been by far and away, Shannon, the lowest scoring game we've had and the most tight defensive battle as Jackson nearly has a turnover. Jackson had that one roped through his hands, around the back of his neck, down his back, and then he was able to find it. It is Barnhart who goes left. He finds an open Connor for three, and it's in. That's the shots that Claymont needs to fall. 
first assist for Bernhardt. It's now a four-point ball game. Shellis has it on the left side. He'll look for a cutting slaughter, but there's nothing there. Crowl, entry, Shellis, double team, tie up. And let's see what the call is going to be. And it is a jump ball, and it will favor New Philly. Yeah, a nice job right there by Shellis and the Mustang players to get on it. I kind of thought Shellis had control when he went to the court. Thought that they was going to call him for a travel. But the Mustangs got right on it, so they call a jump ball. Slaughter goes into Miller. He'll drive, stop it just inside the free throw line, and goes back out. Slaughter now tries to spin on Fox. Fox all over him. He ties him up, and he's got him down. It's going to be another jump ball called most likely. And the possession arrow this time is going to favor the Mustangs. Great effort by Fox. Yeah, outstanding defense by Drew Fox right there all over Slaughter. Made Slaughter lose the handle on it, and then they went out down to the floor together. Referee just stopped it quick and said jump ball. 27, 23, seven minutes to go. Neither side wanting to go away. Connor goes to his left, goes past Shellis with the hook shot. Can't get it to fall, but the foul's going to be called. Shellis is not happy with getting called for that foul. He said he had he was holding his arms up in the air, but you can see he got him with the waist low. Yeah, the problem was is Connor kept going towards the baseline and tried to go up for that little little underhook, and Shellis kept sliding the feet to go with him. You got to stand still. First one from Connor is in and out, and we're back to this, Shannon. The shots that seem like they're going to fall, but will not. Shellis is going to sit as he picked up his third foul early here in the fourth. It is Magoni who will check back in for him. Connor's ready and spins the next one, and that one is good. Give him four this quarter. That makes it a one-possession ball game, as it is Claymont who trails by three. Wells goes off to Crowell, finds a backdoor cutting slaughter, and it is good as it will go off the backboard and in slaughter with the up and under. Yeah, they kind of knew that uh, Fox was going to run around those screens, and when you go around them the wrong way, Slaughter come around there wide open. Connor drives left, gets a screen from Fox. He'll stop and miscommunication there. He thought Fox was going to flash back out, and he did not, so it's a turnover for the Mustangs. Yeah, nice hands by the, claim, the little Mustang over there, ball boy. He caught that <laughs> right off the bounce pass. Well, I'm surprised he didn't jump up off the bench and get in the shooting position, get in the triple threat. And the referee's over there playing with him because it was such an impressive catch. <laughs> so New Philly finds themselves up by five. 6-15 showing. Miller has it in the right wing. He'll drive. Right block goes up and under, tipped away by Moreland. And that was a heads-up play for him because Slaughter was wide open in the corner. Yeah, you don't want to leave Slaughter out there wide open. He gets his feet set and a good look. He'll make you pay. Philly does get the ball in. Wells going to work. Hands it off. Magoni back out. Three-point shot for Miller all around the rim. No good. Crowell was going up for the rebound, and he had it knocked away from him, and I think it's going to go on Moreland, who I don't think can believe it. Yeah, he even looked at the ref and said, you called me for that? <laughs> the ref just keeps walking. <laughs> So Shellis will come back in. Magoni will sit. Moreland picks up his third foul. Watkins is going to come in, and it will be good to see Wolf who comes out of the game. Shellis to inbound. Exactly six minutes showing in this contest. Shellis, entry pass. Slaughter off the glass and good. And a timeout is going to get called as New Philly Getting some more momentum on their side. They're now up by seven. Stick around. We're back after this. Wood Electric has been trusted with all of your electrical needs for over 30 years. They are the place to call for residential, commercial, and industrial work. Wood Electric is available 24 hours a day and ready to help with any electrical problem, outage, or installation. Wood Electric, serving Tuscarawas County and beyond since 1988. Like Wood Electric on Facebook or find them online at woodelectric.net. Thirty-one to twenty-four is the lead. As New Philadelphia looking to close this one out, and walk away from the Claymont Midseason Showcase winner, spoil the home game for the Mustangs. Nick and Shannon bringing you today's presentation of high school basketball. As it has been a fun one, a fun day throughout. 
in game number five as Moreland will have it in front of his own bench. And we'll call out the offense, looking to get a screen on Slaughter. Take that back. I thought that's what he was pointing for. <laughs> Watkins goes left to Jackson. Jackson, he'll work it. It's a drive. Moreland, he'll try to spin, goes up over top of Slaughter, and somehow Brody Moreland gets the tough angle shot to fall. Yeah, nice job by Moreland right there. Kept his body square to the hoop, falling backwards a little bit, was able to drain it. It's another 30-second timeout brought to you by the Cush Financial Group. We'll keep it here. But so far in this game, Shannon, you know, it hasn't been necessarily one Claymont player who has been the one to stand out above the rest. I mean, you're looking at some of the scoring totals, and yes, Jordan Connor is the leading scorer for Claymont, but you're going up and down the list. you got a lot of contributors on both offense and defense. Yeah, they're doing a nice job as a team. And we just got to go back to that cold shooting first half for them where a lot of things rattled in and out. And they're, they got a lot of fight left in them. You know, they're only down five. If they could get a stop right here on the Quakers, it could be a big uh, dividend for them. New Philly leading by five. Trying to pick up win number eight this season. Wells goes to Crowell. And they work it back out. On the other side, Claymont looking for win number seven as Slaughter finds an open Miller in the corner, and he buries it too. Slaughter's second assist puts the lead back at eight. Moreland steps into a three, in and out again. Crowell grabs the rebound. Here come the Quakers in Miller coming across. Another shot, Shannon that looked destined to fall and just comes back out. Wells in the right corner in the wing and goes to Miller. Picks up his dribble, finds a cutting slaughter, lost the handle, poked away into the hands of Crowell. He tries to go up, ripped away behind by Jackson, and it will favor the Quakers in the jump ball error, arrow. But how about Jackson and the fight inside? He keeps grabbing those every opportunity he has to try to take away possession. Yeah, and he does it against the biggest kids on the court. He, he doesn't care who it is. Shellis goes in, finds Slaughter, who will step back for the shot. They're going to call a charge. They're going to say Slaughter either extended the arm or you saw him kind of kick the leg up too when he stepped back for that shot. And the new Philly faithful are letting the referees hear it. Yeah, well, we're, we're sitting at, I didn't have a good angle at it. All I know is Slaughter went up, Mustang player went backwards. Whistle blowed, foul on Slaughter. Can obviously reference back now with our YouTube live stream. Thanks to the Claxon Communications crew and our sponsors as Connor drives. And it's a tough angle shot in the mid-range. No good. Shellis grabs the board for New Philly. And here come the Quakers again. Fourth rebound for the big senior for New Philadelphia. Wells works left to right. Trying to get a screen from Crowell. Instead, he'll go off to him. And he'll find Miller. Wells again. Crowell trying to get some space underneath on Connor, who was all over him. And Wells nearly lost the handle. He'll keep a hold of it. He'll pull up with the floater. No good. Crowell with the offensive board. Puts it on the deck. Up and blocked from behind by Barnhart. But they're going to say they got him. And he just gave somebody a tee. And I don't know who that would be on. Because we're going to have a conversation here between both officials. Crowell just pulled down his third rebound. But... Who would the tech be on? The only thing I could think of they're talking about is if it would be a player who had enough fouls if... Actually, no, I have no idea what they're talking about, Shannon. It looked like, I mean, Bernhardt was the one who was battling with, battling with him underneath. And now it looks like the officials are going to have a conversation here. They gave the foul. The foul's on Jordan Connor. Okay, foul on Connor, which we got that much. And the new Philly coaching staff wanting a bit of an explanation. Coach Ross talking now to the official who I thought signaled the T, but it doesn't look like we're going to, well, it would first be Crowell who has to do the free throws, and then they'd have to clear everybody out for the tech, which we'll see who that would end up being on, if that is the case, because I thought I saw the same thing called as you did, Shannon. Crowell good from his first. He now has six. Also a couple of rebounds, an assist, and a steal as well. His next one is on the way, and good. It's now the whistle. 
And they must have talked it over, and they're not going to issue I a kick. I guess not. I don't know what exactly happened there then. He did blow his whistle a second yeah. time out of the foul line and throwed his hands there. Yeah. I don't know if he just thought somebody said something. Yeah, potentially, but good to see if nothing happened, I guess. 36-26, to 26, New Philly leads Claymont, three and a half to go. If the Mustangs are going to make a run, it has to be pretty close to now. Moreland works right to left, goes Jackson. He'll move, hand off to Watkins. He'll dribble around, finds Barnhart. Not much room. Barnhart goes in, lost the handle, and they're going to say Wells poked it away. I didn't see Wells get too much contact there, but it will stay, or excuse me, it will go and be Mustang Bowl. Yeah, I, I thought the same thing. I thought Wells just played some tough defense on him right there, and he lost it out of bounds, but they said Wells poked it. But we're down low. We're sitting in the front row, so it could be hard to see. There's a drive on the inside, and it's Moreland who finishes, and he's got himself 10. Here come the Quakers again, under three to go, as they trail by eight, or pardon me, lead by eight, I should say. Some new Philadelphia fans, Shannon probably just went, what are you talking about? Slaughter, their leading scorer, he goes off to Miller. Miller's going to drive off left block, lost the handle, and we're going to get another foul called. They're going to say Whitman reached up and grabbed the arm. Whitman's fourth. Whitman pleading his case to the official over here. <laughs> Usually, you don't really often get the call changed for just doing that. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Slaughter goes into Miller. He's picked up by Whitman. Whitman's got to be careful. His next foul means the end of his night. Crowell now has it right in front of us. Looking for an entry pass instead of trying to go to Shellis. Now Shellis cuts nothing there. He'll find Miller. One extra pass to Slaughter. Goes off Wells. New Philly works it around, and it's going to be a long three-point shot, and it is buried as it is another one for Owen Miller. Owen Miller quiet the whole game. Has two three-pointers here in the fourth. That shot is no good. Rebound goes to Slaughter. And he will bring it up. He'll drive, step back, now outside. Miller thought about the three, but chose better. Wells slows things down. Under two minutes to go here. Mustangs lead by 11. Don't need to force the issue. Miller has Moreland all over him. He'll break through that and hand it off to Wells again. Just this clock-killing ability by New Philly. I don't know, Shannon, at what point do you think about going ahead and starting the fouling if you're Claymont? Yeah, I mean, you still got to give, what, well, only one more foul. Or no, two. So that was the first, and that was it. Whitman's going to go sit. So who comes in for Whitman? I think Fox is back out there now. Yeah, Fox was sitting there waiting to come in, I believe. I don't know who he was going to go in for, but he had to come in for Whitman now. Yeah, players tumbling all over the place, and Jackson colliding with Slaughter, and I have no idea what in the world happened there. We do have whistles. Is there a foul called? I think it's on Jackson. They're going to say that he pushed Slaughter down. Oh, going to get no. Connor. Must have been a foul over here. Must have been even farther away from what we were watching. Connor second, and Coach Watkins wants an explanation. with and it will step them to the free throw line and I think his his concern here or his question is that they're sending slaughter to the free throw line I don't know if he's asking if it's because it's whoever Connor fouled which Connor wouldn't have fouled slaughter because Jackson was standing by him yeah <clears throat> Jackson and slaughter were the ones laying on the floor together so the foul should have been on Jackson and not Connor which we know how good Colton Slaughter is at the free throw line. That's probably Coach Watkins' concern, and now he's asking still for an explanation, but it's still going to be, regardless, the senior for the Quakers who's at the line. And he also asked, if the foul happened, then why did we keep playing once Slaughter was laying on the ground? That actually might be his concern. And now, and now the official's explaining that was not the foul that they were talking about. So you were right, Shannon. It must have happened back here. Quite the bit of confusion here. 124 to go in the fourth. Well, this game was going at record time, we had to slow it down a little bit, right? 
They, they might come over and ask us to see if we can have a video replay here in a second. Well, come ask Judd. We can't do that. <laughs> or they could pull up their phone and look at the Big Z Sports YouTube channel, which if you've been tuned in, thank you so much. And if you have not done so, be sure to subscribe. As Let's see what the call is now. The officials, and they are going to say it is Shellis who steps to the line, which to Coach Watkins' case, that does make sense. And you see Slaughter. I think Slaughter's shocked because I think he's the one who thought he was fouled. And, I, and I'll agree with Slaughter to a point that him and Jackson hit right here and made contact and went down, but they never called the foul. They didn't call the foul until it happened back there by the Claymont bench, so that puts Shellis at the line. So Shellis readies himself, puts up his first free throw, and it is good. And for Owen Shellis, that's his first point of the night. Yes, yeah, Shellis has had a quiet night. <laughs> He's been crashing the glass, got a couple of rebounds. He's also gotten a block and assist. And just overall been the big body underneath trying to keep that Clayman offense out from underneath the rim as he makes his second one. It's a perfect trip. 41-28 now. Claymont has very little room for error, and a blocking foul is going to get called as Connor drove. And I think Shellis again. Was it Shellis on him, Shannon, who just not giving him that room on the baseline? And no, right. instead they're going to say it was on Magoni. Magoni again. That's Magoni's fourth. Moreland to inbound, trying to find somebody, and he will. He'll go to Watkins. Watkins dumps it off. Connor, three-point shot, too long. Rebound, hauled in by Connor, puts it up again. No good, but he did get fouled, and he'll step back to the free-throw line. The Mustangs can't just catch a break on the rolls or anything. Everything goes up, bounces around the rim, and rolls off. Just going back through a mental note here, a mental tally, it has to at least be 8 to 10 points that Claymont would have had if the rolls would have just went their way on the rim. Yes, I agree with you 100%. They're just rolling around. And Connor misses the first one off right iron. Some more substitutions for Philly. Shellis will sit. <laughs> did you catch that, Shannon? Shellis leaving the court was trying to high-five Quinn Miller, who didn't see him, so Shellis just gave him the self-high-five, right? Connor's next one off back iron, grabs his own offensive board, puts it up and in. Just another effort play there for Jordan Connor, just trying to will his team back into this ball game. It's an 11-point deficit and just a 30-second timeout brought to you by the Cush Financial Group. We're back after this. The First National Bank of Denison appreciates the hard work and dedication area athletes exhibit to be the best they can be for their team. We follow that same philosophy with our customers, working hard to build personal relationships and making our services convenient. The First National Bank of Denison's community involvement is important to us and we love supporting our local schools. The First National Bank of Denison with offices in Denison, Dover, Janate and Hutton, South Broadway and Shunbrun in New Philadelphia. We have our roots where others have their branches. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Coming out of a Cush Financial Group timeout, Nick and Shannon bringing you the last game for today's showcase. Thanks again to all of our sponsors as we join you from the PAC Drilling Mobile Studio. Minute five to go. Quaker ball, they lead by 11, and we've got a foul there as Fox ties up with Slaughter. And we'll send him to the free throw line. That's Fox's first foul. And really, I mean, you don't want to put Slaughter at the free throw line of all players, but... You don't have many choices now, Shannon. No, and that's what New Philly knows who they want the ball in his hand, so they got every inbound play drawn up to go to him because they, they know the Mustangs are going to foul now. Slaughter thus far, 17 big points for him, three boards, two assists. And he's in and out on his first free throw. This is just a joke, Shannon, but I think the rims are getting tired in here, too, because the way the bounces have come off of here from the uh, previous games, this, this, is, this is insane how many have went in and out for both these teams. Everybody's getting tired. Next one is in and good. 12-point game, minute to go. Jackson brings it up, gives it up to Moreland. Slaughter almost had another steal. Moreland steps into a three-point shot off front iron. Fox battles for the rebound, and he's got it, and gives it off to Moreland. Great hustle again by Drew Fox. Connor spins around on the shot, but a foul is going to get called. That was going to be on Slaughter. That would be Slaughter's first, or second, pardon me. 
and that will put Claymont at the free throw line. And coming up immediately following this game, we'll have our Dumont Sporting Goods post-game show. Connor drops in the first one. Finally got a roll to go his way. He as did. Bounces all the way up, out and comes back in. We'll be announcing our player of the game as well, who go home with that hardware. You can find it on the Big Z Sports Facebook page. First National Bank of Denison making that possible. Connor's next one. No good. Moreland and Slaughter connect. Trying to both go for it. They're going to say it went off of Slaughter. So a break for Claymont, at least, keeps possession with them. Quick inbound pass right here. Hit a three. Watkins will call timeout if everything goes perfectly. In a perfect world. <laughs> will it be that way? Let's, we'll find well, out. The Dallas Cowboys found out that <laughs> the world isn't perfect today. <laughs> that is if you're a Packers fan. As Moreland's ready to inbound. And not sure what the delay is here. I think they're trying to tell him he's got blood or something on him. Something wrong with the uniform, yeah. And Coach Watkins doesn't look overjoyed by that either, which there is a – they do allow a brief amount of time if you got an equipment issue like this that you don't have to sub out of the game, you know. Yeah, they have a time limit, and he's over there right now getting wiped down, getting sprayed. And the official just told him, no, you got to bring somebody in. I thought there was a brief time, but I suppose not in Moreland – He's showing it off now and saying, I am ready. I can come in. But, no, he'll just have to wait at the scorer's table. So, coming in is going to be Wolf. We'll see how they approach this. Connor has it. He'll be in the left wing. He'll drive, stop, tries to find a cutting Fox. Nothing there. Watkins, he's going to have to drive. Left block, spin around. Fox, thought about the three. Instead, steps up through it. Connor now. He'll step into a three. Off back iron, no good. Rebound goes to Fox. Fox gives it off. Watkins, he'll go into a three. Left it short. It's going to go out of bounds, and it will be new Philadelphia ball. So Moreland now can come back in. Wolf will sit. As Wolf will sit, and Crowell comes back in, and so does Crandall for new Philly. As new Philly, or pardon me, Claymont, burned a lot of time there, Shannon, but you don't have much of a choice when the Quakers' defense is that much locked up on you. Yeah, the Quakers was playing some smothering defense right there just to try to burn some clock, and they did that pretty good. So across the timeline is Wells, and they might actually let him dribble this out, Shannon. Yeah, the Mustangs. And they're going to let him. Mustangs have kind of just conceded here, and they know this game's over. So your final score in your final game from the Claymont Mid-Season Showcase, 42-31, New Philadelphia will top Claymont, the host school, as the Quakers capture their eighth victory of the season, while the Mustangs fall for the seventh time this year in 13 games, as this was a defensive performance from the word go. Yeah, both teams played outstanding defense. The Quakers was just able to take advantage of some shots as the Mustangs were... Uh, Rolling in and out. Certainly were as a big thank you again to all of our presenting sponsors and, of course, everybody who worked so hard to bring this showcase together as we'll take another brief timeout. Or, pardon me, we will not take another brief timeout as we roll right into your Dumont Sporting Goods postgame show. We'll, whereas we tally up the stats, Shannon, I mean, we talked about this already when we were in one of the breaks, and I don't think it's going to come as a surprise to anybody who's going to end up being our player of the game. But regardless, we still have to give a little bit of intrigue, right? It is a senior playmaker for New Philadelphia, and again, probably the one who stood out the most. Yeah, I mean, he had an outstanding game, and I, I unofficially have him for 18 points, three rebounds, and two assists. So do I. Look at that. So our, If we both have it, that has to be right then, right? So our first, first National Bank of Denison player of the game, none other than New Philadelphia Quakers, Colton Slaughter. Yeah, the 6'2 senior kind of took over the game at some points. Uh, nailed three shots from the perimeter. Also was a perfect, or pardon me, five for six from the free throw line as well. Had three rebounds and two assists and was undoubtedly the leader out there for New Philadelphia as they capture the 42-31 to 31 victory from Claymont. It has been a long day of basketball, without a doubt, for Big Z Sports and Claxon Communications, and it is officially time to call it a night. As we enjoyed L every single moment of this uh, showcase, hopefully get to do it again next year, Shannon. Yeah, an outstanding job they've done here for the first year of this showcase, and 
Coach Gary Watkins back there was already talking about to some things that he wants to change for next year to make this even better. And so uh, looking forward to get the invite back next year. Yeah, we hopefully, uh, I really hope that we do. Again, your final score in your final game, New Philly 42, Claymont 31. For Shannon Thomas for Big Z Sports and for Claxton Communications in Logan McPeak, as well as Judd Bone, I am Nick McWilliams signing off again. We will be back in a gymnasium near you soon, Z Country. Thank you again for tuning in, and good night. Thanks for listening to tonight's presentation of Big Z Sports and Claxon Communication High School play-by-play -play action. Be sure to subscribe to Big Z Sports on YouTube, follow Big Z Sports on Facebook, on Twitter, at Big underscore Z Sports. For the best coverage of high school sports, there's only one Big Z Sports.